Wow. Simeon, episode 500. I can't believe we made it this far. This is actually pretty incredible. Man, this is really cool. But um, before we get the show started, I'm just going to pop out quick. I'm going to use the bathroom, grab water, uh, grab something to eat. I'll be right back. All uh, right. Yeah, I'll hold down the fort. Simeon? Simeon, the, the, Simeon, the studio's locked. Do you, you got keys? No, you have keys. No, I gave Ian the keys. Oh, that's okay. No, we can just call Ian. We're fine. We're not trapped in here. We're just going to call Ian, and we're just going to have him. Oh, hey, guys. Ian, no, wait, no. Gotta... What? Oh. oh, you guys wanted me to make you some. Look, you can get your own. No, it's not about... See, yeah, Ian, you I gave you the door. keys, right? <sighs> you have the keys on you? Oh, the keys. Keys. Yeah, uh, you didn't... Keys are an interesting thing, Simeon. What's interesting about them? I, it's interesting Their location? How, how easy oh, they, no. they go into a pocket. Ian, we're Some trapped. Some would argue that. Ian, we're trapped in here. Uh, so we are. Well, I suppose we can make the most of it. I suppose oh, yeah. I can share. What did you bring? Uh, some pizza rolls. <laughs> wow. You know what... Be even better than pizza rolls. What's that? The key is to the studio, so we're not locked inside. It's not my fault. Somebody needs to call the landlord. Somebody needs to own up with who left them on the counter. <laughs> I left them on the counter <laughs> for you. I said, Ian, here are the keys. No. You know what? You know what? No. Oh, just, we'll figure it out. I'll just call someone. Help will be on the way. Let's, let's just start episode 500 and... Maybe by the end of it, people will be able to get us out. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. I have the high ground. Oh, yeah, you may have the high ground. It's over, Simeon. Yeah. Instant deadpan. Oh, how do six how do people you? think I am funny? I'm oh, your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. Simeon will be able to make that out. That's cool. Expensive. I'm gonna make your clips like that forever. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Oh my gosh, is there Despite a leak in the floor? The blizzard. What? Oh gosh, guys, the water level in here is rising. Oh my gosh. We only have so much time. Oh, dude, you're right. It's Puddle this is City. Bad. It's Puddle City in here. How tall is the ceiling? Ian, stand up. Oh, oh. my gosh. It's not nearly less tall than, enough. Less than seven and a half feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Well, I guess before we inevitably drown. Yeah, we might as well answer everything we've got. We did We did get a letter in the mail, actually. We did get a oh, package in the mail. And this might be our only food besides Ian's pizza I'm rolls for the next... Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there's <laughs> cheese in there. Yeah. Or a snorkel. Try not to damage it, actually, too much. Yeah, especially Is this the, the first the episode where... We got fan mail? We got fan mail? I think so. We did get fan mail. I'm really trying not to rip the fan mail, though. I think we've, yeah, we've done fan mail on the live, live stream. We got a, a board game sent to us. By oh, that is true. Wow, well, guys, you're not going to believe this. There actually is Dennis, was it Dennis? Who sent us that board game? I'm sorry for blanking it's actually your name. A lot of beef jerky. Okay. Oh, there's okay. food in here. There's a lot of food. So this, <laughs> that, that's actually really This nice. was sent. This is great. I was peeling up the outside, and I was like, this flash. feels like a beef stick. Yeah. yeah he's, uh, I thought it was an action figure. I thought it was two action figure legs. Uh, we have... Actual food, that is crazy. Dearborn beef jerky. So this was sent in from his own Bill, a prior super fan. Wait, it's Dearborn, right. but it's beef? Uh, it's deer as in Polish D-E-A-R. Sausage. D-E-A-R. Oh. It's like deer. So we have a summer sausage. Deer we have a hunter sausage. <laughs> we have a beef stick. We have a Polish sausage. What's that one? Another Polish, Polish sausage. Uh, Simeon, which one do you want? Uh, I'll take the kielbasa one. Oh, okay. The kielbasa. That's the Polish. Oh, okay. I'm like, huh? <laughs> uh-huh. I can't do this one. It's it's too spicy. It's too spicy. <laughs> I can't do that one. Well, I'll salt. I'll those. judge the beef stick. I guess. Uh, <laughs> let's see what else is in here. We have some fridge magnets. If you wanna, you wanna oh, pop those. Very cool. Um, this is this is Hulkbuster's left leg. Hulkbuster's I, left I leg. I think this is exactly the left leg I might be missing as well. I think that's what Bill's getting at here. Is the I think a long time ago on the show I thought I was missing Hulkbuster's left leg. Simeon tries a bite of the jerky. <laughs> Ian's going to check out our fridge magnets. And then I'm going to see what this is. Expertly wrapped. Polish Dearborn. 
Not too bad. Kind of spicy. Ooh. Oh, so, these are overpower nice cards. I didn't oh think they my were this goodness. Big. This is crazy. Okay. These are oversized cards. This is wild. Okay. We've got a series of stickers of Dial H moments. Oh my god. I'll pass around the I table have to here. turn the lights on. This. This is nuts. <laughs> what is that? This is the TF2 Golden Frying Pan. Oh, of course. That's what we've, this got, is. we've got like 17 year old Simeon. <laughs> We got a red wave too. 2020, I want to say. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. That, that was outside yeah. Rainbow. Oh, the that red waves. Cool. That's outside Rainbow. One of the one of the first videos. Yeah, that, I mean, that was a fun sketch. I think it actually no Disney Plus was. No, this was, this came out before Disney Plus. This was the first. This was like one of their first sketches you did. You helped the channel. No, the, the begging for Disney. Oh, Plus. then yes, yes. Okay, then yes. We got the correct. classic extreme real estate. Now, we'll put some pictures up. We have to these take pictures. Really of these. Cool. these are amazing. Uh, here's I Calder buy. actually having a too spicy moment on extreme. Oh, oh the uh, hot ones. Yeah, the double Simeon, the multiversal masters of Simeon. That's really fun. <laughs> Oh, that's great, dude! Bash Rock and and then we've got Simverine. We've got Calder and I's reaction. Wolver to that. Simeon, oh, which is us when we're ducked behind another hiding iconic, from the Wolver dude, Another Simeons. iconic moment. We have an IPF fridge magnet, which that's really cool. Whoa! That's a good size one too. And then the last one, the most heartfelt and the one we will most prominently display. There's a picture of us at Worlds in front of our banner before the event kicked off. Oh yeah, that was a fun yeah, one. That's a good time. Yeah, these are bad. Holy Bill, smokes. Bill, thank you so much. Yeah, this thank is, you, uh, Bill. This is why you're super jerky fan. fridge magnets. Dial H through the years. Wow. Marvel overpower card. These cards are huge, dude. Is these that in a Marvel vs. Capcom case? These are... So we have Doctor Doom for you. Oh, there's Yeah, that's sick. We have Wolverine. For, wow, what a Wolverine. These are going nice. straight And we have Bill. Captain America oh. for me. Yeah, overpower. Overpower. These are massive. These did not go in a deck and shot, no, right? Like zero chance. Just, these have to be. I think these are for like display purposes. Display. I imagine yeah. these are maybe sent to like storefronts. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for the fan art, Bill. This is amazing. This is a great way to kick off 500. If you guys, we might have a picture up here later. The package is also has 500 on it. And it has Bill's rendition of what uh, he thinks Captain America, Batman, and Wolverine look like. Oh, that's Wolverine. Uh, I thought that was uh, a face entering eternal darkness. <laughs> I thought it was Def Leppard's drummer. He took he took some creative liberties with all of them. Uh, Wolverine being the not wearing his mask and just having hair, like and lots of it. Yeah, and uh, we will be sure to dox yeah. Bill as well. We'll make sure to you see so his you address. You guys can uh, go over and say thanks to him. Because <laughs> we know that's what would happen. Yeah. Obviously, no oh, croissants yeah. in the pack. Well, so. Yeah, very, no croissants. Very, very cool stuff. No Bill. croissants. Um, I love these. I love these fridge magnets. Yeah, the fridge magnets wrong. will these be hung up immediately after this episode. That is wow. Super, this super makes fun. us slowly go into our watery doom. Kind of so much more fun. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, I suppose really we can cool. get to the fridge. Yeah, we can't get um, to the fridge. Sadly, good point. Yeah, I don't know how we'll get to the fridge, but maybe eventually. If we can we'll make it back out. to the studio, these these will be these overpower massive I, cards. Oh, they look really also cool on the shelf. On the shelf, for sure. I definitely like the idea of like this shelf with the best version of that character, or like the version that looks closest to that sculpt or something. Who's, who's the best overpower card? I have seven energy, Ooh. six fighting, and six strength. Cap's energy is pretty low. Uh, here's your Wolverine I have card. Two energy, eight fighting, four strength. Dang. Ooh, Cap's kind of mid. He's got one energy, seven fighting, and five strength. One, seven, five, one, seven, seven five. six, six, and two, eight, four. I'd be surprised if Doom wasn't the, I feel the strongest. Like Seven energy. Man. I don't know how this game must be like blast. It must be premium. It must be blasts and stuff. Where Cap's got like oh, no yeah, energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That he's, makes sense. He's got like magic and lasers and stuff. Wolverine having more energy than Cap. Cap. Really the make fact sense. that I'm like healing I'm one less what's, on fighting than Captain America. I mean, Captain America's better. And I'm hand stronger hand. than both of you. It is weird that you're stronger than both of us. Yeah. That is weird for Doctor Doom. Cap's take, just a little bit stronger than Wolverine. Just a little bit. But then a better fighter is Wolverine, who yeah. I don't know if he has any trained fighting besides X Men Danger Room. I mean, he's, you know what I mean. Wolverine as but like, no, he he's a fighting guy. He is the, he is years. he is the fighting. I think Cap also might have one of the worst pictures of Captain America I've seen in my entire life as his like art. Huh. It's like back. His eyes are like glazed back. He's like uh, looking behind himself. America, like, oh, America. <laughs> really, he's really straining. That, that is the that's the. 
It's a really interesting pose. The image of uh, Superman when, like, the Flash is trying to run around him. Oh, and he's, yeah. like, holding oh, everyone off, and yeah. he, like, his eyes move first, they and then everybody's turn. like, oh, no. <laughs> Superman's going to kill us. It might be the best scene in that Justice League movie. I was reading a... Uh, that Justice League movie. I was reading a There's Facebook a argument, like one of the groups of like who would win in this fight, and it was Batman versus Cap, which we don't need to get into that. No, but, we don't. Uh, I mean, the answer's obvious. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> but somebody like posted a link to a comic. No idea where no, or when it was, but Cap's talking to like Agent 13 or something, mm. and she's like, I always wanted to ask you, how do you dodge bullets? And he's like, oh, I just see faster. And she's like, you see faster? Yeah. And that I was, was like, is that canonical? That was like an early 2000s one, too, where, like, it was, like, during the Winter Soldier arc or something. Like, How do you dodge bullets? You know, can't block them, too. I was like, I see, I can see faster. And it's like, really? That's the first we've heard of Stronger that in 60, eyes. 70 years. My eyes are so strong. Yeah. yeah. So that was interesting. I Fun fact, Ian. It's like don't Captain America at the eye doctor just uh, going, A, B, E, up, <laughs> down, left. Just going really fast. Uh, which one is Z H I P A B? Yeah. yeah. Number one or number two? Both. <laughs> they both look great to me. He just uh, like says the answer before the eye doctor can even two. Ask. He's like one or he's like it's two, three, five, one, one. Oh gosh. Four. So, not only did we get real fan mail. Uh, like real quote unquote, but we also have some digital fan mail. I want to answer this email that we got here. So I'll just read it kind of in its entirety here. Hello guys. Hope you're well. I'm Ingus underscore 58. I assume on YouTube. Uh, I've been following the channel for a while and I would like to ask you some questions for episode 500. I suppose some of these questions may have been asked, but just in case, here we go. So number one, how long have you been playing Hero Clicks? What set did you start on and how did you learn about the game? Who wants to go first? There, well, Hero first thing, origin? Ingus58, I've seen your name in the live streams. Thank you for being such a fan. I see a comment. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad that uh, Dial H has been a good resource for you. Take a crack at the first question. I've been playing since Infinity Challenge. How I got into the game was my brother brought some home from a school assembly. After a local comic store had brought some there, he brought home a blue ring bullseye, some scroll technicians, I believe, and then a veteran human torch from Clobber in time, I want to say. Ooh. Maybe that one came a bit later, but that's an early figure that I really remember. But I remember specifically looking at Bullseye, like, laying in my bed. I was, like, four years old and just being like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And there's a game attached to it, too. So, been here since the beginning. I didn't really play a ton when I was younger. You know, I just kind of watch and spectate tapes. But always loved collecting them. Uh, it was a thing I could do with my brother. He eventually fell out of the game. But, yeah, been in it since the start. And... I don't know. Just loved every second of it, really. The game rocks. <laughs> nice. Nice. I got started around 2011 with a big shocker here, the Captain America set. So, obviously, back home in small town USA, South Dakota, there is no comic book store for like three hours, so 170-something miles, which is really cool. Uh, but what got me into the game was I was always big into action figures as a kid, action figures, comic books. And I would constantly be looking for action figure reviews of action figures that I really liked or had found or whatever. And one action figure reviewer was Glass Cabinet Hobbies. And I watched a ton of his stuff. And he also had Shout videos. Out yeah. Cabinet, Shout out to the yeah. ancient... The, ancient, the, <laughs> the, the videos man, I watched a hundred yeah, times dude. over just itching for more the only hero content. Plus content creator yeah. back in the day. It's wild. But yeah, I loved his videos. And he had a game called Hero Plus. I was like, oh, there's Captain America Hero Plus. Okay, cool. I actually remember thinking, I thought... This is so dumb, but it's like, kids are dumb. I was like, the hero clicks are so tiny. Clearly, you must open a booster, get the tiny figures, and then ask the cashier for the real-sized figures. That is actually, unironically, something my little kid brain thought was real, which makes, in retrospect, absolutely zero sense. Absolutely zero sense. Kid logic, though. Yeah, yeah so kid, kid logic. It's like, clearly, that's how you get the real figures. But, uh, you no, know, I watched, like, a ton of unboxings of Captain America. I remember watching all of his GSX unboxings. Yeah, those were so high. So, whoa, this is the, the juggernaut looking the set ever. Uh, one of my favorite Archangel. unboxings was oh. also um, Galactic Guardians and the yeah. big figures. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. This is a Heroclix piece? 
it was really cool. So that's how I got into the game. I was watching his stuff. And that was around like 2011, 2012. Good era. Yeah. My very first Heroclix product I ever owned was the old school Battle Packs. And it was just the remade version of Iron Fist, Punisher, and Iron Man from Secret Invasion. So it was really, really, really cool. I was like one of my favorite battle packs. I was like, whoa, Punisher's up on the ledge with a big Gatling gun. Oh, His Iron man. Fist looks cool. That Iron Man looks amazing. That was like one of the first Heroclix products I ever got. That immediately like teleports me back to like middle school. Yeah. Like I have like specific memories of playing specific games with that with like a different group. Yeah. You just kind of been through like phases of phases different of people. Game, yeah. Like this is like I don't know, like phase six <laughs> dial age. <laughs> as far as like sure. consistent groups for hero clicks I'm with, so no, it's yeah. cool. Sorry. Yeah. Simeon? Uh I've been playing since the flash set dropped, which was like twenty fourteen. I think Sounds, like Yeah, twenty fourteen. Yeah. And I know that because that was the first product I ever bought was a single gravity feed. So the main re like I I was in the midst of college, but I was financially free for like the first time, and I just decided to go hog wild on collecting stuff. So my pull list for comics was at like an all time high. It was like fourteen a week, which is like insane. And I was like, I'd get the comics, and then I'd sell the code, and like so. Really, the comics only ended up costing like ninety nine cents each. Oh wow, it was like such a deal. So I just had to get all of them, as you, as a normal human would. But uh, I was at the point where I really wanted to start like decorating my apartment and stuff, just like having like knickknacks and stuff like that. And I had already had a bunch of action figures and stuff, but I kind of wanted to start getting into like statues and. Statues can range from like, you know, 20, 25 to like, I mean, 80 bajillion. Yeah, they can, yeah, yeah you can go to high. quite high in like the statue range. And then they also take up quite a bit of space. And so when I was in my local comic shop, which is like, that's all I went there for was just comics, I noticed the flash gravity feed on like the thing. And I, I'm not big into blind booster kind of stuff, but I was like, what's this? And the guy was like, oh, it's like, uh, it's a game. It's like, there's little figures and stuff. And I'm looking at the sculpts on the side and like, they're all flash and stuff. And I was like, tiny statues. I could have like 20 times as many statues if I get tiny little statues. And so my original impetus for uh, getting into the game was just to collect the sculpts alone. And I didn't care about the game, but the first figure I ever bought out of that gravity P uh, pack was oh, yeah. Max Mercury, yeah. and I opened it, and I was just like, "Who is this? What is what <laughs> really is cool guys?" <laughs> yeah, I was just like, and "You were hooked." I honestly, I was <laughs> for whatever reason. Like, I can't remember <laughs> what I. Cool, I man. think like somebody was like, "Hey, we like meet up on like Thursdays or whatever," and then I ended up playing for long enough that the it was like a small group, so it was most weeks it was just me and the judge, but like probably twice a month it was me the judge and like one or two other people and then the judge decided that well didn't decide he was moving oh so uh there you go. he was like i can't judge anymore i'm gonna be moving out of state uh would you want to judge like purely on the fact that i showed up the most frequently oh. so like not because i knew the rules really well or anything but just because i was always there and so i was like sure which caused like a bunch of people at that shop to be mad yeah. And I was like, people were like Still mad about you. it. Yeah, they were mad about it. And I was like, you haven't even been here in months. You want to be judged? Like, you have to show up to you be judged. No responsibility. But like, I digress. That was that was my start. And uh, then, like, I think the big thing was like when I moved to Omaha, I took probably like nine months off. That was I had bought into Superman Wonder Woman, so I had a bunch of stuff from Superman Wonder mm -hmm. Woman, but I didn't get any Joker's Wild or World's Finest for like sets that came slightly after that and then i had to buy them retroactively but i got back into the game in omaha and they have a great scene in omaha yeah it really it was a lot bigger when i first got in but i mean i think it's grown back to what it was they're just like split up spread out across yeah. the venues yeah we right. got uh got like three four venues to choose from when it comes to playing here yeah his second question is, how did you guys meet? Did you already know each other, or was it playing Heroclix that you got to know one another? It was playing Heroclix. Yeah, Heroclix. It was all, yeah, it was all throughout, like, seeing each other at, like, Heroclix tournaments and stuff like that is pretty much how we all met. And eventually, Yeah, uh, yeah. there's a fun story there. I, when I met Calder, was, I, well, I played against Calder a few times previously. I was like, oh, you know, it was fun. 
but I never, it was never really anything past that. Before I really knew Calder, uh, he was selling packs of Supernova to play Battle Royales with. And my friend this Luke, is a fun story. this is a great story. Yeah, I like <laughs> after, after how long chasing these zombies, Calder sold some boosters of Supernova to Luke and a few others to play sealed with. And Luke asked him multiple times, are you sure? I, I'll pay you for these, but you can just have what I pull. And he's like, no, no, it's fine. I'll just take the money. And, of course, Luke, the luckiest man alive when it comes to Battle Royales, pulls Colonel America of all the zombies. And, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a great moment. Yeah, it's a moment. But then the next time I saw Calder, I was like, hey, man, I didn't know he did Dial H at the time. I said, like, hey, man, I enjoy the podcast. He's like, oh, yeah, thanks. I was like, what? He's like, oh, I thought you were, like, messing with me. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so I was like, no, I'm serious. And, you know, hey, oh, thanks. Well, and then with Simeon, what I remember most about meeting him was at an Omaha event. Uh, he whooped me with a sick Tri Sentinel Green Lantern team from Joker's Wild. So he'd make barriers and blow me up. And that was funny because that was a team that was like memed about at Rainbow. But then Simeon was the one who actually did it. And then it came on to get really popular. The team grew in and eventually a variation of that won like sixth at worlds. So mm -hmm. pretty cool. But what, what I remember most was um we got talking about how like weak of a character like Cyclops was. And he goes, You need to check out these memes called fly cloth. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? And uh, like, show me pictures of like Cyclops with a helicopter it's like visor. Bad MS paint. Yeah. Lasers shooting out around. I was like, dude, we need this thing. There's one on. where he's got like a tube that like wraps like yeah, from his head to like, like so his eyes become like a jetpack thrust. Oh. It's like a submarine scope that yeah. goes to behind his head and he's flying through the air on his laser. Yeah, one of the best ones. Definitely like the the helicopter that he's like propelling the blades with his like a Yeah, his it's feet. spinning and like uh but yeah, so uh, I remember walking away from that event with Luke and just being like, yeah, like that Simeon guy was pretty cool. I was like, I, I don't know where he's from, but it's like, hope we see him again. And then what that turned into was I went to, uh, was it that Indiana? Did we go to Indiana? Yeah, we went to Not Nationals. Yeah, yeah the Indiana last event nationals. like before COVID like really hit. This was, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Fufo was just about to come out. And I was telling Calder about an idea. I was like, yeah, dude, like, I'm telling you, like, I'm good with prices. I was like, let me get on your show and talk prices. He's like, that sounds like fun. Like, we should do a segment like that. So did that. And uh, kind of in that event is when we met. And then after that, I was just like, in my head, and I've told them this as well. I was just like, I need to figure out a way to, like, get in this. It's like, I don't know what it's going to take. I don't want to be rude, but, like, I have to get in on this. It's like, this is a unicorn. Like, people who have a similar sense of humor, want to make stupid videos, and just have like pretty much the same outlook on the game as I do, and they live near me. It's like I don't care what it takes; like I have to get it on this operation. And yeah, so I think that's kind of how I met you guys. I don't know how you two met, but I won't tell that story. But overall, it was just you know through going to tournaments, playing against them, and realizing like you know these are these are my people as far as hero clicks goes. So I met Sam. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good time. All those. It was outside the Yuma County Jail, and you were like, we need another ranch hand, and you've burned all the bridges with all the ranches around here. I did, yeah. And I was like, yeah, Yellowstone won't let me back on. What's yours called? And, I thought it had uh, something to do with, like, a condiment in a pocket and a handshake. Yeah. That is an Ooh, alternate yeah. universe. In the alternate the universe. universe. I got a fucking pocket full of ranch, ranch shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's just pocket of ranch. He's time for a hand. He's calling it ranch hand. Yeah. Oh, why is that? Why is that? Uh, uh, that's, that's a patron only. That's a patron only. Specialty, um, from like two years ago now. If you yeah. inquire about it, maybe we'll send maybe it we'll to you. Maybe we'll just send it to you. Yeah, maybe. No, uh, I think it was like a term tournament at Rainbow, like a, a South Dakota States or something, I want to say, is the first time. I was going like, to say, I can't remember it. the specific first time we met, but I remember sitting across from you at one point and you asked me if I listened to podcasts and I was like, Oh yeah. And then I just like rambled about like true crime podcasts for a while. And I could tell like he was not interested in that. <laughs> and I was just like, and he's like, well, if you want to listen to a hero, Things podcast. Yeah. Um, but then it was like, I don't know, probably like months later we were at like a different event. And for some reason, I decided to claim Calder as my nemesis. I do remember that, the rivalry. And he was just like, why? Because like at that point, I think we had played against each other like once. Yeah. 
so it didn't make sense. Like, there was... Ten to go tango? No, it was, like, way oh, before that. Way before. Okay. Yeah, so, like, I had probably played against Kevin and Isaac way more often than Calder, but I think it was just because he felt like a safe choice to, like, start a rivalry with, where it was, like... Easy pickings. It was like, this guy doesn't take himself too seriously. Like, if I claim one of the other guys as, like, a rival, they'll, like, actually take it serious <laughs> and, like, yeah. try really hard when they play against me. So there, there was that. And then it was not too long after that, I guessed it on Dial H. Because, like, in that episode, I... It was, like, a rivalry. Yeah, it was, like, vibe of the episode. I was, like, oh, we were talking about state uh, tournament or something. Didn't introduce me as, like, the nemesis. Yeah, the nemesis. <laughs> But yeah, it was around that time I was, probably before I guessed it on Dial H, I was really looking for like a, an outlet for just creativity. I wanted to do something. Yeah. And I was thinking about like podcasting and stuff. And then I did the episode and me and Calder just had like good chemistry from like the get go pretty much. And yeah, like, I, I don't know when, when I guessed it on, I was like, that was really fun. It's a lot of work to start my own things, though. <laughs> and then it was like a year later. Not even that. Yeah, it was, it was about I think two, it was months later, two months later. months later. I want to say that episode came out in February, and then Chris left the show around July or August or something like that. And it was later that year. I was hard pressed because he was like, "All right, well, I'm gonna leave. So see ya." And I'm like, "Ah, very chill." I had like two, three months in advance to get all this done, but I was like, "I need to find like." a co-host, someone that's, like, a good talker and I can, like, vibe well with on the show and everything, and, you know. So, I was like, well, Simeon did a great time. So, yeah. And then, luckily, for whatever reason, it was, like, Star Trek was dropping, and Calder was like, yeah, I, I don't know anything about this. Star Trek. <laughs> also that. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, the first couple episodes are just us talking about Star so. Trek figures. Mostly me, like, Pretending like I'm gonna go into like a big long winded rant like, about them. No, please no. Yeah, because yeah. that was very much sometimes Chris's vibe too. He'd be like, "Oh, can't wait to talk about the Eternals." I'm like, "Please don't talk about the Eternals." No, please. <laughs> uh, his third question here is: If you could choose an old set to be remade, not with like legacy cards, but with new miniatures, which one would you choose? I would sh just off rip it's Fear Itself, but you have to add in Captain America from it. I would love to see a remade version of Fear Itself, but with Captain America with all the shotguns, rifles, all that stuff. Uh, from the final like part of that book, that's easily the set I would have remade, updated. That'd be so fun. I don't know what about you guys. I think War of Light would be super cool. <sighs> that would be like, such a good one. If it was the exact same set list... Like, there's Bedovian, there's Despotelis, there's there's so many iconic Lantern characters. Yeah. And with, like, the new Hero Glow, with uh, oh. all the effects that they put on it, like, even, you know, commons, uncommons get, like, flashy effects nowadays. I would maybe go with Legacy, but they already remade the Kingdom Come as Chases, so that's kind sure. of not... Oh, so sure. I mean, Legacy was, like, that's just the most hype I've ever been for a set, and that's a mixture of, you know, nostalgia, being young, and just really cool characters in a really cool way. But I think one that hasn't fully been like re encapsulated that would be awesome is around the same era, and that's Ultimates. Like with that, okay. they got the first six printed damage with Grey Hulk, which was really cool. The the Iron Man in the Ultimates costume, Ultimate Thor, the Vet Black Widow, the Vet Hawkeye, Vet Cap. If you played during this Ultimate era, Punisher. The Punisher, yeah, yeah you knew how cool these were. This is like the first set we saw Carnage in as well. Oh. So this set was really, really cool. I think that would probably be, and I mean the set list even outside of like the uniques, which is equivalent to like super rare chase level today, was just fantastic. So I think that's probably what I would go with. His next question is: I've seen in the podcast you guys like to talk about food. Oh, you don't say. Uh, is there any food that you would like to try, or on the contrary, something that you would not try under any circumstances? I'm pretty much open to trying anything. Yeah. Things I don't like, I'm very not picky. Uh, the grossest things ever, mustard, ew, get away. Really? Yeah. Just case certain in general? Yeah. Looking at mustard? I mean, we've had this discussion. Yeah, this yeah. discussion? Oh, seeing, geez. Seeing mustard yeah. is like, if there's a little mustard. bit of mustard, it's like, okay, if I don't know about it. I mean, mustard's whatever. a little spicy for me, but I yeah. like mustard a lot. <laughs> Seeing mustard, like, squirt out, disgusting. Jelly jam. <laughs> I know, it's oddly so specific. Is it is it better if it's, it's a taste. jar and you, like, scoop it out with a The like, great coupon, scoop yeah. the mustard out? You know, I guess, to, I don't want to go too deep in. Okay. This is not a question to go too like deep mustard. in, but I'll, I'll humor it a little bit. 
over a... You know what you can't go too deep in? A nice jar of mustard on your skin. Yeah. That big old glob of mustard. My mom was, like, basting a turkey over Thanksgiving, and she took this huge, like, glob, like, Dijon mustard and was, like, you know, basting over turkey. I ate this turkey. It tasted fine. But watching her do that, like, it actually made, like, my spine, like... Oh, man. It's like that. I don't know why it's so bothersome. That's so funny. But then jelly jam, I just, I don't like the consistency of it. Jello is, like, the most disgusting thing on the planet. Yeah, Those are, like, the I things I don't like. Jello. Jello and then Ludafis. Crazy. Ludafis. Yeah, I had that in a bar. The yeah. smelliest, grossest, ew, 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 ew. I agree there. Yeah, so, I'll agree. try anything. I'm open to doing it once, at least. My but, line uh, is... Those are my lines. It's, it's on, like... Like organ meats, I'm not big into that. Mm. Um, you ever had menudo? Yep, horrible. So like the, oh, I haven't tried. The that. thing is, like I've tried most of them. Yeah, I grew up on essentially like a co-op, and the like lady Switch that train? owned, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I grew up on oh, Halo. Uh, I was in like Blood Gulch. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just, I grew up on Blood Gulch. No, it, was, it was a farm co-op, but like the lady that raised cows that we would like trade stuff with. She would make cow tongue sandwiches, oh. and she made this casserole that, like, was just, like, all the extra bits of cow that you don't eat. This is, like, real old time. Like, she was probably born in the Depression era, because this would have been, like, 95 or 6, something like that. And she was, like, had to have been, like, 80. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Maybe 70. I don't know. That makes sense. But, like, she was, like, just doing what, like, she like had always done. a witch's done. cauldron of cow. <laughs> that is basically what, it, Yeah. No. And like other than the time that I like I had no idea what wigs were. This is a separate conversation. I had no idea what wigs were. One day I found a wig in her house and I thought like her hair just like fell off. <laughs> and I was like terrified. <laughs> I never saw her bald, but like I just like was like, oh start touching your own like uh oh <laughs> yeah. Uh but no, I've eaten too many too many like organ meats and like random like bits and bobs of like cows that like back when we were in like depression era and like when people had to eat what they had to eat kind of like area or timeline. What about that carny specific salad dressing you were talking about? Oh, oh, yeah. This is Midwest like classic. The fact that you guys don't know this is insane to me. <laughs> Dorothy Lynch, Dorothy Lynch is an is. absolute treasure amongst like I, at I least forgot about the Dorothy Lynch. Yeah, at least like Nebraska, Iowa. Because like with that Dorothy, <laughs> I had this conversation with my coworkers because I was like, "Can you believe my friends don't know about Dorothy Lynch?" And they're like, "Well, where are they from?" And I was like, "South Dakota." And they were like, "Well, I don't know how far Dorothy Lynch gets out of Omaha." And I was like, "I knew about it in Western Nebraska." And they were like, "That doesn't mean anything." <laughs> I was mad for myself. Oh, that's I a, suppose that's, twice in a that's the food I want to try is some Dorothy, Dorothy Lynch. Lynch. <laughs> Just it's, for Simeon. It's just salad dressing, and it's just like the story behind it's so like lame. It's like some lady made. She just made it. She just made salad That's dressing it. for like the the local firemen's union, oh. and people were like, "This is good. Make more." Make and more. she was like, "Okay." And then they just like <laughs> take it, like take it home in like Tupperware containers, and then you know, dump it on their head. Fifty years <laughs> later, they're they bottling the fire, fireman helmets on, <laughs> and that's the whole story. There you go. Oh, jeez. I'm saying. Dolly, what's the food that you want to try? What's the food I want to try? And you won't try? Um, well, food I won't try is, um, like, chicken legs. I don't know if you've ever seen... Like, not like a chicken oh, leg, yeah, yeah. like a chicken's foot. Fried, like, it's physical, like, chicken it's feet, actual yeah. foot with its little claws and stuff. I think if I knew that that's what it was, that I was, would... I it looks, double take it straight up all. looks like it. Yeah. And I'm just like, have I'm not going to have this. Have you, you ever can't. butchered like chicken? I've never butchered chicken. No, we're not chickens. So like well, chicken, like all poultry, really. Yeah. Like, they've got like that little tendon you can pull and like make their like feet. Oh, they, yeah, like a crab. Feet yeah. Sure. They have the, yeah, you can like sure. pull like the little. Oh, like, I've done that crab and stuff too. Yeah. I mean, you can just. Oh, yeah. The red lobs. No, you're the South Dakota red lobs. Oh, you've done it to humans. Well, I'm just saying, you can take your arm and you can make your face close. You know, just by pushing the You know, just around. playing with the bits. Just playing yeah. with the bits. <laughs> but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. You play with your food. Uh, yeah, do chicken feet, stuff like that. That's just, d- d- Don't vibe with that. I really don't vibe with that. Um, I, I would like to eat almost every animal, though. I, I, I don't think there's a single animal alive I wouldn't like to try. Alligator, whatever, stuff like that. Squid. I like, I like weird good. foods, you know. I've had... I would eat... Yeah. I would eat pretty much any animal, probably. I'd be down to try pretty much anything. Snail. I've always wanted to... Sure. Escargo. You know? like The only reason gross, I wouldn't sure. snail is, like... I don't know. I feel like they're, like, just 
like earthworms. They're like just like filled with dirt. Oh. I don't know what what do they eat sure. that isn't what, just like what snail eat. I can't be sure that this animal is well, clean. You see, I feel like me and snails really get along because they also don't like salt. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, probably just anything. No, <laughs> no. Uh, I asked for it, but yeah. <laughs> so any, really anything. That's so I would point. pretty much be down to try, except for like if it's like, but that's like the animal, you know, like that's its foot. That's weird. That's gross, you know. Because I've had, uh, you know, Rocky Mountain oysters and stuff. I think that's fine. They're good. They're great. No, I love them. They're great. I won't lie. Grew up, grew up on a ranch. Um, this is like very young me. I asked my dad, how come we don't eat those as well? And I pointed to a horse <laughs> because we were, the cows are right there. The horse is right there. I'm like, why don't we, why don't we eat that one? That's just lanky cow. Have one for you like, a, a pond. Yeah. <laughs> and you might. You might. And so I won't lie. Ever since then, if I'm a monster for this or whatever, I'm kind of like, what do horses taste like? I know places sell them. I know they, yeah. I know they, whatever. They yep. sell horse meat somewhere. In Nebraska, I can think of one butcher exactly oh that'll still butcher a horse. Oh, jeez. But, That's but now that I've gotten older, I'm like, wild. they're our friends though. We, these are a buddy, <laughs> these are pals, you know. But anyways, uh, his last question here. Finally, if you could choose one person, be it an athlete, an actor, a singer, to play hero clicks, who would it be? Who's one like famous, I guess, iconic person or something like that to like play here? Let's make him alive. I think Harry Calvin is a great choice. Ooh. You, I bet you could get down with that because he's already like Warhammer he's a guy. Warhammer he's guy. Yeah. yeah. And then giving him the BVS Superman. <laughs> <laughs> this is you. Oh, he's horrible. And he's just like stuck at the table, like, get me away from this yeah. topic. Away from him. It's just like you. And here's Ben Affleck. This is Ben Affleck, <laughs> Batman. We can have them fight each other. I'll be Ben Affleck. Are you watch this. This is my friends friend. in real life. <laughs> in real life, are you guys friends still? That would we be, could be friends with Do you real. talk on the weekends? That would be so funny. Uh, just cornering Henry Cavill. Oh my gosh. I mean, I would probably just go with getting like, like MF Doom or Zarface would be really cool. Okay. Oh, maybe getting them to play. I was gonna say like, is it someone that I'm gonna play with like regularly, and so I want them to be like chill, or is it just I just choose one person to just maybe they just start playing? Because I would yeah. probably just dead pick, or like, alive. Who's too. who's like the I was thinking the biggest person okay. in like the world that I could like who's gonna publicize hero clicks the most by like being the a presence or something? I yeah. guess. Yeah, Mr. Beast. Oh my Mr. God. Beast. I'm going to give away thousands of hero clicks today. <laughs> That's great, Mr. Beast. I've been doing that for years. Mr. Beast, get on my level. Yeah. No, Mr. Beast would be fine. Um, somebody controversial would be, like, okay. I wouldn't want to, like, necessarily, like, play with them in person, but, like, just anyone that, like, would be, like, a, a big name to attach to the game. And so, like, people would, like, search it. Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. <laughs> One of the Pauls. Logan oh, Paul. That's, that's actually a good choice. I though. would hate that, though, man. Oh, it would be miserable. It would for ruin you. it. For oh. the game, it would really probably help. It would probably really help. No, I hate it. Yeah, no, I hate this. Simeon's so looking at this as very uh, philanthropical. This would, yeah, this would, uh, this would really I think that's a word. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Philanthropical. Philanthropical, is that the... Yeah, yeah. I feel it would, get, it would get a lot of you know a lot of eyes on it. That's for sure. But I would hate if either Paul brother played this game. I'm like I don't want to see their, their annoying face anywhere near me. Um, he'll never, probably he'll never not. believe what HeroClix figure I found in this forest. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my! That's <laughs> ah, so old. I can't believe people still bring that up. He said he was sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah, uh, well, no, it's ridiculous. I don't know who I'd want to start playing Hero Clicks. So those are all those are all for the most yeah, part. Yeah, I feel like a lot fun, of the celebrities and athletes that I idolize yeah. would just be like, I sure don't want to do this, and yeah. that's fine. I think it'd be fun if Wyatt Russell played. I mean, and I like, think Wyatt Russell, you're like two of the coolest figures in Disney Plus. That Wyatt Russell, I love you, Wyatt Russell. Please, I love you. And then like, it would be just that. <laughs> that's it. Playing with Michael Jordan just to meet Michael Jordan. No. I mean, I'll take that, you know. But he would just be like, dude. No, <laughs> more than likely. Or he'd get extremely competitive about it. Yeah, like, Ooh. yeah. I wouldn't want someone who's going to get super competitive. If I'm being honest, somebody that like, someone who's like would be really fun to just kind of play with. I feel like Dom Mazzetti, Bro Science. He would be okay. hilarious if he start playing Hero Clicks. Who do you think would be like the like from a historical point of view? Who do you think would be like dominant if they started playing Hero Clicks, mm. like dead or alive? Like so, like. Do you think like one of like the Sun Tzu? Yeah. Sun That's Tzu it. would annihilate Hero Clicks. Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Click the dial. Was he? I don't know if he was much of a strategist though. Was he a strategist? I and mean, he's smart. Very smart. Yeah. I'm sure he could figure it. Sun Tzu's the strategist though. 
Um, Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He wrote a book on it. Yeah. The Art of Heroclix. The Art of Heroclix. Dude, could you imagine? (laughs) You just redo the Art of War, but it's like, if you think about their spacing and choosing maps, it's actually one of the most important choices you can do. Remember, Um, when you have line of fire to your opponent, they often have line line of fire fire back to to you. you. Hmm. (laughs) Deep Zuzims. Zuzims? Um, No, I, I do wonder, like, Napoleon, or like, I don't know, okay. if you to take all like historical figures, dress them up like Patrock, uh, yeah, <laughs> would have like the best. George Washington is like, Well, we have to play Calendar Man on Christmas. I'm like, okay, George Washington, all right, I get it. We're gonna attack him on Christmas. I think we Paul know. Rudd would be another good one. Okay, I bet he could probably get down with it. He seems like a guy who would maybe, yeah, sit down and Nicholas play. Cage, dude. Oh, yeah, Nicholas Wheels Cage. Wheels of Vengeance with Nicholas yes, Cage. Dude. Yeah. Wheels of Vengeance sealed with Nicholas Cage while watching the Ghost Rider trilogy. Oh, well, that's, that's so good. That's the final uh, answer. Final answer. All right. I heard that's that he take. actually he got it. like the Neuralink. Nicholas Cage oh, actually got that, dude. and it, so it gave him a real life pen and stare, but it just instantly downloads. All like seven hours yeah. of the Ghost Rider trilogy oh, right. into your brain, so you just experience it all in like a single second. That's beautiful. I think he goes on to say, "Thank you for the IPF and all that you guys do." He's from Costa Rica. It means a lot. It's a great gesture on our part, and he ends it by saying, "Hasta la próxima." So. Shout out. Thank you so much, Ingus, man. We really, really, really appreciate it. We appreciate your support. And yeah, hey, if you're from Costa Rica and everything, please, uh, we're going to have IPF submissions here happening sometime soon. Please send in a submission, man. It'd be great to have you. We are on. we are getting started we're with the ahead. IPF. It's just, uh, things are busy, but it's coming. 2024 is here. We've already received Water. quite a bit of donations. Yeah, I'm <laughs> getting a little cold. Oh, yeah, I fear. We <laughs> shall it should be a good time this year. We've got some big stuff planned. It's just uh, taking a little longer to get off the ground. So It's really in the year. Uh, moving next up here, we also asked the same thing on Facebook. If you had any questions for us to go ahead and write them in. We'll go through a couple. This will just be, yeah, should be pretty fun. If you could add, this is old Sean here. I really like uh, this one. If you had add a trait to any modern figure, which figure would it be and why? How about right. it? Let's count down from three, Calder. I bet you know the answer. Okay. Three, two, one. World's Living finest. Legend on Cap. Oh, oh wow. Living I was Le- guessing yours. Living oh. Legend on Captain America yeah. Legacy. I 100% agree, though. That's on the Legacy Cap. Smoky Foot Cap. Yeah. Give him Living wow. Legend. Please give him Leg- Living Legend. Yeah, wow, actually. World's Finest. I, he's. You could take a he's- trade away from him. I'm still <laughs> okay. playing him. Like, uh, World's Finest is beast <laughs> mode already. Simeon, is there a figure in modern you'd add trade to? Oh, man. Probably. I'm trying to think of, like, what do I what do I think is, like, the most, like, common thing in, like, modern right now? Uh, I wouldn't want to make something, like, crazy overpowered, but I think I would give the Rare Hulk from Avengers 60th. Okay. Not, like, the Prime, just the yeah, normal one. Yeah. I would give him some sort of, like, evasion trait. Because I feel like the mm-hmm. only thing he really lacks is a little bit of defensive okay. ability. Okay. And I feel like the Prime just overshadows him so much because... I have I one you. in the mail right now. <laughs> <I'm interested. laughs> He's yeah. Yeah. Yes, if you could remove or alter one mechanic from the game, which would it be? This one, I think we could do a 3 2 one and I think we'd both be on the same. Oh, yeah, okay, let's do a 3 two, one tarot cards. cards. Yeah. <laughs> Jinx, jinx, you oh, both owe me. Jinx, you owe me a tarot card. <laughs> yeah, you owe me a ten of cups. How many tarot cards have we given away? Well almost, over a hundred. Almost every one. I mean, I think, I think it is over a hundred. Yeah, like a couple bricks worth. Like and then 50 in that last batch that we did. Lots, yeah. All the ones I opened from my case. All like all our full set from the slop, right? Yeah. 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 All the when slop we came back from, from, uh, I gave away all mine from that slop, too. Yeah. So. When we came back from They're just not Indianapolis. There's not the dial age. If you like them, you like them. Totally fine. Fine, but we are uh we're gonna have some champagne ready on rotation day. i think they're super cool i want to collect great them. art yeah great to collect. Art's cool as far as game mechanic i just thumbs yeah. down it's just something that like is always like a last thought for me and the only time it's in even like a thought for me last or not is if i'm building competitively yeah because there's no reason not to flip build with them when you're building competitively but at the same time, Unless like... Unless you know you're so good, you'll still win an event even without them. <laughs> well, like, there's... <laughs> I kept thinking I would. With tarot cards, I kept thinking, okay, well, uh, I got my team built, now I need to get my deck. 
And I just sometimes I just never did, man. Sometimes it actually like is more of a hindrance for your team because it yeah, your it'll help your yeah. opponent opponent more I than mean, you. So. I'll just say like you know, I play. There's one specific match that I played, and I'm sure a lot of players can relate to it. But just having your opponent flip the perfect card on you like two, three turns in a row is just. I mean, it's just like a drowning feeling. It's just like like we're in right now, physically in this room. Yeah, it's very we are drowning. It is, but it is just like really it's like your team. You know, you're already playing against an opponent who has a stout team, and then when they just flip these cards at random and just give them such an edge, it's just like I don't know. It's just it's a bit upsetting. It's I don't like up seeing to it. Simeon in here. Oh no! Yeah. Yeah. Soon it'll be up to me and then Ian. <laughs> Luckily, I found a milk carton to stand oh, up. So. <laughs> Let me blow these floaties up here. <laughs> that should keep singing. Uh, next question is, if you could add a new generic keyword to the game, what would it be and which modern figures would have uh, fit with it? I was going to try and see if we could do a countdown again. I don't think we can. No. Uh, you, you know the keyword I want to add. You don't yeah. like it, so. Well, that's okay. You say yours. Yeah, survivor. survivor. I want Survivor to be oh, a keyword. Like so the that TV would, show. No, 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 no. no, oh, no, no, okay. no not the hit TV yeah, show, Survivor. <laughs> Um, but I really started thinking when I was making my Evil Dead, my custom like Evil Dead set based off the video game. Like no keywords really made sense for a lot of these guys, except no, for it's not that I didn't like this keyword. It's that uh, there wasn't a lot of applications. I wasn't sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. no, hundred percent. I I do agree with that. But I was thinking if they ever started doing more horror stuff, or if like Marvel Zombies or DCs or whatever, you could give like that Harley Quinn and a few other characters that were from that story. They're like survivors. When you're in a horror movie, when you're in a zombie apocalypse, whatever, really about the only thing they can give you is survivor. That would be the only keyword I could ever think of. That's kind of what they're called in like Walking Dead, all this mm -hmm. other stuff. When I'm making the Evil Dead set, the marksman keyword wasn't a thing yet. Otherwise, yeah, a lot of them would have got that. Yeah. But like, I had to give most of the... Thankfully, there's like it was based off the video game, so anybody that was a warrior class got the warrior keyword. The support class is like, well, there's no support keyword. I don't really know what keyword to give you, so I ended up giving them all like a new keyword, the survivor keyword. So that, that would just be for like people that, you know, we're not really a team, we're not really anything, but I'm just trying to survive. If they ever did, like, Savage Land, I think all the guys from Savage Land could have, like, survivors, stuff like that, you know? Um, yeah, that, that would be my generic keyword that I would add. Yeah, to go off of that, I think... Uh Fear Factor would be enough. Stop. Good one. Yeah. Stop. I like that uh, one. Who wants good to be idea. a million? Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, not game show related. Um, man. No, I think uh, we got Pilot back, which is cool. We did. Yeah. Uh, we saw like the first character that has a marksman keyword, which I think is like right. something that makes a Absolutely. lot of sense. Arsenal, yeah. The March LE kit. Um and I, I think that makes a lot of sense because we've had martial artists for a long time. And that's been a stand-in keyword for a lot of, like, archers. Yeah, yeah. martial artists. Was Which some of them should that have that, be. Yeah. but it was, like, not quite... It's like, right. Green Arrow should have it, but, like, normal comic Clint Barton, like, Hawkeye, like not as big of, like, yeah, a martial no. artist. Yeah. He's, like, like obviously he's... Like Ronan, going. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a few variations where that's passable, but there's a lot that, no. that just doesn't fit. Right. And he generally does get that keyword. Yeah, uh, biggest loser for a keyword. That's another yeah. good show Sorry. that could be a <laughs> oh, oh weakest sorry. link. Weakest um, link. <laughs> it's like opposite of survival. The voice keyword. <laughs> American Idol masked singer. There we go, masked singer. For anyone that wears a mask, that's good. Yeah, one of Ian's least favorite figures is a masked singer. Prime Batman. Yeah. Prime Bat. Yeah, yeah, masked singer. Uh, uh. Well, that's uh, that's a cowled singer. Cowled singer. I mean, I hate that. You know, I think objectively, the strongest Batman in the game is just singing at you from across the board. Is it very funny? Absolutely. Was it fun to build with and break? Oh, totally. It did so much. Yeah, I did the same amount of stuff. Yeah. But uh, uh, unfortunately, Legacy Thanos kind of ruined his reign. But at one point, I had a team that was like you know plus thirteen. Oh, I did too. Yeah, absolutely. I love building with that piece. I don't think I've literally ever it had owned fantastic it, four swap on it too, so you could switch into uh, deep cuts to get enhancements. So he's guaranteed funny. to be a four damage. Get the exo specs. Like, dude, back when you get perplex damage, I just had a team that had like. Twelve what's his face is oh, scientists on it. Oh it was like God, Gotham yeah. City. It was a so Gotham like, City Star Lab. Star Lab yeah, scientist. Like yeah, that's turn of all that they just choose perplex or whatever. I, I needed to have enough of them so when I rolled it, they would get perplex. That was the plan. There was another so one funny. that I had the Miles Miles West that had just mm. like a ton of PD, a ton of yeah. enhancement. Yeah, that was that was super fun. But then Thanos came out and it's like, well, can't one shot this guy and the team's not big uh, enough. What's your what's your keyword? What's a your keyword? keyword? 
Uh, I already t- I just gave you like ten, man. No, stop. I honestly don't know if I have a keyword. Uh, I have one. We I can think. come back to it because when like thinking about keywords, I'm like, mm-hmm. obviously, I wouldn't want to make the pool of like deity, cosmic, uh, ruler that I wouldn't want to make those smaller. Like maybe cosmic because that's that could be split. Oh sure. But something I would like to make smaller and like something I think they give to too many people is scientist. So okay, yeah, I, I think you that. can split scientists okay. into like people that are actually scientists, like that's like their thing. Yeah, and then people that are like smart, like yeah, like a technologist, I guess. Okay, for like you know, like the Tony mm. Stark type people, an engineer, an engineer or maybe, I mean, or like uh, you could maybe do the same kind of mystical, mystical as well. Like, that. like yeah, magical could be a subset of I, mystical because like Wendigo isn't. Like, he doesn't do magic, but yeah. he is influenced because right. of, like, a curse. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, like, so, he like, had magic active done magic to as opposed to, like, cursed. Wendigo, yeah. you don't do magic. Cursed could be a keyword. Yeah. No way. Oh, here's one. Don't athlete. Do magic. Oh, yeah. Athlete could be a keyword. Yeah. Well, There's well, a, actually, Dale athlete Suderman. could be a keyword, yeah. Cyborg would get it. He was football. Flash mm-hmm. Thompson, he would get it. Yeah. Okay. There you go. All right. That's pretty good. I'll take the that athlete, one. Athlete the keyword. The Dale athlete. Suderman. We'll finally get some Super yeah. Pro into Hero. Super Pro, yeah. Somebody said something about, uh, I can't remember who it was, if it was online or where, but uh, somebody was like, finally I can play Dale Suderman and Lucky oh, Pizza Dog. That yeah. was me, dude. Oh, was that you? Yeah, I said that on the yeah, podcast. I so. <laughs> somebody else did say it online, though. They didn't okay. really want to oh. play it. Yeah, whether Dang, quoting you or what they were doing. The Airbud they, team? Yeah, the Airbud team, dude. Malcolm Rush asks, uh, what is your favorite moments, good or bad, from Dial H before you joined the podcast? And then he has a second part to that question. Uh, favorite moment before, I think, was going to... Uh, well, Calder and I had some good matches, but I think probably the most fun was being in Indiana, like, right before COVID. I mean, you earlier. Moments on the podcast. Oh. Before you... From Dial H before you joined yeah, the podcast. Joined so. the podcast. Yeah, with oh, your favorite so moments. I was thinking, like, from real Dial life... H. Oh, from oh, Dial H. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, okay, before I join the podcast, so does he want on the podcast? I would, I would say, yeah, podcast moments that were your favorite. Before, before I was on before the Before you were part, I guess, part of the overarching Dial age. I, I have, I have okay. one. When Sorry, it was, I'm, when it was I'm the, a little uh, confused. When it was Austin, Hunter, and Drew, they did this thing where they just kind of like poo-pooed on Rocket Racer. Like, as a character, they're like, Rocket Racer's awesome. We love Rocket Racer and Hero Clicks. But who is this guy? And they just deep dive his Wikipedia and just kind of make fun of him the whole time. But they're like, yeah, but it's kind of in the way that it's like, yeah, Rock Race is so cool, dude. He'll steal your girl, you know? But it's like, no, he's not. <laughs> Rock, Rock Race is kind of a kind of a loser as a character, but he's cool. Okay. And Hero Clicks, he's like, but like, yeah, them just like really going into Rocket Racer's whole bit was pretty funny. That was probably one of my favorite moments they had on the show. I think one of the best things they ever did was the Mage Knight oh, Resurrection. I caught a glimpse of that, and I was like, please, don't you dare. <laughs> the, the Mage Knight Resurrection starter review. Never watched that. Video. It was an in-depth review. I don't know if... I, I assume most people listening have seen it, because 6.3 thousand people have watched that video 10 years ago. Yep. Man. Uh, I've actually never watched it all the way through, but I do own every figure from no, Mage Knight oh, Resurrection. It's funny. I mean, set. I liked Extreme Rules, man. Before that, yeah, uh, that was such a. And good I remember time. Uh, oh, hearing about like how upset you guys were. It's like, oh, this kind of tanks. Like we put so much effort into this, and I was just like, dang, that really effort. sucks. That and was then, yeah. Between has a cult. We, we shot you know? like most of it in like one take, two takes, something yeah. like that. Um, but getting everything like said and done. And then you were drinking the, Natter Days, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, Simeon picked, like, and they were quite, like sixteen ounces. They were quite literally like the worst beers to chug. Yeah, I can't remember why. Some drinking, drinking lemonade. Beer. I think it, I think they just like happened to be in the fridge. Yeah. Uh, but no, getting all of that like filmed and everything, and then like starting to edit it and realizing all of the like the gameplay oh, footage good, yeah. had doubled audio because the. Uh, webcam was recording and the mic oh, was recording. So bad, yeah. And I spent probably like 10 hours trying to find a way to reduce echo. And at the end of the day, I was just like, you can't. Like we can't. You just can't. In, so. the, in the original intro I made for Dial H, uh, this was towards when we were about to hit like a thousand subscribers. There is like some clips of like the earlier moments, and one of them was just Calder like whipping Simi. <laughs> And that was just such like, a good time. It was for just like a split second, though, so you just hear the... <laughs> and that was about so it. Good. So that's another favorite moment before the podcast, I guess. Um, 
yeah, I mean, it was fun to just go on and do the price analysis. But I was going to say was initially, cool. I guess if this answer counts, uh, just hanging out in the hotel room and like actually getting to know oh, sure, yeah. like, Calder and uh, everyone else who was there, who I kind of knew. Well, I did know. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't really talk to Calder at all. I have yeah. a fun video of that where I said, hey, say something to Luke, the guy who pulled the Colonel oh. America zombie. And Calder had some choice words for him. I did. I think I did. Yeah, I believe, I believe so. <laughs> He's like, Colin looked at me, he's like, you're going to make me do this? I was like, sorry, recording. Uh, what's your favorite moments uh, after you joined the podcast? Oh, man, there's so many. I think one of the like, worlds. Worlds is such so the first, good. Uh, yeah. The first worlds that we covered. I think, I, well, the second one. I think. Yeah, the second one was more fun for sure. It I was, think the second yeah. one, just like getting like the getting a meet up with Luke was so cool. Luke from Canada, our, uh, if you right. like the thumbnails, he's our man. Sometimes, sometimes we do. The bad ones are us. <laughs> um, yeah, getting to meet him was super, super cool. After, like, I spent, I don't know, the better part of a year, like, talking with him on Discord yeah. so much, hours and hours and hours. And so to get to, like, meet him and work with him and just kind of bro down was yeah easily, I think, I think, yeah. And then, you know, just obviously us being a group, you know, just seeing our work come to fruition after, like, you know, we're coming up on, like, two years now. Um. Yeah, it's just it's really cool. So to have everything at full power, to meet him and to have him like you know take us to like another level making those cards. And oh, just, yeah. Do you remember the that has stickers to be, he did? <laughs> yeah, it was puff puff stickers. The just puff has like stickers. a quick edit. I was like, wow, that was really impressive. That was like insane. Yeah, there's been a lot of highs. Um, I think one of like my favorite like little stints that we did was when we were doing Thursday Throwdown. Yeah. And even though it was a lot of work and sometimes it was, like, really hectic and stuff, sometimes we kind of just had to, like, shoehorn a thumbnail in. When we started doing, like, the yeah. uh, the cosplay, like, the, the closet cosplay, so like, thumbnails. They're so funny. I think people remember those more than they remember any of, like, the actual videos. Absolutely. Because... Yeah, I remember your Namor, for sure. <laughs> Namor was, was good. so good. Iconic, dude. Oh. Uh, one of my favorites was Shazam and Black Adam, and then the, like, Secret War. You can never truly come back from seeing Simeon's Midriff, though. You yeah, can't yeah. come back from that. That's Whatever fun. set it was where I did, Octo like, Dr. Octopus. That was, like, Secret Invasion. Or yeah. Like, yeah, Sinister and I, or something. I had, like, my Silver Morph suit on, and I'd made my own, oh, like... Conchu. <laughs> no. Yeah, this is Conchu. <laughs> this is yeah, Conchu. Conchu as well. Yeah. Uh, that was, like, a really fun stint. It's like really hectic because it was like 2020 and like we couldn't actually play. Yeah, but, uh, those were seriously so fun. We came down to like, wow, it's yeah. Wednesday night. We get to do a Thursday throwdown, upload it tomorrow. Like, what a blast! Yeah. Yeah. You know, even on the ones where it's like we uh, we play some games we play for like two and a half hours. Yeah, like the event, the very first game with cards took us like two hours. I want to say Avengers versus Justice League was like super long. And game. at no point did we think like maybe we'll just. Set a timer and see yeah. who's ahead and board. We never going to set a timer. Never been. Actually, timer. I I had somebody never. just the other day message me and be like, you know, I learned. They, I pretty much learned how to play Hero Clicks or got back into the game using your Thursday Thread on videos. And I really like that you guys never set a timer because like all you guys would kind of take it slow and just do whatever. Yeah. And then the game would come to like its natural end, which is like really cool. Which it's way more satisfying. Pretty fast think. sometimes. Yeah. Really yeah. never play with timer unless it's for unless a tournament or a video. Yeah. yeah. Tournament 100%. or video, but. It's Slugfest. Also, I'll say, like, I can't remember their name specifically, but I remember somebody, like, reaching out and saying, like, like 2020 was a really hard year for me. I didn't get to, like, hang out with any of my friends or go yeah. and play. But, like, every week I'd watch your guys' content, and it meant, like, a lot. It, like, really helped me get through this year. And I was like, the fact that I can do something silly and dumb yeah. and yeah, have, like, a really. profound impact on somebody else's oh, like, that's the coolest thing, mental yeah. health or just, like, you know just like their love for the game, anything like that was like really touching, but especially cause it was like Thursday, like our Thursday throwdowns were not edited They're super like quick and dirty. Yeah. They yeah. were, uh, I cut like the beginning and the end off and sometimes like some little bits out of the middle. Yeah. Just in and out. The that was day, it. Pretty like, much. Oh man. Also the, a quick shout out to the Vermilion basement apartment. Those were some fun nights. Those were those, those really nights. were good times, man. But yeah, none of us knew what we were doing. No, but was, we, were, we were having a great time. Those were so fun. We were wow. having a great time. We so, had such a good time yeah, though wow. that we were willing to sacrifice two bricks to that apartment. Uh, yep. Yeah. Well, yep. that's another story. Yep. Yep. 
No, but like hey, do is I guess I don't know. Uh, the, the like the Vermilion Walk we went on like that one that night. That was a good time. I was just well, kind of chatting. Went down to the river. river. Yeah, got rid of that bot. I mean, um, yeah, went down to the river. Nothing else. There was happened. a lot of discussion about what we wanted to do with Dial H that night, and all of that has come true, and then so. So oh, yeah, that's pretty yeah, cool. Really, every time we've set expectations for ourselves, we've exceeded. By so awesome. By like a landslide. Yeah. Favorite hero clicks moment. Uh, so I guess similar. gameplay wise, um, I mine would be winning the Infinity Gauntlet Thanos. So nice. That was like a fifty-five man event at Rainbow. And then Sentry Void was like the hot thing. It was 500 points, no resources. I played a Sentry Void, played the uh, Morgan Le Fay, who got the Legacy card from Chaos War, and then the Chaos War, who's fast, uh, fast forward to Scarlet Witch. I was the only person who played that variation of the team. There was like eight other Sentry Voids. I knocked out like half of them, and then none of them made it to the finals. Won the finals, and right as I like got the Thanos, which you know is like the biggest prize, one of my favorite characters, it started to like rain really heavy. So you can hear like thunder outside. I'm like Ooh. holding it above my head. And, uh, Chase and Luke were with me, and they're just like, "Yeah, you know." Shop owner Brian, who like practically raised me, I was always at that shop. You know, was like so proud of me too. So that was a really cool moment. Um, so as far as gameplay goes, I don't think anything tops it. And in that match too, yeah. the final match there, um, I was playing against a Chaos King, and Chaos King's mid dial. This is before cards run or dials run cards, folks. His mid dial got crazy. He went to like hypersonic six damage. So you had to hit him for like four or five to get him through that part. So yeah. I did exactly that. And the guy accused me of dial spotting him. And I was like, I don't even know. What, did you think I picked up your figure while you were looking away? But he was like, did you, like, you were dial spotting. And Brian just told him to shut up. <laughs> so <laughs> that was, he's like, Ian knows his stuff. Like, come on. So that was, uh, yeah, easily the coolest thing. And then my mom picked me up. So couldn't drive. I was like 15. And uh, What's yeah, I was like, yeah, mom. For ego antibody. Uh, six ten seventeen two, sidestep, super strength, toughness, blank. Is it sixteen? It's sixteen two. Six ten sixteen two, sidestep, super strength, toughness, two blank, thirty points. Z right? No TA. I like how there's no segue. We just all knew what was going on. <laughs> Ian, right? Ian has been sidestep, super dials. strength, toughness, six ten seventeen two. There you go. Wow. wow. Yeah. Give me another figure from AI right now that's a common or uncommon. Tigra. I, Tigra? La Tigra. Oh, what was she? Yeah, what was she? 8, 10, 18, 2, Stealth, Blade, Senses, Blank. I think. 9, 10, 18, 2, Stealth, Blade, Senses, Blank. You're, wow. Stealth would not <laughs> have been my call. Error. Error. The margin of error was there. If I had to guess, I would have said, wow, like, charge off by sure. one point on the stat. Goodness gracious. If you give me 10 minutes to memorize a set, you I will get 90% you of their open animal. dials. I have photographic memory, but only for your clicks top dials. I had to do that for like a hot minute. And then uh, even like in competitive aspects in like constructed, there's just like so many yeah. that I just, I would keep in mind like the top things that kept coming up in tournaments, like results and stuff. But I would never commit to memory just like a full set or anything because it just happened with like previews would come out and that was like oh prepping for like pre release well or not not even sealed? prepping just a preview came out and I'd be like wow I need to like look at this and I used to just I mean as a kid like I'd go to the computer lab and just obsess over these things yeah just look at dials and I remember getting like kicked off computers and then the hero clicks I got. Uh, like blocked because so of me. Funny. So weird. Blocked. We're so my notebooks would get taken because I would write down no stats. Kidding, so it's just no like kidding. it became not, like second nature. Not only like spoiled in the fact that like dials aren't on the front, you can ask your opponent like to see it, yeah. all that stuff. But also we're spoiled in the fact that you don't have to go to HC Realms to see dials anymore. Yeah, you don't have to like slog through like the forums and stuff. And when they weren't on HC Realms, you're like digging through eBay. <laughs> yeah, or <laughs> something, dude. Uh, I think. One of my biggest moments, I'm not going to say my WKO win, I'm going to say my ROC States win, because okay. it was Popper that year, and I think I had more fun winning with WWE mm. than I did winning with Avengers. Good time. My Avengers build wasn't that different than what a lot of people were running, but I did have like probably, I'll say 90 points that was like stuff that people weren't doing, Yeah. so 40 points was two Mudmen's. Like the bystander that you have to KO three times to actually get it KO'd. That was like pretty good. That was big because Star Fox and Tigra 
both had like the chases from AI, both had stop clicks where they had mastermind and that was it. And you really want something that you can mastermind to. Uh, that was big. And then Tigra was like the 50 points that like no one else was really yeah. playing. She has empower her whole dial. And part of like that team was giving Star Fox Mjolnir doing flurry from like eight squares away. And if you roll like a four, you get to heal everybody, which came up like big in one of my games where like I hit that four and it healed the chase Hawkeye back to his running shot. Oh, if okay. not, I would have just been like saying, cause I was going against, I think that was Lucas's team with like the monsters. Oh, sure. And he like, he got like an opening hit on a couple people. He did like an ID call in and managed to like knock that Hawkeye off of like his running shot dial. And if I hadn't rolled that four with Star Fox and also just like by chance positioned him correctly, because like I didn't do it on purpose. I just happened to be like next to Star Fox when I did that. Uh, that was like one of my big wins. But I think um, what was more interesting to me was the the ROC popper states that year or maybe it was the year after where I, I won with WWE. I think it was the one and only time where like all the stars aligned in WWE between like the rules that we had at the time and popper allowing them. It was just enough to like yeah. make WWE potent. And the fact that like people redid like their teams to get away from like some of the stuff that I was doing for like the Ooh, next ROC. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. People, a lot of people were like, Oh, Dr. Claire Finn. So I don't get submission hold. Like, cause I took down an onslaught with just like submission. Yeah, that was gnarly, dude. That yeah. and uh, I think the finals game was just like it was so like we obviously didn't film. We uh, well, it is filmed, but we didn't like film it in like the way that it would really oh, sure. need to be to be appreciated. But it was so like cinematic the way like Shawn Michaels. I declare the attack. He's using his like full like map move to kick onslaught like 14 for five Ten and time gets game. called right before like i i think it was like after i rolled my attack but before he rolled his super senses so it was like that is the last attack you get and it so, so cool. good so good yeah favorite moments ah, it's pretty tough that's just really 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 tough for me I think almost anything that's been happening with dilation the past couple of years, you'd always say is like a favorite moment, pretty much. Anytime we work on like a new video, like, you know, the last live stream we did for the Clixies or two weeks ago when we were filming and making a video and doing the podcast, that was like such a blast. So it kind of feels like there's always just great moments just happening, happening, happening. But I think the first time we ever got confirmation that we were going to be able to like get sealed product for WizKids. Oh, that, that was, was awesome. so yeah. cute, man. We got the, the oh, email saying, we're going to get Disney <laughs> Plus. I was like, what? No way. Finally, after like so long. And it, I was just like, hey, I was so happy. And then when we did, when I finally arrived at the apartment, I was like not actually in Vermilion. And so Simi and I are both driving up to meet. Racing. We're racing. I'm in this terrible work pickup <laughs> driving from Ames, Iowa to Vermillion. It was like a three hour drive and like one of the worst interstates you can ever drive on in your entire life. It's horrible. Um, then I'm driving this loud, noisy farm pickup like on the highway. It's terrible. And then yeah, me and Simeon finally converge. We film and he drives back that same night, but it was like, man, this was so oh, awesome yeah. that we got to do this. Yeah, it was so I, great. I remember, I think you just texted me like exclamation points and then you called me. And you're like, <laughs> we got the break. Oh, dude. I, and I shut I my door. I'm like, so yo, I was like, oh, this is insane. And I was like, okay, well, what are we going to do? So well, I'm going to go drive me up somewhere. And I was like, okay, well, just send me everything. Yeah. Just dropped everything I was doing and <laughs> edited together a bunch of gameplay and uh, the yeah. unboxing. Yeah, filmed me a boxing and a ton of game. Man. And I'm here with. The Kingpin. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. And like, at that point in time, the green screen was like no in my room. room. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. like, but we're editing just... that stuff, I remember like watching it. I was like, oh, it was high tech. Oh, yeah. This next this level. Next and level watching stuff. it now, I'm just like, he dweeby. You're, you're kidding. <laughs> the elevator sketch, uh, though, still, I feel, the elevator is, is so underappreciated. High Go watch the Disney Plus unboxing. The, the very one. first Disney Plus yeah. unboxing. It's a slow moving elevator scene. I could have. I could have been a little more concise with it, but guys, that was so the funny. first green screen project I like ever like really worked on. So funny though, I love that though. Um, Clark's favorite casual play style Ooh. that you played in recently? Honestly, the videos we do. 
I love fun. no one's seen this yet and it may we may make a new one or whatever's gonna happen but the multiversal the glitch have to make the glitch in the that. multiverse that's so fun it's a very expensive casual yeah, setting to be is. able to make but it's like as far as play style, so it's fun oh, it's the, so the one fun. it is a very casual just, play style it was literally like the ending score was like 60 there's something so weird 35, about it and, and it was just the last it. couple of so our boring. games we play against each other is we can't kill anything no, we can't do anything nothing wild. hits even the Big Buck Bash, I was like... Big Buck it's Bash. wild how little Batman dies in the Big threes. Buck Bash. Yeah. No willpowers. Bummer. So sad. And then Prime Spider-Man. Also, it was like ultra meta, just... The Iconics off, where uh, Calder is running like 300-point yeah. Doomsday, and just <laughs> whiffed like the first like three or four attacks. And so all his like, willpowers. Yeah, it was like, I'm Batman just not doing any... <laughs> He went to he went to do something and yeah, you bat slapped him. He's like, like, I'm gonna attack. Hey. Oh, are you? And I would just eventually I didn't even say anything. I would just hold up the die <laughs> and look at him. He kept him from like doing anything twice and that was I think that was like just a reminder that like no matter how cool a character is, if it's the only character on your team, it's gonna be like real boring sometimes. Some hurdles to go over. Yeah. Um with that video too. Sadly, the reason why that one is not on the YouTube is because, for whatever reason, the video, like, it will only, like, let me upload it in, like, 40, 480p. Oh, that's right, yeah. It's some weird quality thing, and I've tried, like, downloading it directly, tried doing it through, like, uh, Google Drive, whatever, doesn't matter. On to the next question. Adam asks, how did the three of you meet each other? We kind of already went into that. Yeah. But yeah, you know, just uh, basically through weeklies, you yeah. know. And uh, there's a great, I mean, there used to be an exceptionally good tournament scene in like the, I don't know, the Tri Sioux State Falls area. And Omaha Gauntlet was good, you know, it was kind of like one big scene. Even K, like we went to KC, um, oh, some yeah. of us would go to Des Moines. So but like, we're going to like Kentucky, but yeah, they're getting real crazy. But I, I know like Ed and, um, Ed and a few other people from Kansas City would come up and participate, and then we'd go down there and participate. And obviously, oh, yeah. like Sioux Falls would come down, and yeah. they, they didn't ever go up. Because... Oh, another story about when I first met Simeon, since I remembered it. We were all eating dinner, and uh, no one else was interested in this conversation. <laughs> and there was, and people, people were for a little bit, but then we just kept going, and we thought it was hilarious. We were talking about recasting the X Men. <laughs> We we're like, oh well, Danny DeVito Wolverine, of course. Yes, all five times. <laughs> uh, what were some other ones? Uh, I don't remember, but that was so funny. Like Kevin Hart as Luke. Oh yeah, Kevin Hart as Luke Cage. Tiny guy. Yeah, Ed looked like at me like, guy. really, yeah. Kevin Hart? I'm like, he'd be perfect so for the funny. role. <laughs> oh, Luke man. Cage is like good natured and jokey, right? Like. I think like I think it was like Jaleel White as Nightcrawler, the guy who played Steve Urkel. Yeah. Did I teleport there? <laughs> it's just uh -huh. really stupid stuff like that. Oh, so there was another like I think that was like the second time I uh -huh. met Sim, and I was just like, got to figure out how to play with this guy. What events are you most excited to cover in Orlando at the end of the month? Easy answer for me. It is the chess clock. Chess clock. I'm yeah. very interested to see how that's gonna shift people's building. We haven't really seen competitive play in months either, so I think it's going to promote play similar to Nationals, where we're going to see really hyper-aggressive stuff, because I think the people who are going to play in that event are going to be very, like, aware of the clock. I don't think this is necessarily, like, a true study. I think this is actually, like, kind of a poor study on if the clock is good or not, because you, like, know about it ahead of time. I think you would have to do a blind surprise clock. But regardless, I'm very interested in seeing how people decide to build for it, which does add, like, a new kind of metric or parameter to it. So I guess it's a fine study. But it would be hilarious. To see someone like, who stalls playing a clock setting. I was going to say, like, I know, dude, next year's world is so excited. Next year's worlds, we just, like, drop, like, random clocks, and we're like, whoever wins the clock off gets this, like, legacy card. Like, doesn't matter if you win the match. Oh, just man. whoever uses oh, the least amount of time. But that would also potentially influence the game. Influence I think the, there'd be a Facebook post or two about that. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe not at one. My game got whatever because these idiots got My off. game was clocked. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's easily that. I the think problem, the, yeah, I he's think asking, that. what's the best thing you've ever cooked? Mm, gosh. Um, lobster bisque. Uh, honestly, lobster bisque. Love lobster bisque. I don't think Ian was there. 
Actually, I'm, I know for sure that Ian wasn't there, but you came to the Friendsgiving, right? I did not come to the Friendsgiving. You weren't in town for not being to the Friendsgiving. Okay. Um, gosh, it was a... I made, like, five different, like, entrees. There was, like, a, a vegetarian gumbo, which was just all the normal gumbo stuff. And then, like, instead of, like, andouille sausage, it was, like, the whatever vegetable version of that was, mm. which turned out really good. Um, sausage. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the brand that's name. That's the yeah. technical term. Uh, but there, there's that. Then there is, obviously, <laughs> like, I did, like, a, a small turkey... Uh, honey baked ham, and then I also really like making like my own crunch wraps because yeah. oh yeah, dude, in college I would do that all yeah. the time, man. Making a crunch wrap like crunch wraps are great. They're like, so cheap too. Yeah, you can make your own with only the ingredients that you like, mm -hmm. only the way you like, <laughs> and with and, meat that's actually meat. <laughs> yeah, after a while you get like really good at it, and like you learn like ooh, I, I prefer the hot sauce the on George top Foreman of the cheese, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. Ooh, and so... Those that was probably, a staple when I was, like, 20, man. Yeah, I still make so. them. I'd rather do that than, like, tacos any day. And I still, I mean, I still do tacos okay. and, like, nachos and stuff occasionally. That's just, like, easy, you know, Tuesday night meal. Yeah. But uh, crunch wraps for sure hit a little bit harder. Uh, I don't know. So lately, I've been into using, like, those Hawaiian rolls. And just okay. making like big smash burgers. Um, that's not like anything special. It's not the, the best thing I've ever cooked. But like right now, I don't know. Those Hawaiian rolls are just I'm, good. I'm about halfway through the uh, Bob's Burgers like burger cookbook. Oh, yeah. Where it's just got oh, like, nice. yeah, it's got like the burger of the days and like whatever different episode ones. And some of those are really good. Some of them yeah. are like, it takes me. 50 minutes to find all the ingredients at the grocery store. Ooh. And it's like insane. It's, you know, which is too. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> it's like, ah, good thing I'm buying this arugula for the one burger I'm going to make. You yeah. know, Funny. it's like, I'll never use this again, but thank goodness I have it for that. I'm not a great cook. I'm probably the worst one here at this table. I'm a real whatever gets done, gets done. I'm a, Think salt I'm gonna I'm I'm burn the steak, uh, burn the chicken, uh, burn the rice yeah, I in the I, automatic rice cooker. I, I, uh, you're selling yourself you like, short. Tell us the story about your. No, that's uh, the worst food I've ever tell made. Tell us your story about the, the chicken, chicken farm. Chicken farm. <laughs> chicken farm. We don't need to reiterate chicken farm. I think people by now know the the chicken farm story and how I'm not. Um, but I do make decent waffles, or at the very least, my family thinks I make the best waffles, which is really the only people you got to impress. So it's true. It's true. So like for Mother's Day or Father's Day, growing up, I would like wake up early, or in a kid's eyes, well, yeah, I'm totally awake before my parents are, and they're sitting in their room like, when's that little dummy gonna make waffles? Mom, sorry, I can only pretend to be asleep for so long. Hear me clatter around in the kitchen. Um, but yeah, so like probably like waffles, and then I would start doing like chicken and waffles too mm. for my family, and they liked they liked those. But the best thing I ever made at the time was not last year, but I guess two years ago. So December of 2022, when me and my little brother were snowed in at our house, big snow drifts, crazy snow bank, just terribly snowed in. I didn't have a tractor, couldn't get out. We were stuck there for like five days. I, uh, I looked at what we had in the fridge and I was like, I'm going to make, this may shock you, Ian. I'm going to make uh, spicy chicken strips with hot sauce. Oh. It's hot <laughs> sauce, honey, and crunched up. Frosted flakes for the breading versus like flour breading and stuff. And I made those chicken strips and then we didn't have any ranch. I know it was truly an emergency. Wow. Snowed in, no ranch. And I found these packets. They're just Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning. It says mix with sour cream and you make ranch. I'm like, oh, whoa. Those things are good. Dude. Yeah, dude. And I tried. I was like, oh, this does make ranch. I was like, so surprised. <laughs> and in that moment, that was like the best thing I had. In, that's the best like, thing I've had in with days. Those were dude. So good. So good. Um, McConnell says, if you could design one figure, not a set, just a singular figure, what would it be? Man. I'd say it was in the realms of Marvel and DC. Like yeah. It could be made. Outside of it, easy, no-brainer. Actually, it's tied between three. MF Doom, Zarface, or Harvey Birdman. Okay. Oh, okay. Three-way tie for outside the realms of Marvel and DC, and none of those things are going to happen, so not a real answer. Honestly... Call me basic, call me vanilla. That is actually a very advanced flavor, if you ask me. But I want to make Batman. I want to make Batman. <laughs> yeah. Not even any, like, I guess, nope, I guess a like killer a version. Like just... uh, his No Man's Land costume with blue and the yellow belt. Okay. Or like... Uh, I always liked uh, Year Zero Batman. 
Sure. Uh, for like no reason, just like he has a bow and arrow, and so it's like feels very Green okay. Arrow ish, but it's like it's kind of fun. Still Honestly, I would badness. take an animated series Batman. I would take you know any Frank Miller Batman. That's like my favorite Batman. Uh, I would do like the Elseworlds Batman. You know, I just want to make a Batman. Yeah, that's that. That may be basic. There's not like a specific storyline. They've pretty much covered all the bases with him. But like for example, like one power I'd love to see is something that you can do in like the Arkham games where he throws a smoke cloud and everyone's like, "Oh, where'd he go?" And then you can like. In cap them with the the batarangs. You can dip out, or you can just start beating the crap out of them, and they can't see you. So you can yeah. chain a huge combo. So I'd okay. love to make like a costed smoke cloud. Quake is free. Place Batman within four. Something like that. I think something to represent, and then like name the power. Like where'd he go? Oh, that'd be cool. Maybe you know, funny. to like really represent like the the I guess like the tactician and the just kind of martial artist side of Batman. I think that'd be a really fun power. How useful would it be? I have no idea. But it's also a way to make Smoke Cloud cool. So there you go. <laughs> okay. I really want to say, like, Galactopool um, from, like, the Deadpool Kills. The, oh, oh, it's, okay. it's from after Deadpool Kills the Universe. Or Deadpool Kills Deadpool? Yeah. yeah. It's like when all the Deadpools are, like, they, they split off. All the, like, different Deadpools of different universes split into, like, two factions. There's, like, the ones that are, like, done with uh, reality and, like, the fourth wall and whatever, the yeah. viewers. And then there's the ones that want to like save what they can, and I can't remember which side Galactopool is on, but like he has the I think they call it the B Arthur, which is like the Deadpool ship. Yeah, they like crash that into him, yeah, and that's like do. he doesn't do a whole lot. But I just if we're ever gonna resculpt something, I think a like three by six, like eighteen inch tall Galactopool oh, would sure. be really fun. Kind of funny. Um, with the swappable heads on the Galactus, they could yeah, they could, yeah. and give them they could have one with like part of the B Arthur coming oh, in. Ooh, <laughs> got a funny. Jeez, uh, I don't, I don't really have anything from DC that I can think of off the top of my. Oh, I do. Uh, Mogo, the Living Planet. Oh, sure, oh, I that'd think, be awesome. Even I think if it was like be, a map. That'd be yeah. Cool. I I think that in your mind, Mogo, you see, the page, you see a big planet. In my mind, he's like Solaris. He's like okay, a, sure. Maybe yeah. not a two by two, but like he's the same kind of like sure. He's like shrunk down for the game, but like you know, still okay. And then outside of Marvel DC, man, I would love to get like a AEW like license and like get like like Orange Cassidy. So I think awesome. would be like the funnest to design. Yeah, he's got so many like random things that like you could flavor text and like different stuff he could do. Introducing like a new AEW team ability. Which I don't know how you do better than the WWE, WWE but yeah, yeah, yeah be fun. Uh, my non Marvel, non DC is Ash from Evil Dead. That's not, not even a question. That's the only character I care about more than any comic book character. He's he's my favorite. Um, for Marvel, it's Fear itself, Captain America. All I mean, I've been saying this. I'll say it to the day I die. That's that is my Captain America. It's like the I- most iconic moment for Captain America to me, anyways, when he's holding the line. No other Avengers are there yet. He's just got like shotguns and rifles and stuff, and he's fighting like the war bots and the Asgardian troll. Body and, war yeah, bots. dude, the Scotty's war bots and all that stuff. And there's just a mound of dead bodies, yeah. and trolls, and war bots under him, and he's just been holding the line the entire time. One man against the world and fear itself. So good. Um, and then DC, it's probably Yellow Lantern Guy Gardner from his '90s run, where he's kicked out of the Green Lantern Corps, and then he, him and Lobo, beat up Sinestro. He steals his ring, and then <laughs> the only way to recharge the ring is when he like fights somebody, and it gets more powerful because he just doesn't have a battery with him. I would really like that. Yeah, to like Guy Gardner instill fear, in the- yeah, he's got to instill fear. Otherwise, it just it's just like at like a kid's window. He's like, <laughs> oh, ninety-five <95%. laughs> percent. Wait for oh, shot. so he's Monsters Inc. Guy Gardner. Basically, he basically is, yeah. Because he's got he's got no battery. He's got scream no. for me. There's a great there's a great comic where he fights the Eradicator, and it's like really fun seeing them go toe to toe. He yeah. makes like a knight armor around himself. It's really fun. Wow. And he finds out that laughter actually charges the ring. Better yeah, here. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he, he changes his Monsters <laughs> Inc. <laughs> I think for Marvel, then because you guys did both, uh, I'd like to design a Nightcrawler too. Ooh, I would love a Nightcrawler. I really like Excalibur Nightcrawler. Like my biggest, my biggest, an my biggest uh, Nightcrawler. Yeah. Wow. Uh, all most Nightcrawlers have been winners, but okay. Yeah. More often than not, they've been winners. Out of the ten Nightcrawlers that exist, I don't. 
I don't know if that's true. House of X, balls. He's awesome. He's cool. Days of Future Past, rocks. He was pretty cool. Love that Nightcrawler. Uh, the okay. ones from Fantastic Four. Well, the okay, X-Men ones were certainly Nightcrawlers that came out and existed. The but Fantastic there was cool Four sculpt. ones, the yeah. REV, all started with phasing. Well, and they all went to hypersonic on click two. So that's tough. But he phases. Clobber Time Nightcrawler goes he's his awesome. absolute hardest. He's awesome. Well, Web of Spider Man is like goes pretty dang hard. He's like itself. so good it's not cool yeah, anymore. Yeah, that's <laughs> sadly true. Um, I, I would say most. I would say more than the not. Sam Crawler is so. It is like so 50, 50 dude. I honestly, 50? Dang, I think it's pretty close. He's just had so few iterations. I just think that most of them are stand out than than don't. Yeah, they they definitely. Stand but out I will more say, were you like me when XDPS came out and there wasn't an animated series dude, Nightcrawler? So That's all I wanted in that set was Nightcrawler. I would have loved. Change your ways, Logan. <laughs> I would have loved that Nightcrawler in that dude. set. Yeah, that that was a huge bummer. I'm not even gonna lie. I liked XD, XDPS, but that was it, yeah, it was a great. Thanks set. for reopening that one. Sorry, you know, that's cool. Like they they restarted that series, right? They did. The X Men ninety seven is that out? I, I don't know. I'm gonna watch so. that if it is, but I want to watch. Yeah, they, they also did the comic series like based around like oh, did X Men ninety seven. Oh. So from like that animated series, we. It's potential, like in the future. That'd be a great icon. We could get an XDPS two. That would be, that'd be a iconic sick icon. Oh my god! Probably not like XD. It Give wouldn't me be a called Brotherhood XDPS, and uh, X Men. You know what's the funniest just part X-Men about that in ninety seven or something? Is that Warpath is on the Brotherhood side in the intro, the entire show, and Warpath is never in the show. Yeah, hmm. he's like not in. A, he's in an episode as a like background me. character, but he's no. literally never. He doesn't have a spoken line anywhere in that show. There's like a lot of like fun facts up. based around like up. not just that, but like all the animated like superhero cartoons of that era there's like oh, yeah. so many like random facts where it's like yeah we had to cut the intro like six months before we even had the first episode so we didn't know Who it's like gonna... destiny facing off against mystique and you're just like yeah what <laughs> like, there's a few different like yeah i think destiny like that. is somewhere in there but i don't think she, she ever she probably is she wasn't in the set i don't think she's in the show i don't know uh, Owen Buss asked, if you design a holiday figure, who would it be and what would they do? Santa Claus. Santa needs to be... If, if we're going to make all these... What was that Man Christmas all this cat stuff? that... Yule was, cat? Oh, yeah, the Yule, Yule cat that hates on your drip. <laughs> <laughs> if you look poor, yeah. right? Uh, this man's got fake Jordan! <laughs> he gonna get eaten by the cat! So funny. There's, yeah, so there's funny. the... Right the Yule <laughs> cat, and then there's also, like, the Yule goat, the, the Yule lads... Um, the Yule lads. Yeah. And these lads, they got Supreme, they got Gucci, they are dripped out of the so minds. The Yule lads. lads are Iceland's mischievous. Oh, Santa they're Claus. icy, all right. I don't know. I don't know. No, they, there's there's a lot of like holiday esque <laughs> figures, but I think like the the number one is like I'm the Yule cat, your drip does not impress me. We need like Dr. Dreidel. Like he'll just Dr. be Dreidel. I don't know why I did German accent. That's yeah, that was that was suspicious. Too interesting. Uh, by the way. <laughs> Dr. Dreidel, he, I, he'll be like the top from The Flash. Like, okay. But, uh, I don't know. The first spinnable here for the streets. Like, uh, yeah, he's actually got under the bases, like, an angular, like, His little... His dial piece. spins. That was the quick he starts. Oh. Ooh. Mm. So, so you so literally cool. spin him like a dreidel, and it's like, it's like I'm His on clips. dial is so dude. loose that you can spin, <laughs> spin and him. He plays a little song, That's awesome. Too. He said do it doesn't that. have to be Christmas. It can be another holiday. We all instantly we all did instantly Christmas go Christmas, didn't we? Uh, uh, we'll no, we went Hanukkah. Yeah, wow. and you went whatever Yule cat's from. Yeah, so it's like Christmas. It is probably well, Christmas. Yeah, that's because it's like if you didn't get Iceland, a new drink for Christmas, Christmas, yeah. Christmas yeah, the, cat, the cat cat's would, gonna eat you. Cow get you. It's like the same kind of Christmas. As non- like Krampus. <sighs> if the cat didn't know. see you, Uncle out Sam, out but drop. it's just Fourth of July, Uncle Sam, not Freedom Fighters DC, Uncle Sam. That'd be kind of fun, I guess. Yeah. Uh, war bonds, Uncle Sam. War, yeah, <laughs> buy war bonds, Uncle Sam. Fireworks yeah. and barbecue, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam, you should have like a real strong connection with him. Wasn't he also like a beef rancher dude, Uncle Sam? I don't know. I'm almost positive I'm not, that like I don't know about that one. That like the actual like dude that that's based off. Oh, like that's like what his yeah. was in the. Uh, they used him as like huh. you know like war bond kind of like stuff, but Man, um, actually I don't know. That'd be that's worth looking up. You know? Yep, I, <laughs> that's a holiday I don't celebrate <laughs> there. But uh, um, I always remember it, though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say, man, a generic. I'm really 
Maybe like just a turkey on Thanksgiving. Oh, like okay. a wild turkey. Oh, that would actually a be... wild dial turkey. I feel like you could still give it snowball. Probably. Yeah. Like turkey. Well, it has, like, has a Black Friday. Black, Black Friday Black. dial. Yeah. yeah. Black yeah. Friday yeah. dial, dude. If Where's they did like crazy? they did. Have you guys ever seen like Thanksgiving? Charge and prove the movie. I haven't seen Thanksgiving. I have seen Thanksgiving. That. Yeah, it's the it's the ice, but really, it's bad. like some guy on like death row gets transformed into a turkey or something. What? Imagine like. What? The terrible plot that is Chucky. Like Chucky, yeah. That's and like, I thought of. The same people yeah. made that movie Tire. It, yeah. Tire? With a, like, to be fair, Tire's cool. Tire can, like, it's just literally like a tire that blows a things off. Like, sentient Tire mind. that blows it's things serious. up with its mind. What? Anyway, next question. It's actually question. a good movie. <laughs> what got you into playing Clicks? Oh, we, we gotta, gotta answer that, that yeah. Two yeah. questions. What is the legacy card you were making, Calder Ness from RLC Cup? I'm Big not a liberty, secret. I'm not a liberty to say. Sorry. I can't, mm. can't tell you. Two. I'll tell you this. It is from a Marvel or DC property. That's all I can Whoa. say. Wow. Your one chance. If you had one shot, one opportunity to bring back the guy that doesn't sing that. Uh, it's I, was, I was going Hodge for a John Cena. Yeah, actually. It's Cameron Hodge from UXM. Yeah, it's Cameron Hodge from UXM. <laughs> That's the legacy Jeez. card. There you go, man. To be fair, if there was anything, any camera hottest <laughs> can, if there was any, the any super rare that deserved a better dial, it was that Cameron Hodge. It is not. He doesn't deserve to exist in this Heroes. Guy, I hate looking at him. Oh, he's so ugly, Simeon. Cameron oh, he's Hodge? but he's like supposed to be. I he's like he terrifying. I, he's I think we should go out of our way to everyone. If you have a Cameron Hodge, uh, message us. Uh, send it to us for free. We are going to start the largest Cameron Hodge collection as of right now. I have now. three already. I, we, three? I have yeah. one as well, so we're at four. I bought a I lot hate, of... I used guys, to have three. I've sold them. Every sold them Uncanny away. X-Men yeah. booster I bought... Guys, help loose, us get to 100. ...would either be Malice or Cameron oh, Hodge. Oh, oh, and I was like so happy that it wasn't rare, anything. But it was like, at a certain point, I was like, I keep pulling super rares, but it's Cameron Hodge or Malice. You've like, seen that Rob Zombie movie, right? The House of a Thousand Hodges? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> With uh, Dwight Schrute from The Office. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He gets turned into Cameron Hodge. And, yeah. uh, and yes, Manny, we will be playing Orlando. We're playing the team's event. But for the yes. most part, we're going to be doing coverage. That's our main goal. That's our main, that's our main point. Favorite figure of all time. This should be easy. Zero ninety nine Arkham Asylum Batman dubbed the Lamppost Batman. Zero forty two Rare Hammer Thor Captain America. That's my favorite figure of all time. Uh, zero fifty four Wolverine. I think it's, yeah, the... The Is headmaster, one? yeah, headmaster oh, Wolverine. I think he's fifty three. I thought he was. 52. Is he fifty three? He's one of them. He's he's in the fifties, but uh, mm. I don't know. The I'm just flash. Yeah, we'll get to the bottom of this. The sculpt is though the my best. My bet is fifty three. Best dial, and I think he's fifty three. I know. I mean, sorry. I, mean, I think he's fifty one. Fifty one. No, he's definitely not fifty one. He's definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah, not. definitely not fifty one. Wow. Wow. Are okay. you kidding me? The fact you you're gonna even... come with that outlandish <laughs> claim? You might as well say forty two. I think fifty. <laughs> I thought fifty three was Cyclops. Might as well say six or fifty two is Cyclops, isn't it? Give me one. Or okay. I have the answer in just. A I don't think here. they're back to back. I think not back to back. They might be, but I don't. I think they are. Maybe I thought they, they were. were. X Men Xavier School Wolverine is fifty three. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. Who's 54? Yes. Well, I guess you didn't look at the set. You looked at Wolverine. I'll, I'll, I'll find Cyclops. Let's move on to the next question, though. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. What is your favorite figure currently modern age? Ooh. Okay. Cyclops was 52. Oh, so like, that's oh. Exactly. I thought he was Maybe 54. I was thinking of Cyclops. 52 though. makes... Yeah. I remember that a lot yeah. more for some reason. Cyclops being 0, 52. Favorite I definitely wrote that one right on Bill Cheese plenty of times. Yeah. There, but Man, right for now... Modern age. That's actually really tough. I think the one I'm building guess, with most. I guess who would I put as my number one from the my top? 10? I can that give you a top be, yeah. three, top three. So bias, Green Lantern, Batman, just because I love the character. Uh, playability, Legacy Daredevil. He's literally been on like every single one of my team builds for yeah. the last like ten teams I've built. And then for kind of a mix of the two, where I like the characters' playability, I like they're just fun, and I also think they're like competitive. Is Camo? Those would be my three like mm-hmm. favorites right now. Okay. Um, I think the number one I'm most looking forward to playing that I haven't played yet is Chase Namor. Uh, I've had him like sitting just around. Oh, yeah. Um, from the same set, I'm really uh looking forward to playing what's her name the uh the super air not prime. Uh, Lilith, Lilith, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. I, I'm looking forward to playing her. I wouldn't say she's in my even like my top 10 of what I want to play. Oh, you know what? I Really, really want to play. So I've been organizing my stuff. I've talked about this on the podcast, but I've been organizing my stuff. I finally got Wheels of Vengeance organized, Ooh. which you would not believe how much 
my generic motorcycles and hell cycles take up in that box, but it's a lot. I have eight motorcycles. Oh my gosh. Jeez. I have like five hell cycles and eight motorcycles. More. I have five hell cycles, and yeah, they take up space. I really want to play, uh, at some point, I really want to play the 10 bikes, 10 goons team, <laughs> which comes out to 300 points exactly. So I, next time there's a 300 point game, I'll do like. One of my favorites, uh. All the goons, all the things. Bikes. You should do that. And I'll play, I'll play Goons Day. Mikey Ninja sent me this team where it's just Doomsday, and then you fill it in with goons. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> he calls it Goons Day. Goons like, that's Day. awesome. I love Goons Day. Happy dude. Goons Day. My favorite figure in modern is Prop, probably just Pegasus Captain America, honestly. I don't know how he's not going to make like every single team I, I also for a while. But that, that Earth X Absorbing Man Prime is like yeah. super up there. He's so fun. So While so many teams. putting away all my Wheels of Vengeance stuff, something I realized I've played, but like haven't played with what other figures I should play it with. I haven't played Dracula yet. And so, I haven't either. Dude, yeah, so fun. I have like eight vampires, Drac so fun. I'm super ready to do like a pump up Drac and just create a bunch of vamps, make them do a bunch of stuff. My plan is to play it with like Wendigo, give him an extra free move. Oh, yeah. You gotta play Genesis too to play make sure the vampires are hitting before. Ooh, okay. And then make oh. a theme. Oh, Scary Genesis, vampires. because uh, she gives makes blades rolls your base damage plus, plus one. one. So, yeah. vampires are guaranteed to hit for four, it makes her easier chaining. I also think you consider looking at like Spirit of the though. Game to have five actions so you can potentially get a big vampire chain off. Ooh. That's what I would build around anyway. I don't that's know if that's cool. correct, but I think that's it's cool. fun. Play Merlin, Spirit of the Game. I mean, Calder had the best idea with giving people the symbiote. Yeah, so they have seen that's what I really like. You can give anybody the mobility bonus. Anyone. Anyone. Steel energy, yeah. Yeah, you just gotta hit. It's crazy that that's one of the best ways to mobilize a double based figure. I know, is right? Dracula that was the best way to get Captain America to move. Is a Drac and symbiote. It's so funny. Best uh, figure currently in the game. This I isn't mean, so much for three, us, but... two, one. Scott Porter. Oh, Scott Porter. <laughs> yeah, Scott Porter. The second white best shirt, figure Scott in the Porter. game is Scott, three, two, Scott one, Porter. Scott Porter. Probably white shirt, black shirt. Yeah, yeah and that order. order's the best. And then they pecking are. order, I'd probably put Carnage, Silver Surfer, and then I'd as like one point. That's what I was feet. saying. I would say I put Carnage, Silver Surfer as like the third after Scott Porter. I'm just like barely yeah. eking it out on Prime Spidey though. And then Moe is oh geez, Smash sure. if we count them all, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, you play them as a unit. Yeah, you, you play do. one, you play so them good. All. Um, and then after that, we go one, there's a we lot of all. stuff, but I think all of those things are like, well, Scott Porter is like literally in a league of his own. It's like, that's like almost unfair to say he's just, he's better than yeah. that. He's playing a different game. That's how good Scott Porter is. Uh, he's, he's costed in like Heroclix 2030 point values. Yeah, dude, that's true. And we're still playing in Heroclix 2024. Scott Porter, I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if he'll ever be. on power creep, dude. Yeah. I think just below, like, Felix Faust is uh, a Scott Porter. Yeah, for, like, yeah. greatest figure of all time. Like, he's that he's that real. What are your favorite places to eat on the road? You want to guess mine? Uh, I don't need to. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> You're gross. Uh, steak, steak and shake. shake. Yeah. 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 No, no. I love steak. It's mine. It's mine. No, we've no, we've no, stopped no. probably at more steak and shakes while traveling <laughs> as dial H. Uh, than, uh, yeah, I, love I steak wish you guys shake, could dude. see us right now so I could do my impression of Calder <laughs> when he wants steak and shake. Please hold the salt. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, uh, steak and shakes honestly really good. That's where we end up going, so I suppose it's that. It's not yes. bad. I, uh, I will cookout. say my least. Oh time. yeah, Shout dude, out to cookout. Gotta get, yeah. gotta stop That's a Memphis, Memphis only, Memphis, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My least favorite steak and shake experience is when the uh, bus boy, whatever you want to call oh, him, geez. was just like super passive aggressively like attacking this that dad with his person. children. Yeah, he was like, I guess some people can't hear, huh? I called his number like 10 minutes ago and he just sat there, so I had to go bring it out to him. What an he's idiot. Like, get he's, like, he's like, get talking to us like we're on his side. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's like talking so loud, and the guy was sitting like two tables Dude, away, just trying to have a meal with his kids. And I was like, you need to chill, man. Like, yeah. it's not like he personally attacked you or you have to pay for his food now. He just like slightly inconvenienced you. And yeah, it was. I don't know if we've really eaten like anywhere else on the road. 
Probably, I know the worst place you eat in that was Nationals McDonald's. That was Dude, a bad. That was place. the only thing open. Yeah. Oh, that, that was that tough. was like yeah. We I went, was so hungry. We tried going like, like three or four different places. That was, that was a tough place. Dude. And then Domino's was closed. Tried to order. Yeah. Them. We tried going a couple different places, and there was just, like, nothing on our route. Huh? Kept driving further and further mm-hmm. away. And we're like, we're not eating downtown. No. Next time, if we do that, we're we're definitely we're stopping like something. somewhere or like Something's leaving early yeah, from the early venue. Or something. Exactly. I don't know. What's a what's a moment in a tournament that you would oh, take back? Gosh, I know mine instantly. Yeah. Um, I know mine instantly, too. 2014 Worlds, I think, is the Ghost Rider era. It's the one that just got a legacy in Wheels of Vengeance. Um, thought I had seven damage. I only had six. Needed seven to kill a Heroes for Hire team base. Go all the way across the board. Pop my Heroes for Hire ATA. It's probably going to make no sense to half the people listening. I'm with you. But uh, go in. Punch him with the Ghost Rider. Deal six. And I had already used his free damage to knock Scarlet Witch off prob. And when I realized I hit for six and I'd already used my free damage, I was like, oh, my God. And at this point, I'm 3-0 and on the day. And it, I lost the last round because of this. So what ended up happening was the worst thing ever. So hero, or Villains for Hire on their last click is like, I think it's like 10-12-18-5 with Flurry Regen. Mm. Flurries me, kills my Ghost Rider, Regen rolls a six. It's like... Yeah, the game was just worst over. possible scenario. Like, if he had rolled lower on the regen, I could have maybe clawed my way back. But uh, yeah, in like right at like right as I rolled, I was like, "Oh, I'm only dealing six with the utility belt," and that's like, yeah, easily the moment where I'm like, "Oh, they killed me, killed me inside." I have, especially as like a 15 year old. <laughs> yeah, I have like brutal man. Two ones way more prominent the, uh, than the other. Um, if in 2018 Worlds, with the team that I was playing at Worlds, if I had known that Tri-Sentinel would have been ruled the way that he was slightly after yeah. Worlds, I would have... I don't know. I'm not going to say I would have won, because like that's like a long stretch, and I, don't, I didn't perform like super well. But... I would have been at such a ridiculous advantage that Dude. it wouldn't have even mattered no, what like like, yeah. like misplacing like you know all that stuff wouldn't have mattered because the amount of like free damage that like they allowed Trison to do just like auto activating retail. literally move up pulse wave whatever just uh no nah, I'm on pulse wave now yeah but I didn't attack yeah it doesn't matter though after I was losing yeah. I don't care I activated the free so I get to do the thing yeah, yeah. Uh, that would have made a huge difference I would have a lot of like the games the that I played the arguments I got in online dude that that's really so that was still sick though that that was oh, absolutely. but it made sense unfortunately it made sense for well um, actually i'm a big nerd and I'm, no it just made sense you can act no, there's nothing that prevents you from activating any free action okay so intention isn't there though that that yeah. clearly i know it isn't intention. but i hate that it made sense yeah cuz it did i hate on that paper, it made sense yeah. too, but on paper like intention, and i mean there's been laws like, and that like was stuff the worst part of this cuz like when yeah. i understood it i was like oh well, yeah, that is how it it's works. It's like, yes, I guess that is technically how it works, but clearly it's not the intention. That is yeah. how I've always been. Yeah. There's nothing that says a dog can't play basketball. So, exactly. Yeah. It's very similar. Yeah. So, like, since, like, they don't say a dog specifically can't play basketball, even if that dog is, like, I don't know, like... Classic case of... 30 years old and dog years. <laughs> Retriever he's allowed to, Georgia, 1978. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It's, shook up the hero clicks world for years. It's one of those things that, like, it's... I don't want to get like deep into like the rulings and stuff about it, but like it's one of those things where it just disappoints me as like a community. We can't just collectively agree yeah. that this isn't how something is supposed to work. The one time we did was World because it's, Collector. Yeah. And then they still said, eh, eh. Yeah. yeah. It's only, but it, that's yeah. a whole other story that we don't need to get into, but that was like one of the big collector times. Is the point there. 2018, I was, <laughs> I think I was the only person in the field that was running three Tri Sentinels. And there was like moments where it's like the the person that got second was Easton Brock and I played him round one and even playing him round one, not like having a great feel for the team. He was playing Gotham city underworld. I still went all the way across the map, pinged everybody for one. And that was without like the the broken damage thing. That was like straight up just like, uh, gosh, I can't remember the name of her from, uh, Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls. I know. That's what I'm trying to think of, too. Because I not, remember you using her. She's like a 50 point. Nightshade? Nightshade. Nightshade. Nightshade, Nightshade yeah. yeah. And let you move to a hindering. Nightshade, she could free, like, move to a hindering within five, and then she could power action, take a character within five that shared a keyword, and place them adjacent yeah. to her. Mm-hmm. And so you could, like, on the Star Trek Underground Tunnels, it was just like a perfect, like, 
five squares away was like the furthest you could get. You drop them. So I'm dropping Tri Sentinel in square. Let's see, it would have been like square seven and eight because it's a two by two. And then I'm like sidestepping, and then I'm taking like a move action and just like walking up to like their starting area and, and like nine one step back, just blow this up. Yeah. Or yeah, I just Ugh. do that. And then if they attack and kill that, then I'm retaliating with the other ones. That was so, the first time I played against retail, by the way, was when you were playing Tri Sentinel. Oh, and I was just like, oh, okay. Another insane thing about that mad. was... I was like, that's uh, a sick team, man. People with stealth, or like, more so, there's a specific interaction with the uh, chase green arrow. Where it said, like, if he's in clear terrain, lines of mm, fire, two, yeah. or like Can't they're blocked. Him or whatever, mm -hmm. you could put the wall marker underneath him with one green lantern, blow it up with, like, a different green lantern, tri-sentinel, whatever. Make debris. Make debris, and then put the other wall marker under him with the other one that says line of fire to this character isn't hindered. And now he's in hindering. Lines of fire can't be hindered, so he doesn't get a bonus, he doesn't get stealth, he gets nothing. He's just, like, out in the open, truly. So running two of those, like, there was specific interactions with that team that were just, like, so good. The problem was that it all relied on ID cards because there was no I mean, like, main attackers. That, at that point, yeah. That was just, at that point, yeah. ping damage and uh, ID cards was king. And that's what yeah. won. Um, the moment I would take back in the tournament is not bringing the correct map to the XDPS ROP sealed. I was playing this XDPS and I had the, probably my best sealed pulls ever. I pulled Bastion, I pulled Cassandra Nova, and then I oh, pulled... Oh, man. Yeah, and then I pulled somebody else, but... And then I also pulled a Sentinel, uh, the guard command she could make, and a friend of humanity. I pulled these three characters and one of each person they could make, and it was just like a breeze. My games were literally a breeze through Swiss, and then I'm playing against Adam Friedman, and he's got Onslaught, and Onslaught was the, the bane for everybody in this tournament. And I was like, oh, well, all I have to do is take him to a closed-off map, and I'll beat him, as long as he just doesn't have a crazy nine range. Uh, and then as I flip through my map, I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot to bring Star Trek Underground with me. And all of my maps were open outdoor maps. And I won map and I'm like, wow, every map I take him to sucks for me. And I could just never get close because he would mind control, move my team back, shoot me, mind control, move my team back. And I'm like, wow, this is actually the worst play experience I've had in my entire life almost. And <laughs> I probably could have won that entire tournament and got to like design an ROC map had I just brought an indoor enclosed mm. map with me i have a, so that is always a, a one that i hate i have another memory so oh, from, yeah. also from 2018 <clears throat> in 2018 tough uh, year i got well i got top eight like in it. team worlds <laughs> so like top eight okay. team worlds is all of jason uh, or, it was technically in 2018 isn't that when he came out? No, 19 is when he came yeah, out i was gonna say like there well, we definitely didn't year, have for a year from then i was balling with jason winger <laughs> so like in 2018 i got top eight in team worlds at that which point. was like the highest accolade that I think I'll probably ever achieve as far as like playing goes. Um, and top 16, we beat out four points gaming. Oh yeah. So I played against Scott Crampton. Didn't know who he was at the time. Still don't really, don't, 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 don't really really care. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who is he? I think he's a decent player, uh, but no dog. There's no dog. There's the no whole dog. time because in singles, I, I was playing it. Star Trek Underground the entire time in singles. Oh, yeah. I was so used to that map. I had two characters on my team that could blur, like break through blocking and like do stuff. Yeah, or like one character could shoot blocking. And then like so in in teams, it was like a Secret Wars Battle World sealed. Um, the whole time I was playing Star Trek Underground, it was what I was comfortable on. I knew that map. I knew how to like navigate it depending on what they had. My teammate kept saying, and I had just met this guy. It was like the first time I had ever seen this guy. They were just like, hey, we need a third. And I happened to be the third. So it was insane that we had gotten this far. But he kept totally saying right. all day, why don't you take people to Wakanda? Why don't you take people to Wakanda? And finally, I'm going against Scott Crampton. And I was like, I think I outrange him. I'll take him to Wakanda. So I took him to Wakanda. And lo and behold, I didn't bother looking at his cards. Iron Goblin sees through hindering yeah. So I move up thinking, I've got plus two defense to everything. I've got Spider Queen. She's a 20. I'm boosting, like, whoever my other character was to something else. And he just, like, sees through hindering and blasts me, like, right off the bat. And I was just like, as soon as he made the attack, I knew. I was like, he sees through hindering, doesn't he? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, that hurts. 
that hurts. And like, yeah, it was after that match. I was like, that's why I was taking people to Star Trek Underground. Because at least yeah. then I can take, like, I can consider the tempo and stuff. But yeah, that was, that was another one I would take back. It was just like rough. It's like, man, bad map choice. Did it even here? What figure do you feel has been done more dirty than any other and still makes you mad? I think I know Ian's. Like, what character has been done dirty more than any other? What is mine? It's Iron Man. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I was struggling to think. No, Iron Man. Iron Man's been Dude, done real rough. Why is it so hard to make a reasonably costed Iron Man just in a normal suit? I don't understand. Yeah. It actually, like, he has been done dirty for, like, I mean, the last good Iron Man in just his regular armor. So, carry an Iron Man. Doesn't don't, count. don't come at me. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't count. count. He's a beast. Dang, you did a silver Love centurion, him. I guess, by that. Not so, really. I mean, yeah. he was sick. Yeah. The common Iron Man in that set was like 300 points. So I like, like playing him. He was cool. It wasn't like a good 300 points. But, but it's just like... Man, was that he's talking about Invincible Iron Man. Oh, Avengers X-Men? I don't know if that was a... I can't remember if that one was... I remember the Thor. M10 Iron Man is like the last like classic Iron Man that's like... I can remember playing as good. Every other Iron Man, it's like, here's the formula for him. Do you remember the Give him a running shot, Iron give him Man... an explosion, make him 100 more points than he should be. It wasn't Iron Man 20. Every time. time. What was the, crazy. the one from Age of Ultron with like. That's 2020. That's Iron Man 2020. He's 240 oh. points. He's four years old now. 240 <laughs> points. At least. Uh, That's hilarious. He's an absurd wow. amount of points. Yeah. He and then was there's the one such from a cool sculpt and Avengers. idea, but like just overcosted. What's the what's the the set with Rick Jones in it? The red Avengers chaser? Assemble. Oh Avengers yeah, Assemble. Yeah, yeah. It's a, a super rare Iron Man. The hat. black and gold. Such suit, a cool dude. suit. Such he's a cool eight thousand oh, points. Yeah, that's like the he's Guardians. Like two, he's like two hundred yeah. something points. He starts with yeah, Sykes' Marvel last now. Suit. Better be yeah. it's a good time. Mm, one hundred fifty more points. I should mm, better be. Uh, uh, yeah, Iron Man, one hundred percent. Thank you. I think that. ADW is probably like the, the whole of Armors was sick, though. I will say one. that. Yeah, no, ADW when he couldn't fly for a little while. Yeah, until they ratted him, give him flight. But like so that's that's probably like the one of the more consistent fun. ones yeah, that makes Iron sense. Man. He could like pick some powers. I was always a fan of like the extremist Iron Man storyline. Oh yeah, and so yeah, that's like cool. that's a cool. Tony that like has nanotech that responds as quick as like his response time is was always like really cool I mean, to me. Just think about it. even the variations of Iron Man have been done dirty. Like Iron N- Iron Doom, the Legacy card was like he was done dirty. Yeah. What's the title character one though? Ultimate Iron Man, Infamous Iron Man, Infamous. Oh, yeah. yeah, like Doctor Doom, in Iron Man, dirt. whatever he is. Yeah, in the dirt, <laughs> and then you lose the game. Yeah, Earth X Iron Man's probably one sculpt, of the better ones. He was fun, he's man. like a Earth was cool. Earth he was cool. Iron okay. Man. Yeah, that's fair. But he's that's not cool. traditional Iron. He's not even in a that's, suit. Yeah, that's he's in a in, building. He's in his Avengers tower. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's in the tower turns into a suit. Yeah, don't even. Yeah. get like, me started on Thorbuster and Hulkbuster. ABPI Iron Man. Oof. Oof. Beautiful suit of armor. Yeah. Beautiful sculpt. Comes that with the space gem. One hundred fifty yeah. points running shot energy explosion. Bad passenger. What? what is it? Phasing passenger two. Yeah, yeah, with this yeah, plus one speed or something. So, I uh, love that sculpt terrible. so much, and the fact that like I can I cannot play it. I never could. It's so sad. Uh, so I yeah, want. Mine. <laughs> I want a decent morph for once. Decent morph. Okay. I don't know how many morphs we've gotten, but like the two from XDPS mutations and monsters. Yeah, and then we got the LE. Morph I would too. love, even though I haven't played Snap in like what feels like a year now. I would love like the like bald like white. Yeah. Whatever creepy, the goofy, morph oh, looking, yeah, that like with the cape morph. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I want exiles, like full on exiles. Okay, yeah. Morph. He hasn't really been done dirty. I mean, he was like fine back. Then. Oh, both the XDPS ones are bad. Yeah, they're not. Oh, good. that's true. That's they true. were like, well, I fine. shouldn't say they were bad, but like uh, they weren't good. They only they good. actually do something when they're attacked, and I hate characters where like in order for me to activate my cool thing, I need you Your to attack me. Needs to mess up, and if I'm like fifty points, then you're like, I'll just ignore you then. Or I'll just outwit your shape change and like blah blah blah. Then yeah, and I'm like, well, I guess I fair. just don't do my cool thing then. And so those two, especially because one was a prime and just should have been good. Yeah, it's uh, a cool episode of the show too. So yeah, it is. About it is. What about you, really is. You know, it's the my first thought was along the same vein as Iron Man. Is War Machine should be way better than he's ever. Made. Also suffers from like yeah. the overcosting. Yeah, like like heavily. I loved Avengers uh, Age of Ultron War, War Machine. Hammer Thor free comic was, book day War Machine. I love that one too, dude. Yeah, four print dance. Like, there's some good War Machines that exist, but like, still, that Age of Ultron one, which I like, that doesn't have willpower. He's a 200 point yeah. piece without him, Dom. 
you know? So he was always a call-in for me, and I liked mm-hmm. him as a call-in, but outside of that, I was like, this is a horrible war machine. I liked the Captain America and the Avengers war machine, but we need a, I mean, I still want yeah. a full-on-out war machine that brings, yeah. like, one I want, like, the Prime War Machine, yes, but dude. don't make him, like, Prime War Machine cost. Yeah. I want to play War Machine with other people, people also you know? Cost it. Yeah, dude, so... I think War Machine is kind of one of them. Yeah, something the about tin dudes in armor is not. They don't quite get a fair shake. Well. And I would really like. Seriously, just I mean, come on. Well, okay, we got the fanboy Iron Man was like two hundred points, but once again, it's like Iron Man to me is a character that should cost. I think about a hundred points. I think about one one to one fifty is where I always think of Iron Man in that range. You could make him one hundred fifty two. But I, yeah. I want to be able to play Iron Man with other things. And the good versions generally haven't allowed for that. But yeah. you know what the best Iron Man they've ever made is? It's Carrie and Iron Man. It's okay. Iron Man. No, I mean, little figure by the name of Jakeem Thunder. Oh, jeez. That's li- like, <laughs> as far as what like I expect from an Iron Man dad, like, his suits are designed to, like, I mean, and Batman's, like, similar. Right. Where, like, like, assessments. If you, yeah. Deal. Like, he's been through enough scenarios where his suits are capable of multiple different things, and so being shoehorned yeah. into, like, a energy explosion or a psychic blast or, like, pulse wave, any, like, standard attack power with, like, just running shot or yeah. whatever, it's like, I should be able to pick well, that's another thing from, like, like, a variance. I don't feel like you have, I really don't feel like you have to do anything that special with Iron Man. Give him a running shot, give him, like, energy explosion and psychic blast or precision strike or whatever. Give him like impervious and then like outwit perplex as a special. Just do that. And like that's that's the Iron Man I want. And then don't make him 200 points. <laughs> What's your favorite Iron Man sculpt? Favorite Iron Man. Ooh, you know, as a kid, man, the explosion Iron Man. You can't beat Web of Spider Man Iron Man. What a good yes, sculpt. You <laughs> little toy machine Iron Man. Like we're getting a little from a little plastic <laughs> Benny McDonald's Iron Man. No, man, that explosion Iron Man back then. No, I, I honestly think my, my favorite Iron Man sculpt is the, the ABPI one, the Super It's good. One. It's it just, really like, fun. that's... I really like the Guardians of the Galaxy Iron one. Man, dude. Yeah, Guardians, like the, that's a good one, too. Avengers Assemble is, like, solid. Um, well, I guess there's more than one in that. Captain America and the Avengers Iron Man. Which one of the shifting focus? Because that's the it. They all they all look pretty lame. Yeah, they're all just kind of standard. Uh, was, they all do this. Okay, I was thinking the the like AI uh, mm-hmm. Robo Tony, like where it's just like the hologram head. Oh, that's from AI. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Is that AI? Yeah, it's AI. Oh, I thought that was Captain America. Okay, uh, Avengers Infinity. Oh no, ABPI. My bad. Is it's that ABPI? Yeah. No. Oh, it's not ABPI. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. no, no, the, ABPI. The, holo- the hologram head is hundred percent ABPI. Look at that hologram <laughs> head. That's like he's like an uncommon, but like he's an uncommon. Oh you yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I was thinking yeah. of the chase one. I was like, no, that's the uh, weird space one. No. Whatever. There's four Iron Man. Those Way were too really much time fun. Hating on Iron yeah. Man. Sorry guys. Those hey, were really chase. fun because like they you could fun, generate like a bunch of them yeah. and it made thematic sense as to why you could. I wouldn't say it still makes me mad, but every time I see an Iron Man like a skull preview, I'm just like, okay, well, <laughs> well I'm not gonna we play go. it. Sorry. Yeah. Tristan says, can't wait for a 500-hour live stream this time. It's in progress. All right, Brad asks, if Calder was going to make a Evil Dead set, what's a retired mechanic you would bring back as a theme for the set? Oh, title character. 100%, actually. Oh, heck yeah, dude. Okay. Ash Williams, but like... so You have the title character card, the book, too? Yes. Oh, yeah, the demon's sick. The way the demons act, you can make Henrietta, you can make Evil Ash a title character, because... You could probably even do an event dial. You could do an event dial, too. I would actually really like that. The uh, A game we gotta play is my Evil Dead 2 game. Do you think you guys have a blast playing that? Because it's like a super... <laughs> it's a super... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I, did, I did nothing. <laughs> Anyways... But no. like, yeah, I think a title character to be really fun. The way they like, like Evil Ash summons demons and all this stuff, and he has all these weird abilities. And kind of like, once you beat the main evil, they're pretty much done for anyway. So I think title character to be cool for him. And then like Ash Williams' chosen one, like comma chosen one for his title character, oh, that'd be where cool, it's yeah. like he's got some cool abilities, to either like exercise demons or just blast, start blasting, and whatever it is. Like Ash Williams, the sculpt- manager of S Mart, manager of S Mart. Sure, I take that too. AB S- Prime. I like that better. That's smart manager. <laughs> wow. He's not what a manager. I need, though, is like from the from the first movie, I believe. That like grandma in the basement, or is that the second? That's the second one. That's the second one. Yeah. Henrietta. Yeah, I want Henrietta coming out of the dial. 
like the oh, she's the like the hatch. The hatch, the hatch is like the at the base of the dial, and you can see yeah. her head like poking out, kind of like Pennywise really, in a sewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dial, I like that. That'd be really that would fun. be sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a mechanic I would do. So Ian, uh, who's Ian's idea of an ac- iconic Batman? Has it been clicked before? If so, would he change anything about it? If not, how would he design it? Well, I think an iconic Batman has been made multiple times. I think the first example of that you see is veteran legacy Batman. I mean, just just a perfect figure. You want to know his opening stats? 10, 12, 17, 3. <laughs> Leap, climb, blank, willpower, outwit, 8 range, double target, 117 points, Batman TA. Beautiful figure, played him a ton. I think the next one you'll see is the Justice League Out of Shadows Batman, who is 8, 11, 17, 3. Oops, oops, bat. 75 points, Batman, 6 range. Specials, blank, toughness, outwit, I'll be done, guys. But I really like those two as early versions. I played the heck out of those. Trinity War Super Rare Batman. Trinity War Super Rare Batman is amazing. Uh, my favorite, I think, like playability wise too. The thing is, I never got to play him in the era because I was like 12 when he came out and no one would trade him to me. Because uh, no one really had him. The Lamppost Batman being a charge flurry yeah, yeah. has stealth on the rim of Elevated. One that I absolutely crushed with because it was also at the time that Lieutenant Gordon was the thing. He's just an incredible figure. He can give police like free actions to move. Playing the Dark Knight Rises LE Batman, who gets penetrating damage when he moves off of him elevated. And then, so you give him, like, the utility belt. Okay. So, you know, Cape Crusader is another good one. Uh, the most recent Iconics Batman. Iconic Batman has been made perfectly a hundred times. That's pretty fair. Uh, if there's anything I would change about it, I mean, I would just like literally the same concept of the Arkham, or, yeah, the Arkham Asylum Lamphouse Batman. I'd love to take that, just update it a little bit, give him some toughness. Make him some less points, but take that sculpt again. Absolutely. The flowing cape, the size, amazing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's been done plenty of times. I think it's going to keep happening. It was a great year to be a Batman fan. I mean, we got the the Scooby-Doo Batman this year, the That's shade. That's so awesome. That figure, I pulled that in pre-release. That was so awesome. We get the Green Lantern Batman, the super buff counterpart Batman, all these different colors, Nightfall, you name it, the Bat Slap. I mean, I've been spoiled this year. WizKids has nailed Batman to kind of balance out the hatred of Iron Man. The love for Batman is so strong. You guys true, killed true. it. After And, you know, the point you're coming from as well, I need to highlight, you're coming from Wonder Woman 80 Batman. Oh, yeah. Who is Sidestep Smoke Cloud. And then the Cry for Blood LE Batman. Yeah. That is a truly is unique... Sick. To do a truly unique dial for a character who's as popular as he is for a 21-year game, like, that Batman is so unique. I just, yeah. you know what I mean? For a new yeah. mechanic. Yeah. So there you go. I love him. I think he's iconic. And I think you can, you can't go wrong with just about any of them in modern right now. Yeah. You heard it here. Mermaid Batman is Ian's oh, favorite. Oh, yeah. yes. 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 Well, yes. Another yes. standout yes. Batman from last year. It stands out. Simeon, your question is very interesting from Brad. I'd say swims uh, out. It swims out. Uh, Brad asks, a hard taco or soft taco? This is a bit of a flurry. Yeah, I like how he asked both of you, like, Hero character specific stuff. Questions? And then he was like, and the food guy that you have on. Uh, obviously, soft taco. Obviously, soft. 100%. Yeah. It's not chicken, even a Chicken, hamburger, contest. steak? Um, th- most of the time, I'm going chicken. It's yeah. more versatile. Uh, hamburger and steak. If you're doing steak, like, it would be chicken, then it would be steak. And if it's steak, it's got to be, like, carne, like... Which just means meat okay. in Spanish, but uh, it would still be like, yeah, it'd be like, yeah, it'd be like, yeah, it'd be like lime juice on it. Yeah, if it's steak, it's got to be like street taco steak. Yeah, kind is of there style, any, like, uh, anything slice. besides the regular taco fixings you like to put on a taco? If it's just like, I'm hungry and it's like a normal weekend night and I'm not trying to impress anybody, okay. it is literally just hot meat that's like got spices and like seasoning, yeah. cheese. And salsa and like maybe some jalapenos. And That's if you're it. trying to impress somebody. If I'm trying to impress somebody, I bring out the Crunchwrap Supreme. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just do backflips while I eat. <laughs> no, no I, and Simeon, how fast can you eat three Taco John's tacos? Um, roughly, just, as in how fast can you eat those? I, if I had to like have video evidence that I went back to and looked at, I, I mean, those things are tiny. One it's goes one goes down them. in like five seconds. Yeah, so about I think, five I'm seconds. gonna guess the first one's fast. Those could be like two biters. Yeah, I'm gonna guess for Simeon, they're one biter. Fifteen seconds. No. They're, they're an inhale. Actually, <laughs> yeah, they really are. The first one literally just insanely disappears, <laughs> and then I slow down. Uh, but yeah, I'll say like thirty seconds for three. That sounds right. That uh, sounds right. It's probably yeah, very I think, close. I think that's doable. Yeah. 
Dalton's asking, who is your daddy and what does he do? My dad is retired. Who is your daddy and what does he do? Yeah, the Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, does he, do you want to actually know these, Dolph? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Hey, I my my dad's a team roper and rancher. That's what my dad does. I'm not going to dox my dad. No. Yeah. yeah. You already know my last name. You don't, I don't, I'm not going to tell you. Well, what my, what my father, uh, I'll get into what my daddy does and then I'll what, what my father does. Um, oh my god. Really All right, next question. <laughs> what is the best way to point out exactly what you need to be competitive in modern and clicks in general? Have no free time. Honestly, that's the best way. That's the best way to point it out. Honestly, it's a tough time when there isn't tournaments to look at. It's a little bit tougher. I think HC units is a great place to start. Look yeah. at what's built look, look at what builds are winning events. That is a good way. I will say, like, listen to podcasts. You know, there's other podcasts that talk about competitive stuff. Yeah, they can give you a fill. They do have their biases, though, so you have to account for that. But really, just you got to look at what's placing in tournaments, what's doing well, what are people talking about on Facebook, and then you have to find stuff that you like that fits your play style. So my so, my answer before HC units wouldn't change now, but I will say that like HC units is a great resource for looking at what's doing well and what's going on. But uh, my answer prior to HD units, which is still like technically yeah. my answer, is find people that also want to play competitively, whether that's yeah. online or whatever. Yeah, dude. And practice. Practice, practice, yeah. practice. Like if you have, have people critique your build and yeah. don't get offended. <laughs> like there's people that have found weird meta shifts or like weird meta like niches by playing a figure and nuancing it to the point where it is so locked in that they can take it to a tournament no one else has so seen true. it. I remember just putting in reps to a certain figure and realizing its falls and yeah. flaws. Yeah, yeah. It was like 2019, I think. Wes was running the starter shredder. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, and like no one else was doing that, but it was like you can't target him, you can't do this, you can't do that, and he's like a great ID call in. He's like a great like this, that, and the other. I don't remember it. I played against it once, and it like absolutely wrecked my King Shark think, team. Yeah, if you can find similarities in what's good and why it's good, you know, like right now. I mean, everything is just so offensive, but we're, you know, I'm expecting a bit of a shift into survivability because some of those offensive tools have rotated. So I think you kind of have to follow trends as well. Like, you know, Prime Spider-Man is really big right now. What does that lead to? You have to think about that. Like, are people prepping more defensively now or are they meeting the offense head on? Mm -hmm. So if, if you're more of an offense build, you don't need full map reach, but you need an answer for if yeah. you get put on like an old... You also, know, 16 uh, by 24 map. Buy both Scott Borders. That's tough. That's, it's yeah. Hard. Yeah. Even if you're not playing theme, it makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. Sadly. Well, onto the Discord on questions. To the, now. On to the Discord questions here. We have quite a few. So these are kind of Patreon exclusive questions. This is where I'll do the mini Patreon plug for 500. If you want to support what we do, you can go ahead and join our Patreon. Five bucks a month gets you access to the Discord and all sorts of cool behind-the-scenes content, uh, as well as if you go a little bit higher and everything, you can get cool action tokens and all sorts of fun stuff, get entered into giveaways on Patreon. That'll be it. But if you support what we do and you want to, you know, toss us a little more monetary support and whatnot that we use to buy cameras, you know, get food while we're, while we're working, stuff like that. It's typically like, yeah, we did... A pretty nice webcam the other day. Yeah. Got our laptop, few other like phones, webcam, you know, laptops, yeah, uh, stands. Pays lights. for the uh, the all well, the podcast every month. Costs yeah. a little, little bit of the, yeah. the podding fee. It's not crazy hosting fee, but yeah, if you want to go ahead and support us, by all means, you can do it there. Uh, so, editing software, editing software, like yeah. Our future uh, legal fund against our, YouTube. Yeah, when yeah. no kidding. When, they eventually <laughs> yeah. when we get fined forty two thousand yeah. dollars, yeah, exactly. Supercab asks, where would you like the game to be if you, if, and that's a big if, can you arrive at episode 1,000? 50,000 people used to play here. Now it's a ghost town. <laughs> if we arrive at episode 1,000 in roughly 10 years ish, whatever, um, wow, I don't yeah. even know. Hopefully not in like a Fallout shelter. I, I want, I want, I want <laughs> Hero Clicks to be the most played game of all time. If like we're getting episode one thousand in ten years, I want Hero Clicks to be like who plays Magic? What are you a loser or something, bro? We're playing Hero Clicks, Warhammer. Why would I ever want to paint a miniature? These miniatures are pre-painted. That's what I want the vibe to be for here. I want it to be the most played like tabletop yeah. collectible miniatures game. That would be obviously the idea, the ideal goal is where I want Hero Clicks to be, dude. I would like to be the one place 
that the corruption of capitalism oh, has geez, never there reached. There you go. Space! Space. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no. He's fighting the space force on his moon. Space. That's a Tim Curry quote. Oh, I surprisingly see. enough, but no. uh, interesting. Yeah, that's he was old, also that's also talking well. about yeah, <laughs> also talking about hero clicks. Believe it or not, I believe that Tim Curry uh, about hero clicks. Yeah, just the, still alive. I think is my answer. And honestly, I have faith oof. that it will be as crazy as that is. Yeah, I, I would like to see the game like I've always wanted. I'd like to see it grow. I feel like as far as like um, external sources pushing like Marvel and like DC, like pushing like superheroes, I feel like that is like slowed. I feel like it was on like a real yeah. ramp up the last couple of like maybe the last decade or so. I feel like that's slowed, whereas like Marvel's not pushing out as much. DC's not pushing out as much or like not gaining as much like traction. But I would like to see, yeah, like Hero Clicks. Not necessarily Eclipse Magic. I don't think that's ever going to be possible, but I would like to see him enter the same realm as, like, a, a magic of, like, a certain era. Whereas, cool. like, right now, we're, like... Really cool. I don't know what we're at population-wise, but it seems low-ish. It sometimes. does, yeah. I want, it, I want it to boom. Alex asks, if you, re you receive a $10,000 donation in order to improve Dial H for Hero Clicks, what do you do with this? Alex, what do you imply? Big fur coat. Yeah, <laughs> they fart up. just just one for all three of us though. Yeah, oh, no, for me, oh. really? Oh, and then maybe a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Keep these fools in line. I make a it. I make a down payment on the dial H mobile if you give me ten thousand dollars. It'll have vanity plates that say dial. In all H. honesty, for the dial H mobile, I have in mind ten thousand is way more than, than like if we down donated payment, ten thousand dollars. The real answer is like looking at a way to go around the U.S. and cover just every venue. That would be so awesome. Talk with players personally, like you know, in their den, see every scene, and just publicize the game, and then. If we have any funds after that, like start campaigning it. Pay for Hero, ads. Hero clicks movie, man. Yeah. Hero clicks documentary I mean, movie. I mean, talked about this with uh, some other content creators, yeah. actually, like making cool. a documentary about like the road to worlds. And every time I think about it right now, and I've talked about this previously on the podcast, it's like that doesn't feel feasible. But there is part of me that knows like in the future that's going to happen. I'll make it yeah. happen. Pretty cool. I don't know how or why or when, but... Eventually, a HeroClix documentary will happen. So I think if ten thousand dollars was given specifically to us for like that reason, yeah, I would tell my work like, "Hey, I'm gonna disappear for a bit." Yeah, to make that I'm happen. Go work on it. Yeah, absolutely. And I would that would be actually super instantly chill. know people who we can go to that would help us and like keep our costs low, and we just you know road trip around for like a month or so. Same as talking about heroes. the the Dial H road trip across America. That would yeah. be seriously so fun. I applied for a position with Nickelodeon Ultra at one point. <laughs> oh yeah, you talked about this. <laughs> yeah, or like they were paying somebody. Like I can't remember how much it costs because it doesn't really matter. But they were paying somebody to go in their RV, like room and board. Well, not room and board because like it was uh, RV was your room and board. But they were basically like paying you like a food stipend and whatever to go to like different national parks. And I was like. If I get this, I get one add-on called her. <laughs> you want to bring Dial H on the and of course, like I don't, I wasn't even like a a callback or anything, so but uh, it was like I'm really funny. You drunk driving. <laughs> oh my it was gosh. Like, well, it was like the qualifications and like the next question. question. Got the bad craziest thing is, yeah. I never yeah. saw anything Jeez. come out of that. I never saw like you never noticed it. You, they, were you like following Michael on their social? Well, like, I wasn't following oh. them except like. By applying for that position, I got like added to their email chain. Oh gosh! But um, Kickstart your summer. They cool essentially stuff. wanted an existing influencer mm. that they could just like. That makes sense. Here's like this brand, like show us that you're fun, kind of thing. Uh, I will say, I think ten thousand dollars, like probably like the most reasonable investment, would just be hardware. I think. Yeah. Upgrading and having like backups of like multiple systems and stuff. Yeah. And, like, obviously not, like, one big thing because, like, especially when it comes to computers and stuff, they get outdated so fast. But just, you know, having, like, backup mics. Right now we've got the two lavalier mics, and I'd really like to get, like, a second set of those. Yeah, mics are probably the next thing on our budget in all actuality. Yeah. 
Next up, Chance asks, when will you do another swap episode with Edward Shelton? I don't know. That was really fun, though. My April Edward Fools. Shelton, yeah. that April Fool's episode was, April like, Fools a, was a blast. 2018? It was a while ago. 2017? It was, really, it was a really long time ago. And I remember, like, recording my part, because Ed does his show by himself, so I'm just sitting there for 20 minutes doing a somewhat okay Edward <laughs> yeah. Shelton impression. Um, thinking the entire time, what am I even talking about? What am I even doing? And I, I actually ended up being, like, really funny. So, I don't know. Maybe... Maybe another time. Who knows? Chef Mikey asks, if Dial H could hold a Heroclix tournament, how would you format it, and what would you pick for prizes? Well, out in the in the realm of not realisticness, a tournament I've always wanted to host is, like, you have to... It would be a two-person team tournament, and one team has to have like, Cab Wolverine on it, and one has to have Captain America. Or you could also add in Batman or something. That's yeah, I been. guess. You know, I'm, I'm here. You know, whatever. He could be on your sideline. No, it was cool. But, yeah, this is no. before you were really part of the show, no, and that was always no. a tournament I wanted to host. This really, no, this is no, but this has I, been I'd love to have a tournament this has with been, every yeah. Captain America fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We did it. We did a cap tournament. We did do a cap tournament. Where, like, every team time. had to have a cap on it. Every team had to be made up what of just Captain America. Guys I love that tournament. That a tournament hosted by Dial H. What? Is going to happen. What? Like I said, the IPF is a little slow rolling this year. Honestly, though, we started in February last year, so it'll be about... So, the yeah. Same. We have a lot of stuff coming up. There's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes, which you guys will find out soon. Um, it's a really fun day today. <laughs> but we do have plans for an in-person tournament in 2024, and more than likely that's maybe just three, four months away. So, stay posted. Yeah. And as far as, like, what kind of format we want to do for... Pulp. Something like that. Pulp. Yeah. Probably will be. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the most successful. I do like seal tournaments. Well, but every Probably Captain America is banned. Of and course. <laughs> yeah. <duh. laughs> Thanks. Yeah. How many yeah, no how problem. many pulp Captain Americas are there? Zero. In there's, my a, form, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> is there a, like in in modern In modern there's at least two. So there's, there's okay. Captain America L M D LMD, and there's Captain America from Avengers Forever. Okay. Um the other one's like a prime militia. Militant, I guess. Oh, militant, militant, sure. No. Yeah, <laughs> close enough. I, I, I was thinking the plural. Hydra. If you're running more than one, <laughs> so yeah. There's Sanders, Hydra Cap. Uh, well, if it was before rotation, there's the two War of the Realms yeah. caps. But after rotation, I, I think I would three. specifically, yeah, if we like were doing three. pulp, I would specifically like put in the caveat, unless the real name is various, because I want to see pulp where like you can run, yeah, you I would know, like, like to see. 10, 10 goons or something like that and like yeah, not be just be a fun thing to potentially add to the tournament i wouldn't hate that i think it'd be fun i just hate that like as is pulp does not allow goon to be I ran know, in multiples yeah. or multiple so, so. yeah or multiple yeah, like he's about, rotated now okay like things that. that are generated a-okay but things that start on your force no boy, and no. things yeah. that are named captain america oh, yeah thank right you. Thank yeah you. for this specific for this tournament. for the for yeah. this format <laughs> Bill asked where some of your favorite figures of all time. We kind of already yeah, answered that. that. So we're going to skip that. Uh, Alex ironically Captain asks Wolverine. Yeah, basically. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> it. Alex asks, what question are you most tired of answering over and over? I don't really hate answering. Like a lot of them it's fun, man. change sometimes. Like you revisit them. Yeah, exactly. When you get to revisit it and like go over it again, it's kind of fun. So really Probably this question, Alex. Yeah, Alex. <laughs> sucks. The question I'm most tired of uh, answering is the question. Yours. I was going to scroll down. Tired of answering. Tired of answering. <laughs> I was going to scroll down to some of Ethan's and figure it out. Yeah. Oh, um, geez, that's no kidding. I don't have time to read about. Uh, this is on a more serious <laughs> note. 2023 Blotta brought us Hero Glow. What visual improvements or new features would you like to see in 2024? Blocking. Oh, flocking! Oh, We're yeah. getting flocking! We're getting mod. We have we had a little bit of mod Ooh, through Captain Chia America. Pet. That's who joins Waka Flocka joins Hero Clips. Oh gosh! Okay, I'm here to bring out the Waka Flocka Kong. <laughs> <He's>, Waka, yeah, <laughs> it's got a big clock with Kong on it. Can't sing any of his flock. music. <laughs> nope, uh, but <laughs> but Waka flocked figures would be pretty cool. Whatever that entails, whatever that. No, means. I think more modular figures like Captain America would be fun. Yeah, if they gave him like another set of wings or something, I know that's not really. I would ideal. love deal. Yeah, but like a blast you could put Some on customizability Iron Man, or yeah. construct you can throw on a Green Lantern. Yeah, so, so, you can't fun. put a joint like in in like a shoulder or something because it can't be a toy. But what you could do is have like multiple pol- posable positions that like are kind of like hidden in the sculpt, and like if you pull like the arms or legs or what. 
I'm not. A Mr. Fantastic right, that's made of Gumby like material. Well, and like well, the thing is, like, <laughs> Stretch Armstrong arms. WizKids already makes also these edible. for their D and D lights. <laughs> so, like, the D and D figures, like the Beholder has like eyes that are doing a laser blast, eyes that okay. are doing like yeah. a, yeah. a I mean, like a mind control laser. Too. I want, yeah, so, I want, I want Hero Clicks that <laughs> batteries, dude. I want Hero Clicks that you make want noise. Anti monitor, yeah, dude. No, 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 batteries. Yeah, yeah I know. Anti monitor had the eyes. Did he? Did he have eyes like? I didn't know that. Yeah. I want I want eyes that light up stuff like that energy effects that light up but I want a Galactus that has voice lines dude I want to be like I'm coming to eat the world and I, I can just keep pressing that so I'm playing somebody this. I'm coming to eat the world I'm going to I eat the so world cloud I, yeah dude that's what I want I want voice lines I, I don't like, have the power there's a snake in my boot no. I'm coming to eat the and I'm just no. not play against somebody I just keep pressing <laughs> that button over and over and over again I think it'd be really funny <laughs> I'd rather have like the Shumagorath like the weekly eyeball eye. that you yeah. can eye. No, I want batteries in my ear. Like, I'm gonna have to change my Galactus's batteries for here. Mm-hmm. I think it's awesome. <laughs> Bring back the uh, the build to see That was fun. I like the idea of like oh, Iron Man's left as leg. As long as it's not like a yeah, take up a slot. As long booster, as it's not yeah. like taking up a slot. In a Make booster, a combo man that comes out over like Ooh. a ten year period, and you build him layer by layer. Oh no, it's so funny. Oh and my then, god, guys, Human Torch's knees are coming out this <laughs> shit. <laughs> whoa, 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 dude, I'm just now getting my Silver Surfer elbows. $150 <laughs> looking for Hulk hips. Hulk hair. It's Hulk, Hulk hair. hair. Hulk out hips. of all Hulk, Hulk, Hulk stuff, you need hair. You need Hulk hair. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's so the strongest funny. part of Hulk. Oh my god. Uh, okay, if WizKids is listening, Combo Man, don't know how you make it happen, but please make it happen. Please make it happen. You obviously Bill. get him like a Cracker Jack prize in a bag of combos. <laughs> Each piece, it's like, yes, I the got a dial! It's just like stained with it. Like, <laughs> like, finally, I got a dial. And then, well, I mean, you'd be putting like a little like Ziploc baggie or like a little like a <laughs> flavorized perforated baggie or whatever. So, like, you could tear no, it's it. It's just with the chip. It's just with the chip. <laughs> it's just <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> So Bill's next question is, is really simple, and a lot of his oh, questions coming question. up are super simple, and that's because I actually asked him, I wanted to try to do like a, a honeymoon newlyweds game on this show, Oh sure. of just who could guess, I don't think we're going to do that. Um, Favorite map, dude? Wayne Manor. All day. Wayne Manor. I probably Manor. hold the world record Wayne for most Manor. games played on yeah. that map. Wayne Luke, Manor, I played on that map like only for like six years. Dude. Oh wow, that's awesome. We love that map. My, uh, I get my the Corvette favorite. side though. Yeah, I get the Corvette side. Luke can have the limo. Actually, no, I'd get the limo. That's right. Luke I have, uh, I have two like all time favorite maps. One is the Justice Forever from Kick Arts Two. That starter, I love the Justice Forever map. And then I really liked the Avengers versus X Men. Whatever it's called, West Side of that island, West Side Story, West Side, yeah. like Utopia West Stay Side, good, Pony Boy. That's mm-hmm. what it's called. It's like Utopia yeah. West Side because it had like indoor with some elevated, and then had outdoor along the beach with and some water. Johnny Depp Crybaby was there. Yeah, he was yeah. there too. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. so that's like that a real awesome. favorite map. And then the WWE Training Center is really fun. Mm, that map Training is Center cool. is I super like fun. One. Yeah, that's I think my favorite Sporting Arena, Sporting Arena. Yeah, oh, very cool. Good one. Good one. And then, ancient hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ancient hole. Never. Uh, no. Uh, I actually, yeah, I actually took a few people to ancient hole on accident. Um, he took his girlfriend to ancient hole one time. She was like, "Why are we here? <laughs> There's a lot of doors. <laughs> I don't understand doors. I'm a hero clicks player." Uh, no, my probably my number one favorite map of all time is the Orville Bridge. Ooh, that map cool. rocks. Right? I think it's super cool. It has some, some of the only special terrain text. That like doesn't give you a definitive like advantage over somebody. It's just like we needed to add this because the map makes sense if it's yeah. like this. So like that's cool. And then also it just having like legit like a Star Trek bridge kind of thing. And then like little rooms off to the side. It works on so many levels. Also, like it was the only map on that starter. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, Very like, true. <laughs> Very true. If you're gonna choose a map from Orville, that's the only one you get. Alex has a related question. If you could make a map out of something Dial H has done, an event, a sketch, whatever, what would be on it? What instantly comes to my mind is we make the Memphis Convention Center with the Dial H corner, the main modern area, the selling booth, and then maybe even a little bit of the outside. Mm. Uh, kind of that would be a fun map. But I don't know what map this would go Honestly, on. Our, but I think our new living room has to be a living room. So I would think if we ever did a Dial H map, it would be like the old apartment would be part of it. 
this would be a part of it. Like stuff my like room that. in Sioux Falls. Your room in Sioux Falls. <laughs> <laughs> that would be part of it. Connect all the places we've like all the places recorded we've and filmed. But then I think also what would be really fun is if there are some side rooms. This would be such a turtling map, but I think the elevator with like blood everywhere, oh, like half sure. shield on the ground, that would be really fun. Like part of that map, the the end of the line bat truck uh, alleyway. Alleyway. Um, I think an extreme rules a little area of that map would be funny. Just a white trash wrestling ground. Outside. That's currently Nat- all hindering train. Natter day pants spewed all over the yard. <laughs> Like yeah, there was only two Natter days. No, there was forty. A lot, some nondescript <laughs> man I beer. Wish I could afford forty Natter days. Can only afford. Yeah, one. just really, you know, kind of like uh, what Critical Clicks did, where they had a bunch of references to their show, right? Yeah, but ours yeah. would be like cooler. In ours would be like cooler, yeah, better. But oh, uh, I mean, it would be. And you That's know, true. just, just things that are uh, our sound mixing studio would be an actual sound mixer. The first map with a basement. <laughs> I, I do like the idea of like a dark dimension. Like a dark dimension yeah. where like you, you like flip it and it's like you know, like oh. the opposite like version. That would be cool. It's like the same map, but like it's the the variant of Mere the universe. or whatever, yeah. I really like that idea. Um man. Just yeah. highlighting our events, you know. Uh if we uh I mean I don't know. I think I think that's what we would do is we would just take like our physical locations. Yeah. I yeah, think we forms. have to, yeah. Maybe have some weird uh some special terrain with the green screens where you can move through them or Ooh, something. That'd be kind of fun. Pretty sweet. Special terrain, yeah. Ooh, this is a tough question. Something like Reed's lab where it's like each portion gives you like a bonus to something. It's like this is the filming area, this is the recording area, this is the the break time area. <laughs> This is where we make pizza rolls. Gamer. And then, of course, we have to have a... Because as we are sitting in a room filling with water, uh, we'd have to have the flooded room, flooded studio. (laughs) Um, Bill, or his own Bill, also asks, what are your favorite dice to play Heroclix with? Um, For me, this will be a reference that probably no one gets. Uh, They are... It's a... You like on the bones. Rolling the, the bone dice are cool. Oh, uh, you you like the my illegal tournament dice too. The which legal, are technically legal, legal, not illegal dice. The status of these dice, folks, are that they are legal. But Brian dice. didn't want to take the time to explain to people that they're legal because they don't look legal. They're said, really like yeah. He said they're loose. they're not illegal, but I don't want you to play them because I'll have to explain to people <laughs> why they're not illegal. Which makes them, I think, the only instance of Schrodinger's dice that Heroclix has ever seen. I think it's just a personal attack against me, but my favorite dice are my blocky dice, which these were custom dice made by Stan Strolkowski. Yeah, yeah. stand up, yeah. And um, it's for a game called, it's a $1 game for the Xbox 360. It's a two-dimension hockey game, and it has, like, the logo of my favorite team on there, the Weevils. It's a game that, like, Weevil... Man, we would jam in my basement for like four or five years. I had a league in my high school at one point for this one dollar indie game. Like it was, it's just one of the most fun games ever. You can still get it on Steam. You need a controller to play it. But I have a low. I have some dice with the Weevils on it, and uh, those are my favorite. Uh, the the reason why it's so fun is because like Luke and I are like, I'm confident I'm the best blocky player in the world, okay. known as known as LeBlock James <laughs> on Mars. <laughs> And then Luke gave himself the stupid name, Pizza Alan Iverson. He's Alan Blockerson. Oh. So dumb. But, uh, like, no one could beat us. And so I got him a set of dice for his birthday, and I got myself a set of dice as well. So they're just, they mean a lot. Um, they're really fun. That was way too long of a story. Yeah, don't worry. worry. It's a dollar okay. on Steam. <laughs> it's so Probably. fun. <laughs> Probably my favorite dice I have are the ones Simeon made for the show are the Dial H dice, the cowboy hat pips, the Dial H logo. They look so beautiful. Also, Stan Strakowski made. Those are my favorite. Before those, they were my Earth X Captain America dice. Those dice were all my all time favorite dice ever made. And I still play them as much as I can whenever I can, but like the Dial H dice are just dope. They're just so dope. But I think prior, my most used dice, um, I use these dice for. Probably close to like a decade. Okay. My my black Mystics dice. It was just like a good oh, Mystics logo. Symbol? Yeah, and so I bought those at Worlds in twenty 
14 or 15, whatever the yeah. Ghost Rider year was. And I just, they were so hot for every BR I played in. So I just used those dice forever. Like they got retired like two years ago, a year ago. And I have some other ones from Stan. I have some Doctor Doom ones, Mice Man ones, Nightcrawler ones. I've bought a lot of dice from Stan. He had some Scrappy Do ones I almost bought, but I was like, Ian, stop. Thankfully, I did. It's a cool, though. I got Luke some Cosmic Spider Man ones, too. He custom yeah. made those. So I have some dice. I love dice. I have like I hundreds of pairs of dice. It's bad. There's, uh, there's some dice that I've ordered from Amazon here recently that are on the way that I can't wait to get mm -hmm. here and play with them. They might not end up being a, tournament legal. I have an idea what these yeah. dice are. <laughs> yeah. So I literally can't wait to get those. They probably aren't going to be tournament legal, but like I'll, I'll play them forever, like a home game for sure, because they are like literally so sick, so fun to mess with. Yeah, oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. or at least in theory, I've, and I've in never theory, actually seen yeah. that person. I can't. But uh, <laughs> I think my go-to dice for the majority of like playing is these two little like golden red dice that I got like. Forever ago, somehow, and I don't remember because I didn't order them specifically. They just either came with something or, like, I bought them with, like, a collection. But it's just got, like, supernatural symbols. That's what I thought. That's, that was my guess for your supernatural dice. Yeah, and I don't know if they're from the show, but, like, they've got, like, a bunch of sigils and stuff. Yeah. And so it's not, like, a pentagram necessarily, but it's, like, a weird circle, like, whatever with a bunch of symbols and stuff. And I really like playing them with, like, mystical teams and... They've got rounded corners, so they're just normal, like, resin dice with rounded corners. But, like, they roll so much better than any ROC dice ever has oh, for sure. me. Which is, like... Well, ROC dice are instant. They, they come out of the factory cursed. I feel like they're incapable of rolling above a five. <laughs> they're scary. Some are, those ROC dice, they're scary. The peppermint flavor ones? The white and red ones? Flavor. The Gosh. flavor ones? Yeah, it's those like are the worst. The white ones with like the the I red. I like tips. the yellow and black ones. The yellow and black ones are I like also. those ones. I liked when they did swirls and then I got like the plain the white swirls with the red I like. dots. The and plain the plain white dots. Those white dots dice with the red dots those were harsh like. dice, dude. I've never rolled so poorly. And then like it also is just like insult to injury because I don't even want to be looking at these. Yeah. Because like they hurt my they were sensibility. Good for the most part, but those ones specifically. Yeah. Those are the one pair I didn't like. Uh, Alex was not asked. Now that Dial H's YouTube has been monetized for a little while, how much has that been able to find? Well, I assume he's fund the podcast slash channels activities uh, a little bit, and we make so little off YouTube. Well, it guys, be a hundred dollars. I was going to say on YouTube, no, like that. We made our our lifetime earnings. We've been monetized for is it three hundred bucks? Year now, lifetime earning. It's we've been monetized for like I think a year and like three months now. We've made like four hundred fifty dollars. Okay, so. Yeah. It is, but you know, that is nice. Like, that does pay for like hosting fees. You know, a set of lights isn't that expensive. Like, I can pay for a webcam. It's paid for something. I just don't know directly what, but we do appreciate that you guys watch that stuff. Yeah, some of the absolutely. longer stuff, uh, you know, some of those videos earn us a couple bucks. Some of the gameplays. We especially like that you don't hit skip when an ad's playing. Thank you for not skipping the That's ad. basically <laughs> stealing money from us. No. And that brings us to our Dial H episode 500 ad break. <laughs> yeah. Have Brought you ever you been low on energy? Have you ever just been looking for that special oh, gosh. drink? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Those we still actually, that should be on the list of <laughs> that project. We should... I don't, I don't even remember the name of it. Ghost? No, no, no. Well, we do love Ghost. Oh, ghost oh, house. oh, you're thinking Indom. In indomitable. Indomitable, the indomitable energy. I thought you were talking about Ghost. and make the koozie, the yeah. indomitable energy koozie. Yeah, okay. What was it, like, exploit weakness, cherry lime? Cherry lime, dude. Uh, Bill, uh, Bill's asking, what's your favorite generic keyword? Mm. Oh... My favorite keyword for a long time was soldier. That's still probably my favorite keyword. Say, I love soldier. Dude. Favorite teen. generic is teen, <laughs> teen, kids. Mutant. <laughs> uh, one of my favorites is past. Past is good. Past is becoming one of my favorites right now. It doesn't. Past stuff. It doesn't get hit up all the time. Like every set, I don't hit up my past. But uh, <laughs> I will say, like when it comes to casual building, when you're like allowed to look through like everything for the longest time, like Renee Tilly. Um, Gosh, I can't even, like, Kang, Renee Tilly, like, there's a ton of stuff that I would pull out of past. Normally, it goes with, like, Future as well. Shifty Doom. Yeah. Flash. But, Sky Tyrant, or... I can't remember if he's past or future. I think he, he's probably got both, because, like, he's the the undying guy, right? <laughs> I don't know. He is. But, yeah, like, 
I really mystical. love that. I've always really enjoyed mystical teams. Mystical is always fun. It's like it gets a good grouping of monster meta and prominent like and yeah, interesting stuff. There's some fun, you know. There's the Doctor Strange as character. It's the conversation we had earlier where it's like Wendigo's cursed, but he's still mystical. Yeah, and then Doctor Strange is more so magical than mystical. Like, well, he is mi- mystic arts, but you know what I mean. Like, he does like mysticism. He's not. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. I, That's a bad example. You know what I mean. I think mystical is fun because it gives you. All of the support powers that you could ever want, and then occasionally you get a monster thrown in with it, where you're like, "Ah, so Wendigo can have like multiple perplexes and probs and all this other stuff." I also really like armor. I've always oh, okay. armor keyword. I've never ever built an armor team. Maybe like once or twice my entire life. Since they like, oh, I have a good story armor. for this next question. <laughs> Do you have a story for this yeah. next question? What sentient food would you have to be to eat yourself? When I so I had, I had to have a surgery done, and uh, it's this is like the most like drug up I my ever been. Um, so I remember like waking up, doctor, but doctor. I was so like so messed up. Uh, there was like you know I was laying on like a table or like an operating whatever bed whatever. There's a light, super bright light shining over me, and I remember like I could tell like I was like aware. But I felt like I was like this ball of light. Like I felt so out of body. It was so weird. And I was just like saying nonsense. Like I pointed to a glass cabinet and I said, that's a crazy nice equipment. That's Ryan. Glass cabinet. <laughs> and they're just like, what? But I told, I told the doctors, I was like, you know, if I had to be a fruit, I would have to be a lemon because who eats a lemon in one sitting? I told them. <laughs> And they were apparently just dying, and oh. they let me know that I said that. I don't really remember it. We got to tell this kid. So, so yeah, I, I guess, soul. according to the higher conscience of Ian, I'm a lemon. You're a lemon. I'm That's a lemon at heart. But it was... <laughs> I seriously just remember, like, thinking I was, like, a ball of, like, floating light. I was so, so, so That's drunk wild, up. Man. It's not a, not a great like experience. kind of crazy, yeah. Oh, but uh, freaky. I've had that similar oh, experience, yeah. lemon. it was... Two pounds of brownies that were oh. in my system instead. Uh, <laughs> sentient food. Yeah. Similar. So is this like I? You I are am this food, food, and then you have to eat, and then I'm also hungry. And you're, and you're somehow going to eat yourself. Eat yeah. What sentient be food would have to sausage. be? So what would? <laughs> well, I was going to say like a good sausage would actually <laughs> See? heavily. Man, like there is nothing that beats a like. Alfredo pasta with like nice Love sausage, beef. like spicy maybe, sausage. Give me a rack of ribs, called a rack of ribs. I'll take rack of ribs. I think just dunked in some sauce. Yeah, if it's something like I literally can't pull myself away from myself. Man, I, I guess the the only food that I truly like have <laughs> I've hit a wall where I'm like I can't stop myself from eating this is the uh, Brickway butter brickle is like oh, the name okay. and the flavor. But it's it's not Ivana Cone, it's not E Creamery, it is cone flour. Cone flour. Like cone flour butterway or butter You're not even a big something guy. I'm not. Yeah. But like holy I don't and for the longest time I hated butter brickle. Like I what? thought that was old people ice cream. Hmm. And I hated every flavor of butter it's brickle. Fair, it's great. But and then yeah. I I tried theirs and I was like, yeah. Wow. I, I like I ordered a plan. Back, actually. Call that you'd be a you'd be a big gummy bear. Oh, I, would, I don't. I wouldn't eat myself. Just kind of like squeaking bear. around. <laughs> Calder would just like have gonna, like a. I'm gonna tube. eat myself. <laughs> I'm gonna go eat myself. There'd be a tube coming from his foot, and he'd be completely transparent, filled with ranch. It was like if you drink you yourself, so you die, and he'd be like. <sighs> That situation, but the truth is, I would slurp down chocolate shake Calder so fast. Oh, I forgot chocolate, chocolate shake, shake yeah. Calder. He doesn't get to live another second, dude. He's done for. But he Ian, a Calder bear. Ian, yes. what, what kind chocolate of ice cream bag. is that chocolate shake made out of? <laughs> I know what it's not. Made. Ultimately, that's right. Oh, okay. <laughs> With chocolate syrup, you can't come into my establishment. Give my milkshake wrong. <laughs> Where's the chocolate syrup? <laughs> That's just how you should make it. It's the best. <laughs> it's the best. Uh, I wish I could say some hardball lines right now for that one. <laughs> what is your favorite set? 
Man, this is always such a uh, tough question. Deadpool 2014 next. Easy I for think, me. Wolverine and the X-Men. Yeah. Legacy is... Man, Legacy is just such a special time in Hero Clicks. I think it has to be Legacy. It's just a great era. But it's also, different. man, like... The, it's not a set, but like Era, Web of Spider-Man, GSX. Oh, yeah, those yeah. sets were just such bangers. They DC seventy fifth. Yeah, that's up there for me. So, but I if I had to say a set, it's probably Legacy for that's Era. I don't think you could beat twenty thirteen for Era. It's tough. We got so many non Marvel DC like yeah. sets, and like in a single year, yeah. it was yeah, insane yeah. how much stuff we got in a single Why year. That cast, yeah, it was. <laughs> insane and awesome but my favorite era is still probably 2014 though just between guardians of the galaxy and deadpool is just like some of my favorite sets of all time and war of life i was like wow what a stacked year i think if i could ever pick a more perfect chase theme to like release a legacy set of cards for i don't think i could think of anything better than the phoenix five because like it's so right. collectible, so cool and more of life no please they were done so dirty (laughs) no like the, the, the Phoenix, Phoenix 5 were, like, were done unplayable. so dirty. Yeah. Unplayable. Cyclops was, like, was like almost... Them maybe. all being like way too many points and then not so good. 195 or 300? 295, 295 was, or yeah, Cyclops. 150? I can't remember. Yeah, 295 and 150 was the break yeah. for, I think all. And there were a few that were like slightly more or less. I think Colossus was like 285. And even like in like higher point games, if you play them all at like the top, it's, it's so bad. And they, yeah, the thing is, is like if another Phoenix Force member has died, it's like, okay, in my 1500 point game. Well, nowadays you could play like a ton of Cuckoos who might. Ha- I don't know. No. I don't remember if Cuckoo no, has no, Phoenix Force, but, but yeah. there are cheaper characters that have come out with Phoenix Force. Whatever. 40 it's just, point it's very movies. unlikely. Yeah. Cap Wolf is Captain America as a werewolf. That he is. Yeah. What weird thing would Wolverine be since he's already a hairy, angry biker? Well, Wolverine's been a vampire? Is that his thing? What else is he? He's been a vampire, yeah. He has like that weird lion head in the Genesis. Or whatever. He does have that. Lion I don't head know. Wolverine. Yeah, I have no idea what that's like. The Cyclops like also has a weird animal head. Other. There's a Cyclops and Wolverine that has um, that weird animal I'll heads. say Komodo ammo. I, I guess I don't know what Komodo dragon, dragons are native to, but I want to say like some sort of dragon esque because he spent a lot of time in Japan. In Japan, okay. so like the the furry Wolverine, but like combined with a, a little Japanese folklore. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Bill's asking, "What's your favorite equipment?" Venom Pump. Venom Pump easily is my favorite equipment. I love that. I love that piece so much. Ooh, man, that's tough. Um. I think I'm very partial to the Soul Gem. I, mm, that yeah. was on, like, every team. Like, I know that was, like, the Ock Arm era, too, but, man, the Soul Gem was just always so fun to slap on a team. It made just about any figure better. Yeah. Back when defense values, I think, were a little more impactful than they are right now. And then giving, like, range steel energy was always a fun way to make a character, like, you know, maybe sustain a bit more. Uh, outside of Soul Gem? Uh, I mean, if we're going off things I just played into the ground, and like everyone else, the emotional modifier is like the best equipment of all time. I don't know if it's, that's really my favorite, but... It's just like the, the stat modifier is what it should have been crazy. called. Yeah. I guess uh, if we're doing modern age equipment for favorite, I really like the blue lantern ring, and if we're doing anything else, mm. probably the soul gem. I'll say like really like any of the lantern rings, probably blue, green, red, like all like uh, yellow, like that. I mean, basically naming them all, but like, yeah, there's there's a lot of effects that are like cool for the lantern rings, but then just construct generation is like its own thing that probably should have been costed differently than ten points because, holy cow, like being able to drop a chainsaw or whatever for free is so much better than like being able to use perplex and minus two when you do it or like you know whatever yeah. the little effect is. Obviously, like I think one of the best equipments of all time is the. The cloak, the oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Cloak, yeah, yeah, the five point cloak. Uh, but if we're not really considering though, not just equipment, but if we're also considering um, re- or not uh, relics, if we're oh, considering relics, relics as well. Wow, relics, Jim yeah. of Ciderac, then okay, mine would be <laughs> the McCran <laughs> crystal. One. I think like it was it was cool too. Straight yeah. jacket was always my favorite relic. Straight jacket was awesome, though. especially if you played it with like. KC Flash or like somebody with like hypersonic and you just, yeah you because like back in that era where straight jacket existed other things like 
you know, like a 200 and some point dark side existed. So you could literally just go up and be like, no range attack for you. Yep, no, no. Ha ha. Try and get this it's back awesome. on me and you do no damage. It like, awesome. You could shut down somebody's, like, the majority of their team with just a relic. Too spicy. So much salt. I was uh, about to say hot. Never mind. Mm. Reading our You're bill, reading our bill jerky. They're good, Bill. They're really good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, we appreciate I can't it. believe this beef was born to a deer. Yeah, kind of wild. Insane, how that, how that the crossbreeding that happened in Minnesota. How about uh, this? Tyler M. asks, do you feel like convention exclusive figures should finish off sets from the prior year? Nope. In the way Pegasus Cap huh. does? I think it's fine, but I don't particularly Both care. I'd prefer if they came out in that set. I don't Give know. us some cool variants of characters and we're good. Whether that's finishing a set or if it's completely mm -hmm. random. The reason I'm know? cool with Cap is because he wouldn't have fit in that set. Like, physically. Right. Physically wouldn't have fit, yeah. Uh, but on average, if you're going to ask, like, uh, like this chase set is, like, Carnage's, and here's, like, Another Carnage Ghost Rider or, or something, I'm like, no, I would rather just not have it in the set, not have it ever, than have it as, like, a convention exclusive. I feel like convention exclusives are, like, great to fill in stop gaps, but more often than not, I'd rather just have them be their own thing. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I like them just Unless, kind of being weird off versions of characters. Are we considering like Joker what, holding up the mask as part of like Batman team up? Because that's hey, super pretty cool. much technically. Yeah, he is part of Batman. He's because Scooby Doo, but like of Joker. Yeah, I wasn't expect. I wasn't like, oh, he's missing yeah. from the set. It was just like, oh, it kind of makes yeah, sense. I, that he got I don't it. really think it has any bearing on my opinion of it. Basically, just make something cool that we wouldn't see otherwise. Something's cool and unique. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bill asked, asked, what is your favorite relic? We already yeah. answered that, yeah. Tyler M., if we were to get legacy maps, which map would you pick? We already kind of are. We do get legacy maps. We get map reprints all the time right now, so... Should they have it with the same holographic finish of the cards? I no. think uh, we can all agree. No, no. absolutely. Like, funny, funny, funny. 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 Unless it's Ultron's Lair. That would oh be my God. dope with the holographic Make it finish. as hard to look at as possible. For longer-lasting maps, should more neoprene maps be produced? I'm not opposed to it. No, please make more neoprene yeah. maps. I like them. I like them a lot. Especially the double sided. The tile ones are fine with me, too. Yeah. Honestly, uh, yeah. We, like, back. Bring back Jesus. Wayne Maynard, though. Legacy card Morlock tiles, uh, but it's just that middle part, so it's really not that bad. Oh, okay. It's smaller, sure, sure, sure. It's a smaller map. 28. For a second, I gave Calder a look like, yeah. Ooh, shut your mouth. <laughs> Let's see. It would have been, a, at the very least, it was 2019, but it might have been 2018. We were promised, uh, we were promised, like, buildable maps, like, sectional maps mm. out of neoprene. Mm. Never came to be. But it mm. was an in interesting idea that I was fully on board with. Because it was like, you'd place one, your opponent would place one. Like, you'd build the map together, placing, like, these pieces, and it just never happened. But it was a cool idea when it was being talked about. Well, all right. Well, time to get into Ethan's questions. He has a no, oh, no. Spark notes, he says. Who is the best player? Uh, as of right now, I think it's pretty clear cut Calder. Sure. He plays the most. That's fair. Yeah. He wins the most, too, though, so you can't deny that. Um, I mean, like, on paper, he's also lost the most to the Yeah, that's list. true. Also true, I have lost the most on paper. My win, my, uh, my win score is terrible. <laughs> my win loss like right one now is, worst. like, two to one. Pretty good. It's, like, yeah. almost dead even for dead me. Even, sure. Yeah. Like my, you probably have more games played than I do. My average Mark. like weekend, and I don't want to like say like I'm like such a good player. I hold back so much when I play casually. Like yeah. I'm aware. See, he's Rock Lee wearing his weights. He's like, <laughs> like not to like not to boast, but like legitimately, <laughs> there's tough. so often I just like don't use traits, don't use rollouts that I know I have because I don't want my opponent just feel like they're absolutely getting smashed. And then like a lot of times I'll take an L because. I want the game to be fun and interesting, and I can tell, like, if I've got two Scott Porters and I'm, like, utilizing them to the full extent, yeah, that just my opponent is just going to, like, please that yeah. Um, uh, let's change the leap climb. I wouldn't change it, actually. I would give it improved movement. Eat on that, Ethan. Spice take? Yeah, thank you. Um, it is a hot take. No, I really don't think leap climb is that bad. I think it's fine on lower point figures. I think it just feels kind of bad when it's on a higher point figure. I really yeah, don't think leap climb is in that true. bad of a spot. Change flying to not include like elevated. Not and flying. Then leap climb allows like elevated oh, now or wow. blocking. Flying doesn't. That like doesn't make sense though. No, it doesn't. But like, <laughs> no, no, but no. then it, like you've That's got funny. a flyer with leap climb, yeah. and you're like, finally, finally I can get all, all the things. That's so funny. 
What do you think are the worst powers? Uh, right now, I think the worst one's Earthbound yeah. Neutralized because it doesn't get printed. No one uses it. No one utilizes it. We have a straight-up power that doesn't get used. It needs to, technically, it needs to be worse for it to be a good power, in yeah. my opinion. That's what I think the worst power is. I'd like to be able to, like, have a f- character that can give somebody Earthbound Neutralized when they hit. And it means something. And it doesn't, like, yeah. Yeah, nowadays Smoke Claw, it alternatively, too. Like, yeah, that's fair. Never so feel hard good to, to take a power choice. action. Never. Oh, yeah, dude. It should be Unless free. the character does a free attack through Smoke Cloud, or can free make Smoke just, Cloud. When Smoke Cloud has been free power action, on so many characters. So many. Why is it not just, if this power is printed on their dial, they can Honestly, use it as free? Honestly, Smoke Cloud should just be free make two markers at this point. Yeah. So many Honestly, characters should, get yeah, to use well, You could also power. leave the costed part in if you wanted as well. Like, free make two... Power makes six. Yeah, there's a uh, sure. I think it'd be okay for that. I think Smoke Cloud takes it for me because I think thematically it's really cool. It but is. It's just uh, it's just not quite there. What changes would you make to the other bad powers? Eh, I kind of talked about it. Yeah, kind of talked about it. We like talk about a Smoke Cloud change. I really do think like you should take pushing damage with Earthbound or just something that's like feels really bad. Yeah. Or you should have Immobile or We've something. We've talked about this Earthbound before but, like, on the podcast. We've talked about it a ton. Just like straight up not being able to take a second action when you have Earthbound. Yeah, you're Molly Hayes. That'd be great. Something, yeah. like, that. something like that. Yeah, something like taking like uh, some sort of unavoidable. Like essentially just like getting Earthbound back to what it was pre-Wonder Woman rules. Because yeah. after all of those rules changes, like pushing damage, all that stuff went away. Earthbound just, like, never changed. And now it's like, right. we have this power that exists that almost no character... I don't... Is there anyone in modern with I can't Earthbound? Really can't think of a single character in modern. And there's no one that gives out else. Earthbound, so it's... Yeah. It's, it's like, literally not used. Like, yeah. that's fundamental. That's not good. It's Living not. Tribunal could give you Battle Fury and Earthbound from AI, and if he did that, like, granted, you weren't we were playing like, him. Dang. But, like, if he gave you that back then, that yeah. meant you had to stop when you moved into... Literally. But, like, you you have have to stop when you moved into hindering. You uh, couldn't fly over, like, hindering. You couldn't shoot through hindering. You couldn't do anything like that. Uh, You couldn't shoot, period, because you had battle fury. Mm, So, if, like, I played a... I think it was, like, a 600-point game, and I played Living Tribunal just, like, in the back. And it came down to, like, all my opponents and just him. And he did, like, his judgment token and gave everyone... Battle Fury and uh, Earthbound Neutralize, so that meant they took pushing damage, and they had to stop and hinder us. And so, like, they had to cross over like several layers of terrain to get to me, actually. And they couldn't take two actions in a row. Like, if we got back to that, that'd be cool. Matt Reed, what would the Dial H team ability be, and what character would you want copying it? If you have exactly three people on your team, you win the game. That's what it should be, Matt Reed. To automatically only have three people into it. I don't know what it would actually do. Honestly, a dial H team ability. Dial H. I'm into it. I like the idea. I like the idea of it just being like CSA, like crime syndicate. I think that'd be fine. I was gonna say like Avengers, but like influences damage. No. Ooh. Or it's like you get a plus one damage. I would like to do ooh or modify your amount of knockback by plus three or something. Double knockback. You're on a dial H team. You're just knocking them back. Whatever that would be. How that represents nothing. No idea. Mad, I think it was the Mad Cow team ability from Indy that did that. Oh, there's there a double yeah. knockback. Maybe it was like. I think it was ooh, literally you know called what? Mad Cow. Maybe dial like H- Cow World? I think it is called no, Mad, Mad Cow. Mad Cow right, Comics. Right. Mad Cow yeah. Comics. I think Dial H can no also just We could just steal that. Dial H could also be, like, Cow just Comics. main entrance from WWE. Like, that's the mm-hmm. only part of the no. is main entrance. <laughs> no. I actually really like that. So this team ability lets me, uh, I get to break I, one of your figures. That's I why it's to, so cool. Ooh, I get to break one of your figures. That'd because be a great, I love that. It all sounds made up. It all sounds made up. That's why it's so good. I get to phase 16 squares. Um, I get to do an ID call and as a free action. I move my whole movement for my whole team for free. For free. On third and uh, I, I have all my actions still because They're I didn't restless. take an action. Also, you can't shoot me. And protect and, uh, you can't yeah. outwit me. Oh, wait. So you, it's called you Grand Entrance, me? right? Yeah. That ability for it is. The grand grand Entrance, and you can't see them. Yeah. Mm. How does that make any sense? A Grand Entrance. Here he comes. Who? Well, they're two separate things. <laughs> Where is he? They're two separate they're Two, t- two yeah. separate abilities. Grand like, Entrance. It is called Grand Entrance. Just kidding. <laughs> No, I, I think double knockback is funny. Actually, like you should also just have bounce and pin. You just wait till World's X here. 
Worlds next year when I have the Rey Mysterio part of the hull, like the floor so hollowed like, oh, out, God, and I just like Mysterio. shoot up out of the floor awesome. and fireworks explode. Then, then that could Edison, be our team Edison asks, what are your three desert island movies? I think I pretty much know mine. It's Army of Darkness, 100% oh, is one man. of them. Uh, Avengers Endgame is 100%. One of my other... Oh my gosh, maybe I don't know my third desert island movie. Mm-hmm. I really like The Departed. That's one of mine for sure. Oh, Watchmen. It'd, actually be, it'd probably be Watchmen, mm-hmm. Avengers Endgame, and Army of Darkness would probably be my three desert island movies. Go yeah. The Departed, we'd go probably the first Dark Knight. Mm. Third one is tough. I'd need something like funny, I think. But I don't know. Favorite comedy is a tough one. one. Definitely not the hang <laughs> That's pretty good. I think Ian Have you watch. watched it? Like, you, have, you haven't yeah, seen it. Probably, That's why uh, you're three Transformers movies. <laughs> your choice. <laughs> the original 1980s. Transform. Not much War of, on not much of a, oh, oh, Ready Player One. I watched, yeah, I'm not nice. watching I that movie. Like, I don't know why. Yeah, I don't really like to rewatch movies that much. There's a couple. Uh, a, Ready Player One, for whatever reason. Just, movie. No, it's not. <laughs> it's pretty bad. It has really, it's nice. very well reviewed. I mean, it was directed by Steven Spielberg. They got all the references <laughs> right. I think it's a great movie. I think Ready, Ready Player One. I'm really excited for Ready Player Two. I know the book came out recently. And uh, oh, I hope so much that is not a real thing. It is. <laughs> uh, one's a great movie. You might be thinking of Free Guy. That's the bad one. Free yes, Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. Free has one of the worst movies. I'm thinking of the one where, like, the entire time I'm looking at like terrible CGI faces, which is they're not great. Oh, yeah, the, the faces are. Yeah, it's a great movie. Which uh, variety of movies, man? Three desert. So I'm assuming that I crash into this desert island on a work trip because. Why else am I driving over or flying over a desert island? So I'm worried about survival, um, maybe like lack of supplies. So I'm probably bringing Superman Returns, Batman vs. Superman, and Justice League Snyder Cut. Wow. All right, on to the next question. To, to drive Calder off the island wow. so that I have no more kidding. resources for myself. No so like, I will play those on a loop. He will leave. Oh my God. He will build a raft and leave. He will potentially find help. Calder will figure out how to find help faster. And even when the movie movies. isn't playing, I'm quoting it to Calder. <laughs> oh, miserable. Oh my God. But the gosh. whole time he's gone, I have extra coconut milk from the coconuts that he's not taking from me. Screaming Martha into his ear while he's sleeping. The dodo birds. <laughs> I have harvested for myself. He has no dodo meat. If you could design a duo figure, which characters do you want to pair together? Oh, man. I'd love to see a return of Batman and Nightwing, I'll tell you that right sure. now. They were so That's much fun to duo. play. Uh, I also, man, a return of Starfire and Nightwing as well. Okay. That figure was sick. And that's a, just a really interesting dynamic. Those two people do so much different. Uh, duos. I have two. This has always bothered me that this never got made. It's Captain America and Falcon. That will forever. That's kind of crazy. The heck that, is, that is odd. Yeah. Oh, Captain America and a hang gliding motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. We got we got Steve <laughs> and Black Widow. Right yes, dude. And to be fair, they are a little buddy cop in Falcon yeah. in the Winter Soldier movie. But when I first saw they were gonna make a Winter Soldier, I'm like, it has to be Captain America and Falcon. What else could it be? Yeah. And the fact that it's Steve and Black Widow, I'm just like, oh, are you kidding? But yeah, they're fine in that movie sense. I get it. Yeah. yeah, I want Cap and Falcon, or I want Captain America and Captain America, where it's also just Cap and Falcon, but it's from this most recent run where they're both Captain America at the same time. So, though that's easily the do I want the most, Cap and Falcon. The fact that that does not exist boggles my mind. Uh, Honey Badger and Wolverine would be cool. Oh, there you go. That's like an obvious, like, quick, easy choice. Um, duo figure that makes a lot of sense. Doctor Doom and Doctor Strange. That'd be another one I'd like to see. Yeah. Like, really teamed up. That'd be they cool. Had, like a really sick issue where they, they went okay. to hell together. Yeah. Strange or uh, not issues. So I think it's like six issues. Oh, Strange okay. and Scarlet Witch and also Scarlet Witch and okay. also a make hot, a hot take. Options. I want the Secret Wars Battle World. This is like a mini series that I thought was awesome. It's Red Skull and Magneto. That's what I want. Red Skull and Magneto mm, that's yeah. a duo figure. Where they like yeah, hate each I other, but they're ends to a means. I hate you. <laughs> Don't you think, Simeon? I thought that's what he said. Did yeah, he not he say said, Earth X? Oh, did you say Battle World? I said Battle World, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh Battle yeah, World. those are the same thing. Yeah, I can't say. That's Bill the, asks, the Alex Ross one. Yeah. Oh. How often do you think WizKids should make super premium colossal figures like Galactus? And what is the next one you would want them to make? Every single year. 
Bill, we make talk a big, about this. A big one. Yeah. After Galactus, I said every year they <laughs> should make Galactus. I've said pretty much every year since Galactus. I would love it every year they should make a, one. A super I don't, high premium. You know, I don't ever want them to feel passable though. I don't. I think a, once a year might be too much. Okay, once a year, once every two I years. I don't think they'd ever feel passable to the right kind of collector. Like a Fing Fang Foom. So many people went out of their way to get those. Yeah, and still go out of their way to get those. And when's the last time I read a Fing Fang Foom like centric comic or like a character goes up against? Well, no, I'm, I'm just never, saying in the sense never where read. it's like it's just super. The most dope. notable version of Fing so Fang Foom cool. I remember reading is from Next Wave, and that was a robot version of Fing Fang Foom. I, I think the last time I remember, I remember him, him in a, being even remotely like involved was he got like thrown to the moon by like the Hulk. I remember when like, the Mandarin was controlling him? I guess that's the only yeah. time. Well, like I'm not necessarily necessarily saying story wise. I'm just saying like. A big figure like that coming out once a year, it might just start to feel like not as special, I guess. So that's part of it. I don't know who I would design. Honestly, I love the Eternity sculpt from Avengers Infinity. Mm-hmm. To see him on that scale with like the detail that like the collateral damage specter guy Divine Tribunal deserves. Really, really cool. The fact that we have multiple three by six Galactuses, but bigger cosmic entities than Galactus. Two by two. Or two by yeah. twos at best. So like Living Tribunal, uh Lord Chaos, Lord Master, Chaos Order. Master Order, yeah. I mean you could read these zero on zero zero on the tester. Zero, yeah. Zero on the tester. Uh I so like Rand, Master the President. Mold. But Be cool. the most recent one, the sculpt was a little underwhelming. I'd like to see him full size. Be kind of fun. That's fair. Um, and then Mogo too. You could make him that big. That'd yeah, be fun. Yeah, Mogo would be sick. I think that's the only way too. It's uh, like, I mean, you could make him as a two by two. It just be you could make him as a awesome. map, honestly. Well, like a Krakoa esque. I would like to have a dial. I would like to. Be I mean, able me to too. Actually but do stuff like if same you were going to bring him into the game, and you know, when we got the the ego and AI, I was like. That ain't ego. The idea I want like, big face. It's like a planet. three by six team character, but it's just like the Earth Lanterns and massive constructs. But also, yeah. <laughs> he's so sick. Exactly. If the first appearance iconics continue, how should they handle sets with legacy characters like the Flash, Robin, etc.? Should they do the original only, or have a set with several figures but all of the specific first appearances? Mm. I think for some specific legacy characters, that'd be a really cool way to do it. But I don't think it should be all legacy you know, characters. You know I think what if I mean? you did like a first appearance like, like JSA, I, I and you probably did, like, wouldn't six, buy. Like I'm not a Batman fan. I wouldn't buy a set of all Robins. I don't no, really care I don't who so all even Robin. You know, but I would even would as a be, Batman fan. I agree yeah, with you, that doesn't need to be a thing. I'm Do not a Flash. I'm not a Flash fan, but I think there would be a lot of people that would be like, "Here's every first appearance of the main Flash people." I think people would be down specific for that. Events make more specific sense. Events, yeah, yeah. The Crisis on Infinite. Yeah, um, I think there's some first appearances that just can't get made. Which is such a bummer. But I think oh, first it, are there some? Yeah, the one I really, really, really want. <laughs> I can't probably think of can't get made. First in appearance Flicks. Wolverine's getting made. Uh, what's the first appearance of Batman? Was he doing something like he used a gun? Oh, that, that's a oh, little man. Little really cool. But they'll they'll still probably make yeah. that. Um, it's like some Superman, like he's, just a he's little, holding up a car. Some like, first appearances are a little too I'm controversial. I guess. That hasn't been made. The car holding <laughs> Superman. Can't uh, I think that'd be like the yeah. first one. I think a first appearance Punisher, where he's got to kill Spider Man, that'd be cool. That's cool. Big Punisher. target on the box. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Big that'd, on the box. Issue. that'd be really sick. And but yeah, as far as that's like making super them, easy to do, like pose, like yeah, have, like a guy, he's just dude standing. You up have him on. standing up on like an elevated like rooftop, mm-hmm. and then you have Spider Man just on like a wall. Yeah, yeah. I think super it would cool. work for some characters. You could do like a Lantern Corps and a and a Flash. That'd set. be great first appearance. And you know they. What other characters could yeah. you really do it with? But yeah, I think you it just varies by character. A lot of like JSA stuff. Even like work. legacy characters, yeah. You can make a legacy of the Green Lancer, that'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, Ethan. If you had to make a legacy set, picking a set from every single figure then gets a legacy card, what, what set would you choose and why? You can make a legacy set. Picking a set in that every figure they don't have a legacy card, they get one. Which set would you choose and why? Okay, so we're picking a set and that every has, that figure currently in has no legacy cards. Apparently, is what he says, but I don't think we have to stick to that. That's really no, hard. That'd be um, but yeah, basically no legacy. Too much. You remake an entire set. Okay, That's nothing right. pre-carded because then you're having three of every. Yeah, That's, That's insane. Much. That is insane. No REV. Okay, nothing modern, obviously. Oh, uh, legacy. I'm going Wolverine and the X Men. It's the same. It's the same. Yeah. Uh, same pick. Oh uh, yeah, it's the exact same pick. Yes, I get the Phoenix Five Legacy. They get better. Yeah, I can do like you know something that makes them cheaper, makes them like 
if you could somehow whittle them down to be able to be played on a 300 point team, like some sort of Masters Vivil effect or something, yeah, where like they're all like sidelined to themselves or something. But then also that set has like uh, has Corvus with the Phoenix Blade, such a super cool effect. It was Blades, but the first yes. time he rolls it, it's a five. And then the second time he rolls it, it's four, and then a three, and then it goes back to like it goes down. Okay. Yeah, it goes down each time, but then it pops back to the original five. So like the main thing was like the first time you roll it, you're guaranteed a five, which is that super is fun. Super cool. Uh, okay. That was also the first Quentin Choir that we ever had was in that set. That was the first. Uh, no, that wasn't the first Exodus. But that was like one of the more recent exoduses that we had was in that set. Mikhail Rasputin was in that set. Um, M, I think that was the first iteration of M that we got, maybe. Monica, no, not Monica. Mambo? Mambo, is that her name? I think I want Nick Fury Ages of Shield. It's a bummer on the chase, I know, but I. So many of the supers I love, though. Falcon Cap, I love the Steve Rogers Captain America. All the generics are really, really cool. I will say um, that would be a terrible set to collect the legacies yes, of. Yes, it would. It's like, yes, it would. I really want um, three Alan Pierces. Oh, um, what's that? But I think it's that He's might, that might honestly collector. be my pick. Because I think it'd be fun. Oh, Justice League Trinity War would be a great set to legacy. Yeah. I mean, that's what I was leaning Dang, towards. Trinity that would be War. such a good one. But Trinity War has time? literally the three best super rares yeah. in a single GSX set ever. Would be GSX, which you're going to, that's fair. GSX, yeah. Trinity War. Uh, will we see more clowning on Calder in 2024? When do we not? <laughs> Absolutely, when do we, we not? already have. What plans does Dial H have for documenting tournaments this year? Uh, well, we'll be in Florida. We'll be at Champion yeah. Clicks. So We've announced that. the ones that we know so far. Yeah. Uh, and then the rest of the schedule is a bit TBD. We're going to try and figure out Adepticon. Huntington's is a big question mark. Uh, Nationals, we'll see. We'll see, yeah. A lot we're of expecting to be coming. back for Worlds. I mean... We'll be at Worlds no matter what. What we're doing there, I guess, is we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And then anything else in between. Um, you know, maybe we're hosting our own event. Uh, Mr. Bozo Mancer, if you could choose only one legacy card to remain modern, and they never made more legacy cards, which one would you pick and why? Dang. Arkham Asylum 099 Batman. Okay. <laughs> Make is them that a baller? one legacy oh, no, card that one that already to exists. remain modern? Oh. A oh, legacy that already exists. You get a pick one. Ugh. That's fair, I guess, for you. Uh, that sucks, because like one of my favorite legacy cards doesn't ever get played. Uh, that'd be like the the Hooves Doom. Oh, sure. Hooves, no, Hooves, Hooves, Hooves Doom, Doom with the Mosquitoes. That's one of my favorite legacy cards they've designed, and it doesn't really get played. I think it's phenomenal. I love playing it, but it's not quite good enough to actually continue getting played by anybody. World's Finest is pretty darn good. Trying to remember what like some of the more recent Green ones were. Lantern. Yeah, that's jeez. Probably yeah. the the twenty five point insanely good, insanely yeah, good Green Lantern. Twenty twenty point twenty point. Yeah. 20 point. Is he was twenty. He's only twenty twenty, and he comes with the ring, and he gives you like leadership and defense. He plus defense. He's, he's that guy. And he's stupid. <laughs> yeah. And he's dumb. I saw one for hundred twenty dollars the other day. I was like, "Wow, that's a good deal." I imagine like, I hate the dumb huh? deal. Imagine JSA being one of like your favorite teams, though. Yikes, dude! Just try imagine. Imagine how it hurts. Like, imagine opening your freezer to pull out your dinner, and JSA is your favorite team. What? Oh, I assume you have to eat frozen dinners. Oh god, JSA is your Dang, favorite team. Oh, my god. <laughs> So um, shout out to Jay Sullivan. Yeah, J- JSA shout is out. his shout out. favorite. Shout out JSA, Jay Sullivan, the man, the myth, the legend, the Canadian, I guess. Uh, I mean, it doesn't exist yet, but the legacy card my team chose for Huntington's is obviously my clear and biased choice for a legacy card. Yeah, Cameron Hodge. Yeah, Cam- yeah, Cameron Hodge, of course. Please, donate and send any Cameron Hodges you have to the Dial H address. If you need that, just reach out to us. We will be building the biggest Cameron yeah. Hodge collection. This this question we have from Ethan is kind of one we've already kind of talked about, but if you could add one game element they stopped making, what would it be and why? And the other, if you could remove one, what would it be? Um, I mean, if I could remove it, it's tarot cards easily. Yeah. If I could add one, it's probably just title characters coming back. I would like to see more title characters. I don't yeah, know if it's really it's, an element, but... It's tarot cards for sure. Yeah. If I could add something back, honestly... I don't even know if I would choose to. I think there's enough good stuff in the game right now 
I don't I don't know if we necessarily need another mechanic back in. If I had to pick, I mean, I kind of miss duo attack just for the symbol, not even necessarily. It was such a use. sick symbol. It's cool. Duo attack was awesome. It also just made so much sense for so many sculpts that we it did. did. So maybe did. that. But uh, right now, I feel like as far as mechanics go, I'm really happy with them. I like the team up cards. <laughs> yeah, I like I legacy did. cards. I like the detective or the mystery cards. Jeez, detective cards. Yeah, close enough. Mission points, title characters. Yeah, those are both. I, I we haven't seen a mission point character for a while since yeah, Beyond Amazing, and a rough. we it's haven't a seen a title rough. character since even longer, even longer. Yeah, a while. So dead. seems like super dead. Percent bring those guys back. Bill, cool. Who are the six people I think Simeon is funny? Simeon, can you answer this question? Uh, Alex asked me a while ago, but uh, yeah. Alex also said he was one of the six people. So a oh, bold. So we we have Alex. Okay. We have my mom. Okay. We have my father and my daddy. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's four, apparently. Um, no, to be realistic, like the, the part of the show that that was taken from was I was explaining to Calder how dumb I think it is when people say, like, over 10 people, like, oh, I, I know yeah. over like 13 yeah. languages, over 10 we people. Work with over listen 20 to- companies. Yeah. It's 21. Yeah. So exactly. I'm, I'm like, yeah. so it's. It's like the exact we do number. deals in fifteen plus countries. So it's 16. so it's, it's exactly. fifteen or sixteen. Yeah, like yeah. You're just sixteen. Yeah. So like that was the like the whole joke was like over six people find me funny. It's like so it's six. A lot of the time, etc. It's six or seven. To like, me it's in the same yeah. way where it's like etc. Just means ran out of things to list. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. There are sometimes like, okay, Well, that's obvious. It's so obvious you didn't need to list it. When you go to listing and you add etc. to the list. You're just lying. Yeah. You yeah. don't have that much in your bag. And most of the time it's used as like a a way to like sway people into thinking that like you're there's like so more prominent much. There's or a something. plethora, a ton, there's so, so many, many there's so many things I could yeah. think of, but I just don't have the time. Yeah, so like I could totally name six people that find me funny, but I don't want to bore you guys yeah. because I'm so funny. And so like I will just plus. say there's at least these ones that I already named and then et cetera. Plus. Uh, plus at least six. Yeah. Because there's at least that many. But yeah, that's that's the amount. That's the number. I could actually name them for you, Bill, but I won't. Yeah. These are also they, asked, they totally exist. Can you name 100 people that even play Hero Clicks? Not like a joke question, but without looking up, did you actually that's name 100? Not even no, a, I'm not going to do that. That's not, not even a yeah, bumper gonna, in the, the intro anymore. Yeah, not a bumper. Be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. That's not even a thing from the that. intro. Who are your guys' least favorite figures in a while? Mine's Prime Spider-Man and Mary Marvel is my least favorite figures of all time. <laughs> For a reason why, you've heard them a million times. Uh, uh, I strongly dislike Scarab. Figures I don't like. Um, I really hate Captain America. Captain America and Avengers, 052 Spider-Man Super Rare. Oh, okay. Because I've had to play I thought you were just going to leave it at Captain America. Yeah, I was going to say, really? A lot of hate. <laughs> he, he's I really banned in my format. He's banned in his format. In, in Eggleston Pulp, Captain America is banned. <laughs> No, that's Super Rare Spider-Man. I'm, once again, very confident. Here's another world record that I hold. I've played against that figure more than any single person on the planet. Mm. The amount of times Luke has played that figure against me, I hate that figure. Captain America and the Avengers you know, Rare Spider-Man? I waved him for Super five damage. Yeah. No, the Rare. No, I not to, Iron Spider. I had to play against Iron Spider so many times. And in a casual setting, I was like, I'm tired of my... Like, the one big character I have getting flurried twice, 12-4... Oh, yeah. ABPI, just right off the bat. Yeah, 9, 12, 8, 7, no, 8, 4. ABPI. He had full move. That's Captain America and the Avengers, right? No, it's ABPI. Oh, it is ABPI. Is, right. is it? Yeah, it's ABPI. Why like are those Spider-Man. two, like, tied in my brain together? There's only one Spider-Man and Captain America and Avengers. PS4 Spidey. Nah. Yep. And uh, he was... Favorite worse. figure. I'm going to talk about favorite figure and why, man. He says top three, five for each. I'm not going to do that. Um, Top three legacy card. Sorry. <laughs> top three legacy card picks. Like, who we want to get a legacy card or just favorites of all time? We're saying who we want to get a legacy card. Who are my top? Who are my top three latest card picks though? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back and say my least favorite figure of all oh, time sure. is uh, probably either Faust, either the Wonder Woman That's eighth or the previous very one, fair. and then going further back than that, the uh, Avengers Age of Ultron movie Hulk. Playing against that Hulk Dang. back in like back Dang. with those rules sure. like nowadays. He doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't time. like nothing happens. Like he doesn't work nowadays. No, but back then, a Spider-Man seventeen seventy six, dude, mm. yeah, love him. So obnoxious love to play him. against two of those. It's like, yeah, you have two actions because I exist. 
Yeah, if you weren't ready, it was rough. I love them. The fact that every team had to be built with the intention, what can I do with half my actions? Never do that again, please. The fact that that exists in modern right now and people just don't There is not a global, you don't get actions. Merlin is like, your free actions... Yeah, it's the, different. The thing it's different. It's like seventy six said no. Seventy six, you could still do your actions. Merlin cuts down on your actions as well. But I get a, I get a plan on my actions. You do get a plan on your. And actions. if my opponent's not ready, like With suddenly Merlin, they have at best have three free turtles. actions, three actions. Yeah, but generally you're building a team that turtles. Whereas seventy six, you could play like you could play two seventy sixes with anything. And it's like, you have half the act. I have double how your much, actions. How much is Merlin? Like 50, 50 points? Yeah. He's 50 points. So you can play same. him with anything. Yeah, but you, you look, look at the, the history stuff. of his builds. It's like Saturnite. Yeah, but that's Hawk, just Demon what people Arnold. actually like were willing to build with. Like, you could build with anything. Scarlet Witch. You, you might, you might be right. People just aren't seeing Merlin. I, I genuinely think you that think like so? people just haven't played like an so? offensive Merlin build. But like I I really think that limiting... Because... I think 76... How rough is it... Like he was more obvious, he was more on, obvious on, on paper, he just isn't though. What do you mean? I think that, on paper, I get twice is. as many actions as you do. How is that not more oppressive than we both are capped at free actions? I know you get to build your team. I would also argue that he was a better figure because he shut off autonomous and leadership too, which is like insane. Autonomous doesn't exist in today's your team game, so like it doesn't. That doesn't matter. But like okay. shutting off leadership, you can still do if you want to play Merlin and like shut off leadership. You can still do that. How do you shut off leadership? Like any way, like outwit. outwit it? Okay, literally anything. But like, but not a power that straight up says you can't use leadership. I mean, there's also like things that like give you like a minus one to action total or like a plus one to action total. So I can have improved plus one to action total. Also, Merlin gives a plus one, to action, a plus one to action total. So I can already have like five or six pluses to my action total, which means I have six free actions. You have three at best because you weren't planning on it, and then you have three free actions. Which means your prime Spidey's like maybe doing one or two things. You're paying seventy points to do that. Spirit of the I'm game paying and Merlin 50 points. have six actions. I'm paying Merlin's fifty points for Merlin. Yeah, and then Spirit of the Game is twenty. Right. And also seventeen seventy six was fifty points plus the rest of the team. So that was like three hundred points that you were paying for that. This is cool. Anyways, he says yeah. there are three figures you'd I mean, be very upset getting a le- <laughs> legacy card. I'm not going to like. Say. Yeah, I don't want to get into the Merlin topic here. No, it's, it's cool to think one way. He got top three at Worlds this year. That's for true. Top three that figures tracker. I don't want to get a legacy card easily. It's Mary Marvel, it's Unimine, <laughs> and it's Man God. Unimine. Yeah, characters. Man I like your answers. Thank you. Um, uh, Unimine doesn't work as he used to, though, so. I no, but I still hate him. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see. I, him yeah, I genuinely don't want to see him. He's ugly. He's Without ugly ID figure. cards, ID cards aren't legal in any format except like gold. Even when ID cards weren't legal, he still was. He still was a threat. I hate you, yeah. Unimind. Yeah, Unimind's just terrible. just not Unimind. And yeah, that's probably it. Also, Tristan played him too much. Yeah, Tristan kind of looks like Unimind. Big booger, big booger man. Just kidding, Tristan. <laughs> obviously, yeah, it's too hairy. Yeah. Who has the worst taste in genres and why is it called? Or what, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? What are you yeah, me, Ethan? we'll just leave it at that. Thanks. Fair. Um, yes, if you had to pick any one of you three, who would you say is a brony? It's Ian. Uh, Definitely not. You're the yeah. one who was talking about it in a private chat with actually the person answering the question. I know. He just he said he asked me. It's like you know the only reason I asked you that is that I want you to say that you're a brony on air, and it's true. At one point in time, yes, I did watch the show My Little Pony. There you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Do, do with that as you will. I was 14 when the show came out. You want to condemn 14 year old? Yeah, we're condemning 14 year old. I probably please, would have watched it if I had do. access, but I I had three channels when I was that age. Uh, it was on YouTube. That's what I watched. I don't know if you had YouTube or not. But Internet was not Internet one of those three thing. channels. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, have any of you owned fuzzy arcade dice that you put in your car? And what happened to them? No, I've never owned. No, no. Dice. I wanted them. In that was car. didn't have them. That was like slightly ahead of me. My sisters had them, but any favorite smells? Chocolate shakes, one of my favorite smells. Culver's, I love walking the Culver. Smell like grease and custard, fresh cut grass, <laughs> grease and custard, fresh cut grass, and, and uh, what what do you call the uh, electric the electric smell in the air when like a, a storm's coming? Oh sure, whatever that. I like the smell of rain. I like the smell of rain. That's a good one. Yeah. Bonfire is nice. Yeah, not a smoke guy. No one to smoke. Well, I got a, I, I got a smoker, and like I will say, like the smoke from the smoker is pleasant, but the after smoke, 
like the smell that it lingers on clothes sucks. Any, uh, any smell you can't stand. This is a hot take for me, but I hate the smell of coffee. I know people specifically like oh, coffee, coffee because of how it smells. Wow. I can't stand the way it smells. I hate the smell, the smell of coffee. coffee. I'm glad I'm, if people like it, that's any cool. I hate the smell of coffee. can't stand. I mean, the obvious ones. Yeah, uh, for me, it's like most like medical stuff. Like I can't stand like steroids. You're walking into a dentist's office, you're like, Ugh! like the smell Worse. of bleach, like anything that's like oh, yeah, sterile, like it's rough. Like I don't, I don't like the weird chemical kind of smell. Uh, Tristan asked without counting how many questions that Ethan already asked. Yeah, I, I already went. It's twenty. Yeah, it is. That's oh. twenty questions. Right. Is it twenty? I was going to guess like eighteen. Is it exactly? Ethan then misspells though? the word guys. What's your guys' favorite food and how often do you eat it? My favorite food is a chocolate chocolate shake. That I means eat it enough. what's your disguise's favorite? Oh, what's your disguise's <laughs> You're favorite? You're disguised food? as somebody. My disguise really likes food? quinoa. He has it about every Friday. That's my disguise's favorite food. <laughs> quinoa cakes. Right now, uh my work makes a great chicken sandwich, so I've just been eating that one. Absolutely. Uh, the kitchen makes a great great sandwich. They rip into it, dude. Favorite food. Whose parents are the best at cooking? Not mine. They suck. I'm going to vote mine. My mom was making stuff from everywhere growing up. Okay. So my mom sucks, dude. She burns food. She's horrible. I'm not my mom sucks. I love you, mom. She's not listening to this, though. But uh, she's a horrible cook. <laughs> Say whatever I want. She's a horrible cook. My dad, he made about one or two good meals. That was it. And then my older brother's actually the best cook in our family. So it's not my parents. My uh, parents suck. I believe that Ian's parents are probably the best cook. My favorite food was probably like hamburgers, just because, like, that's fair. It's hard to go yeah, wrong with like good. a good like that's probably like my are, benchmark at yeah, like most restaurants burger. that I drop clam into. Um, well, and that's what we're talking about. Clam right? uh, Yeah, my parents. My parents aren't great at cooking, but we the we, we ate a lot of uh, <laughs> we had a lot of variety of stuff. So did you? I remember eating like five foods growing up. I mean, it was a lot of beef. But well, same here. But it was like we're having we are having. What was it? It was tacos. We had beef tacos. Yeah. We had steak. And then we had hamburgers. And then we had spaghetti. And then we would have like chiseling beef with french fries. It was like the five meals I remember eating growing up. Like that's <laughs> Really? Yeah. yeah. My I mom mean, was it, always yeah. pulling some crazy stuff out of her. My mom, steak, you, know, you make fun of me for not liking the seasoning. There's a great story my dad had from the first year of him being married to my mom. And he asked her to make tacos. And she didn't know they put seasoning in tacos. So she gave him... Salt and pepper. She gave him... No. She just gave him ground beef cooked with cheese in a tortilla. That was it. There's no my salt, no goodness. pepper, no nothing. So there that's a lot of that's people a, that's that a, don't know. That's what a uh, 27-year-old mom nest thought was tacos there's a lot of people that yeah, think it was that really that's funny it it's a really it's one of my favorite stories of all the time. amount of people that like don't have taco seasoning and make tacos i'm like taco seasoning almost free it's so cheap it's yeah almost i went to it bought the other day it's like 97 cents for yeah exactly. it's like literally so cheap it's so cheap and like so good yeah it, compared Chico, yeah compared to Chico, like man, or just options. i mean like garlic onion yeah those just have some of that yeah. around some creole, that's usually you can throw that on anything. It's really easy. Like it's season stuff. Cayenne Don't be afraid pepper, to Alec, uh, Alex seeds. asks, so he has a set list. Breaking I kind of went through it before, but not in this show. He says he, he made a set list for a cube. If you don't know, a cube is just saying these are figures that already exist. I'm going to put them all in one quote unquote set and make a sealed set out of them. Um, I already looked over his cube. Honestly, I hate it as a set because it doesn't have a theme. It doesn't. It's like kind of random figures. He kind of replied to me saying his theme is uh, mechanics that are cool. And so as a set, I wouldn't buy the set or play in it sealed. No offense. But I do think it has cool mechanics. It actually does. Like the Magneto is cool. Um, a, a handful of the other characters are really cool. His idea is that you can make teams out of it fairly easily for a sealed set. But to me, a sealed set's all about like a truly having a theme and like a set or a storyline built around. So it's not like, really a set. I, I don't think like. a cube is like a set, though. I think it's just... I think a cube is like... Well, I, he I says, don't know. what do you think of it as a sealed set? Okay. So as a sealed set, I'm not a fan of it as a sealed set. As a... Okay. I think he's saying as a sealed gameplay mechanics environment. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily like, have figures that I think have great sealed gameplay mechanics. You're all supposed to like. If he likes them from as the sealed, same cube, I don't. If he if he likes them as sealed gameplay mechanics, then by all means. I don't know because I don't play Magic, but I thought it was like you all buy like a cube, and cubes are supposed to be like comparable like variances of like meta. I don't. Meta. Yeah, I, don't I don't. I don't know. A cube is what I always thought. Like what we did for uh, Halloween. A few years ago. That, to me, was, in my opinion, a version of a cube, a quote-unquote sealed yeah, set. Yeah, where you 
make where you had a certain number of commons, uncommon, certain number of super rares, rare right. chases, where it's like you actually are making a set. That's what I was like, fashion. I was kind of assuming, but oh, I definitely don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maggot asks, excluding when people concede, what is your fastest win in Hero Clicks ever? Oh man, I one turned somebody with Vulture, excluding that. End of the story. Gross. Yeah, I mean, I ran a lot of Vulture, so same. Mine was against Xion. Uh It's on the YouTube channel. It's like a 15 minute game. I pulled up with Guy Gardner and I Guy Gardner his entire team. It was awesome. This Red Lantern guy That's Gardner. way cooler than Vulture. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was so fun because he had Stripe on his team. So Guy Gardner then instantly took like 10 Mystics damage and died. <laughs> it was awesome. Mm-hmm. So that was easily my fastest win ever. Megan asks. I'm saying that Blacky Blogar or whatever his name is. In that. Blackagar Boltagar? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Edward Toombs, that's normal Vulture. Adrian, oh, Adrian Toombs is Adrian Toombs, I don't know who the normal It's Blackie Drago oh, is geez. the prime. Adrian Peterson Toombs. <laughs> Blackie Drago is the prime. You're saying that he isn't an iconic character? He's not. He's not. I, I, yeah, I am <laughs> saying that he's not. <laughs> Biggest letdown figure? Asks the maggot. Uh, I mean, like, like we kind of went over this already, like Iron Man. Kind of, yeah, we already kind of went over this. The, yeah, we kind of went over this. I don't know. There's one like, Ultron. What's a character that you thought would be terrible but was good? What if Ultron? I think for most of the world, that's down. prime. That's prime. So oh, yeah, for what if Ultron? World, geez, what if Ultron is a letdown? Would be terrible but was good. Okay. A character. I'm not going to say a character that I thought would be a letdown that ended up being good, but just a character that had no right. Being as good as it was was like Marvella and Mary Jane from That's true. Spider-Man. Absolute carnage. That's really true. Yeah. Both I, of those just insane for the points. I don't know if I have an answer for that. Figures I thought would be bad would end up being good. I think the answer that could apply the most generally to the community is Legacy Thanos. If you listen to the podcast around when he came out, it's very much a... It's very much like a... Um, wow, this figure is kind of fun. It's kind of cool. And then the next week, it's, you know, maybe this thing is playable. And then a week after that, it's, this is the greatest piece yeah. ever in history. So I think yeah, that is probably cool like, that, the, like play out in real time. The general <laughs> fun. I think it was just because like the straight amount of reading that you had to do on his dial was like it took you a week just to process everything you could do. And then our final oh, I don't want that. I don't question I was of the, the I was ignore the I'm sure you. I'm sure you. No. Sure, you're going to ignore these, but it's important. Bill asks, have you guys tried Buffalo Trace? Calder, oh, have you tried Buffalo Trace? I have not tried Buffalo Sydney, Trace. have you tried Buffalo Trace? I don't stay up past midnight, so I don't know what you guys talk about. Ian, have you tried Buffalo Trace? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. Just now that we've sure. gotten to the bottom of that, yeah. we know that <laughs> this, Buffalo this Trace... one twenty four a.m. post oh, by Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not about to drive home oh, for, after on, that guys. post. Sorry. Oh, what's up? Hello? Well, we're we're doing an episode right now. Yeah, I know. It's alright, I'll just edit all this. No, I... Okay, well, Mr. K is not here right now. He's not going to be coming for a while, what, a few months? Okay, well, he's not on the show. What do you want us to do with that? No, no, you tell him. Let's say Mr. K. Tell him. Oh, when's he coming? I think so. Oh, February now. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. That's like a month away. Are we still going to drop? No. I drilled a hole in the bottle. Oh, we're not going to drop. I've had the keys the whole time. No, you you tell Mr. K that uh, I guess we'll see him when we see him. Apparently, that's February. Ian, if you got to take your call outside. Probably. I'm just going to... Guys, I'm sorry. This is ridiculous. i got to go. That's all right. It's, It's fine. I think we have... Oh, is that some special guests, I think, at the door? I think we better we better take this call. It's good thing the water special been, guests we have been drowning. But yeah, yeah let's, let's open the door now that wow. Ian finally opened the door. Now that Ian finally opens the door, we're safe. The water's flowing out, and oh man, I think we have some special guests that we could actually finally let in for episode five hundred. Let's get it started. Ladies and gentlemen, to keep the good times going here on episode 500, a massive episode, a monumental task in Heroclix podcast history, we wanted to get some amazing guests, more than just Ian, Simeon, and myself, 
but some people that are actually in charge of making the game that we love and play. I would like to say every day, but I know some of you don't don't get in your daily clicks like you need to. These are like vitamins. Come on, guys. But here, without further ado, we have Jake and Brian from WizKids joining us. If you guys want to introduce yourselves and say your role within the company and then maybe even take turns giving yourself a little origin story, that would be perfect. And Hi. Rochambeau, whoever wants to go first. Oh, well, Jake, you go first. It's interesting timing because my daughter just came over from school. <laughs> so it, uh, <laughs> we, we might get multiple intros here. But, there we uh, go. <laughs> we're really growing the, the Dial H audience episode by episode. So <laughs> no, uh, but Before I introduce myself, this is Jake Tice speaking uh, from the HeroClix team. Uh, I want to say congrats, Dial H, 500 episodes in. So this is exciting. We're, we're excited to join here, uh, Brian and I. And... You know, I, it's an audio format, so people don't know that I'm wearing a full tuxedo and top hat. So <laughs> you know, we, we really came all out for this. Um, so, yeah, my, my name is Jake Dice. Uh, I'm the category manager and vice president of games for WizKids. So anything that's a game coming out of WizKids uh, typically falls under my team. And uh, I have a counterpart on our team, uh, Sarah Jenkins, who manages all the cool RPG stuff that we do for our, our licensed partners and uh, internally there as well. But you don't care about that. We want to talk about Hero Clicks today. <laughs> We, you know, we have a few other. We've had some pre kibble scuffle conversation. We know a little bit of the other, the other <laughs> games that come out. You know, well, I just got Featherlight. Simeon gave me that for Christmas. So there's, you know, we dabble, we dabble. Uh, Brian, hi, I'm Brian Galley. Um, I got into HeroClix roundabouts of the Teen Titans set, and quickly fell into just being an absolute rules nerd. And over the years, have climbed up to the point where I now do the design and development for HeroClix. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, I, I totally just blew through my origin story. Yeah. <laughs> I could uh, be shrouded in mystery. <laughs> every every good hero needs an origin. Jake, this is up this. to you, but uh, yeah. you told us a, a fun origin story at Nationals this year um, that involved a t-shirt. I didn't know if you wanted to reiterate that for the listeners. Uh, sure. I mean, that there in 2000, it was late 2008, 2009, uh, the HeroClix team was essentially three people, and the WizKids company was essentially three-ish people. And uh, in between the transition from Tops to NECA, where, where uh, the HeroClix has been now for, shoot, 15 years, uh, I was part of the transition team that, that helped port it over and kind of uh, re- re- replug everything back in uh, with, with NECA, uh, joining from Tops. Um, and yeah, we... we uh, produced WizKids and, and HeroClix are back t-shirts for Gen Con and uh, attended Gen Con, oh God, what was it, 2009 uh, as a surprise. So uh, it was the first time I've ever attended a convention uh, where we didn't tell anybody and it was essentially a, a, a sneak attack <laughs> convention for HeroClix. So yeah, I have a... Uh, I've been a part of the HeroClix brand uh, through two tours of duty, uh, one in the late uh, was it aughts? Is that what we call them now? Uh, the one that's in the late aughts and then joined uh, uh, a couple years ago again, but having a lot of fun. Fantastic. I like hearing the back in the saddle again type story. It's always good. How, how about this? Here's another good one for Ooh. for uh, Dial H's 500th episode. My first hero click set that i worked on um, mostly all the way through was uh arkham asylum way back in the day and the first set that i worked on more or less all the way through with, with the team and a lot of effort of more skilled people than me was uh notorious so it just goes to show you i basically have one idea <laughs> <laughs> the dc bad guys they're your jam just bad guys in general just bad go oh, ooh. I, I worked on the villainous brand for Robinsburger for about just under four years. So, oh, wow, <laughs> my family's big villainous people. I didn't know. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yep. And but before WizKids, I was with uh, Magic the Gathering for four years. So, I think in twenty twenty five, it'll be twenty years in the game industry. So, it'll be uh, a testament to my age. <laughs> Well, right on. Well, I'm glad to have you, Brian. 
Do you want to, since you skipped over your origin, just a little bit, how would you get involved with WizKids specifically after Ooh. becoming a huge rules nerd? <laughs> so, um, years ago, we had this uh, title, Captain America. Was it Avengers Infinity, I think? Yeah. Principal. Um, had a, there, there was a bit of a rules issue with him and Force Blast, and it, this has been a couple of years, I don't want to quote, you know, misquote things. Uh, but a ruling came down, was posted on the win, that led to some downstream issues. And I try to think of the best way to put it that does make me sound like one of those, like, raised cork board strings on the... But <laughs> I, I was just throwing You're emails. You're full Charlie Day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where is Pepe Silva? There's no Pepe Silva. <laughs> I was just, like, throwing emails at the head judge, just like, you, know, but you don't understand this one. <laughs> Um, and apparently that made an impression because when we had pa- uh, Worlds at PAX, Anthony Barnstable, one longtime judge, couldn't make it out, and I got invited to come and fill in, fill in for him, and which got me connections with the company, and from there kind of just grew into rules, play, rules team playtesting, and eventually design. Right on. I love I love that it was title cap too that just that warms my heart personally because i want to say that was if they hit with in or they like made an attack like in cap force blast or something they could remove a token it was a weird ability if they they, like knocked back a character they they use force blast they could remove a token and was the knockback from having force blast considered using force blast the 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 rules have been updated to patch that hole, but there was a just like weird gray zone where the knockback wasn't using force blast, and therefore if you outwitted the force blast, they'd still have the knockback from it because it didn't require using it, and then it, it was a mess. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, but r- r- rules are patched; it everything works there as it should. Now. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Well, without further ado, we asked a lot of our listeners for questions to ask you guys. Uh, The community is always so curious about the people that not only make the game, but are the minds behind it. So we just really want to take this time to pick your brain. Simi and I will more just be a mouthpiece for the community. We won't try to add in too much since I know the listener is right now. They're like, I want to listen to WizKids. Please, please, please. <laughs> oh, I know, but I, I know they're like, call her, shut up. I want to hear what they have to say. <laughs> we, we listen to you every week. So we are going to, uh, we'll jump in and we'll just take turns asking some questions and uh, I, I won't target them toward anyone in particular, just to whoever feels like, oh, this please is a neat question. It, this uh, is, Oh, okay. If, if it's if it's force blast and action tokens, Brian's your guy. Okay, I'll, <laughs> then, then I will. <laughs> then I will. If it, I, uh, I, is make the shark bigger? I'm I'm the guy. <laughs> All right. Hang on. I'm digging through the rules forums to find his question real quick, so I can ask oh, him. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, Brian, I'm getting like Vietnam flashbacks right now. Remembering <laughs> this. <laughs> Brian's a hardcore fan. Brian uh, had to work for an event and send one of his casual hero clicks playing. Was it your friend or brother to go play so you could get promos? <laughs> but that was my brother. It was uh, for fear yeah. itself. Um, I could not attend the events because of work, so I would just, just I would pay for my little brother to go out and just like sit in the chair for me. <laughs> oh my! So get, I get love the hammers. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's dedication. I mean, those hammers. You know, here's just a question off the top of my head. People, and I've just had this conversation with a few people right now, it almost feels like we're back in Fear Itself days because attack modification is, I think, between Avengers and Scott Porter might be the highest it's been since then. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like remembering Fear Itself and then seeing like nowadays? Do you feel like that's true just in a different way versus dropping a hammer and split lipping on somebody? Like, do you feel like it's uh, reminiscent of Fear Itself with extra steps? Uh, probably, yeah. Probably. If anything, it, it does make four more dynamic gains. Okay. And, yeah. You know, Fear itself lasted for a little bit, and eventually we started getting counters like uh, Prime Nighthawk. Oh uh, yeah. Who, who's to say what's coming down the pipeline? You know. Ooh. Well, I think I think you specifically are to say. <laughs> this is fair, but my boss is also on the call. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and I did sign I an NDA. Think, uh... so. Yeah, no, I, I think we, we we keep definitely keep an eye on the metagame environment and work with a, a deep pool of playtesters and talk to different folks from the community. And 
I think one of the hardening things from somebody that uh, you know lo- lo- loves hero clicks but is not as hardcore a player is uh, some of our more competitive players. You know, from my chair is seeing you know, the amount of variety of different stuff that that was played at uh, at Worlds, variety of different formats, and then kind of coming out of Worlds, not really. Uh, a fan outcry for major modification or rata or, or questions, you know, that there are powerful pieces for sure in, in the formats. Um, but I think you know, that they've led to pretty fun play environments as well. So we keep an eye on things, but as Brian said too, you know, the, the there exists rock, paper, and scissors in, in any collectible game. So sometimes uh, we have to see what environments look like for paper and scissors to show up. Okay. On that topic, like that. Uh, <laughs> other podcasts and some communities online feel that there is a power in Heroclix memes that memes convince WizKids to change figures. Can you confirm that it's the memes that cause figures to get erratas? <laughs> I'm, I'm typically in uh, too, too many meetings to see memes. Like, <laughs> to, uh, yeah, I think uh, t- t- typically a, a pool of players and the, the people that we talk to at events and conventions, you know, if you go to uh, nationals at a Gen Con or in respective countries, or, or you know, if you go to Memphis, you know, Brian is there, uh, a lot of folks from our team are there ab- absorbing information, talking to people and, and seeing what, what what the different diversity of the formats look like. And, you know, I think, too, that there are some times where the the bright intelligent people that are, are working and playing on the game sometimes get it wrong too you know and, and that's something where i don't think anybody uh had saul's build two years ago as being the, mm. the world champion build so i think you know there are a lot of people that will uh stand out and trumpet and tell you exactly what's going to happen and then it doesn't pan out so i think it's something where the, the more data that we have and, and the more uh results that we get from people uh <laughs> benefits in addition to that subjective feedback okay the other right hand, i really like the memes so i don't <laughs> want to discourage people from you know making them <laughs> <laughs> oh it's all right i'll edit that part out so he just says <laughs> i don't like the memes <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> Simeon, we make the memes sometimes. That's Not true. very often. We don't do it a lot. Yeah. But, we have, we've done some spoofy uh, uh, April Fool's stuff. I think we've got a good one cooking up for this year. I just I don't know what it is yet, but I, I just have a feeling that this year's gonna be a good April Fool's. Ooh. I don't even know what he mean. I don't even know what he means by that. I'll be honest. So I don't I'm, I'm also <laughs> as somebody that has been working on the Icon X brand, yeah, I think you can kind of guess which of the the memes that we, we thought have been interesting there was ooh, of so maybe <laughs> going also fan. with that yeah, actually it's a great uh point of a question here you did pointing spider-man very popular meme the bat slap also a popular meme uh there have been a few that there are some words i can't say but um do you have to keep them to i'm talking about moon knight sorry there's a specific uh moon knight memes but those ones are Uh-oh. all edits so yeah you know what i mean <laughs> i, I so know exactly what you mean it there's, um, my there's memes. there's there's random stuff go that's not what he says and then there's dracula where's my money uh both would be very <laughs> funny in hero clicks um have you ever looked into Marvel DC comic panels that are used for memes? I assume for research for iconics. And then there have just had to have been a few that you're like, we can't do that guys. Come on. Whether they be edits or just logistically don't make sense. And, yeah, or I think that- uh, are there any, <laughs> and, sorry. And, or are there any memes that you'd like to make? Sorry. Now I'll sure. be done. No, no. I think that, that there's a, a wide subjective line on that. And, you know, across t- talking to different members of the team, you know, that there might be different things that we consider interesting inbounds, out of bounds. And then from conversation with licensors, that's another big piece of it, too. Like, it is the idea something that uh, is going to be exciting for a fan that, you know, so, so some of the memes will, will get down the, the rabbit hole pretty deeply. And so, you know, but 50 percent of Heroclix fans may have no idea what it is. So I think when we've selected how to include that, I think we want to make sure that it it has a, a cultural relevance or something that people immediately see and respond to. And then I think also something too that the licensor sees is like, oh, that that's an interesting moment or something that 
you know, it exists in a smaller toyetic fashion that somebody you know, is going to want to put on their shelf or on the, the display on their desk. And then also has like a, a gameplay element too. So I think if we were to sculpt something that was a, a piece of meme content, I think the idea is like, what, what is the gameplay around it? How, how do you make that relevant and exciting? Brian, anything mm-hmm. to, to add? <laughs> Uh, not not particularly, uh, but if you want like the one that I would love to do, it would have to be me and the boys. Ah, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, I do love that. I do truly love that one. Also <sighs> known as the Goofy Sinister Six. I think just bring back team bases, right? That's yeah. everyone would be happy <laughs> you know, with that. that. That's uh, a Calder platform, I think. Uh, is, is, I is. <laughs> People who've listened to all 499 prior episodes know uh, where, where the team base guy is. That's true. <laughs> I might be one of the few people that actually love playing team bases and playing against them. But I, I do. I love them. They're awesome. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, people with PTSD from the Justice League and Zombie <laughs> team base. Uh, we'll, I'm going to get cracking into some of our listener questions here. I feel like this first one pretty strongly is going out to Brian. So over the years, how is the evaluation process for how strong a power is? In what ways has that affected design philosophy as time has passed? Um, to give an example, I think Barrier has always been a strong power. And then I would say something like Molecule Man, for example, has taken it to being even stronger. So maybe that's kind of what the listener is getting at. But uh, go ahead. Ooh, yeah, that starting off with a big one. <laughs> Uh, they get easier, I promise. Yeah, uh, I, I should. I should certainly hope so. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we are constantly reviewing how powers are doing in the metagame. Um, there are some that we are flagging as underused and perhaps need a little bit more love. Uh, Barrier was for a while a underused power. Uh, it, it's always been potent, but you know, no one would ever want to use Barrier as it appeared in the dial. So we started experimenting around with things to juice up Barrier, and eventually, you know. We're at a point where Barrier is one of like the most played powers in the game, and we're starting to pull back a little bit. Uh, so you probably won't be seeing another Molecule Man type figure for a good long while as we cycle through, you know, different powers and just kind of, kind of keep the game constantly evolving. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there are some powers right now that we have our eyes on as things that we could, you know, probably start putting a little bit more juice to, and some powers that we're eyeing, is, you know, maybe pull back a little bit. Okay, and then to tack it on in my own words, um, and you can say pass to this if you don't want to answer mm-hmm. this, um, benching powers is something that happened with Wonder Woman 80th. Mm-hmm. Could potentially we see some people become bench warmers? Some powers become bench warmers? I wouldn't say that. Uh, okay. Benching powers was a, well, I'll say an interesting experiment. Uh, from a design perspective, it was it was a absolutely fascinating challenge to try to work around not having access to the full toolkit, but that didn't really resonate with players so much. Okay. So it's not something we're going to revisit. Uh, we're not looking gotcha. to put powers on the bench and not use them, but we are looking at the, you know ways to design dials that will maybe accentuate or decentuate de- certain powers or combinations. Uh, Leap climb, for example, maybe we start you know doing things that more care about more leap, leap climb, try to build that up into a th- power that sees more play on teams. Okay. Or incapacitate. Sounds like a plan. Simeon, do you want to hit him with the second one? Yeah. Uh, so, to your knowledge, has WizKids ever considered a webinar where people could apply for a course to become a certified Hero Clicks judge? I know at one point there were judge qualifications, <laughs> and then. Um, but yeah, like a standard set by WizKids, people could become a certified judge, and then like they'd get like a badge of honor or like a little pin that says, "I'm allowed to judge hero clicks." That kind of thing. A powdered wig and a big gavel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, so it is something we've had on the back burner, just as a topic we come back to periodically. It's not something that we are devoting a lot of resources to getting done, if that makes sense. The, there are definitely advantages to having a dedicated judge program, and I would love to see one established, but it's a lot of work on the back end to get it to a point, uh, to find the people who can administer those courses to build out the... Uh, oh, oh, I think the, we're putting, I'm going to hop in. Oh, because hop in, I yes. think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, so I think a dedicated judge program is something that is really interesting. When I think of similar resources and, and things that we want to do, particularly like just talking 2024, uh, running more Heroclix events is something that I think there, there's a universal appetite for. Where, you know, like most companies, most collectible companies, most game companies, the last four, well, all companies the last four years have been really strange but i think within the last year we've kind of seen more of a return to normalcy uh with uh retail and and store and event and convention organized play and you know a general surge in demand too so we want to race to to catch up with that and and have more op offerings at a store level and at a, a convention level as well you know i think uh most entrenched people in the community might have seen the Adepticon note that we had. You know, we're working here shortly, and, and maybe by the time this comes out, to have a list of different conventions that we're attending uh, through the course of 2024. And we're also planning 2025, but we, we really want to expand that coverage. And with that, I think comes a need for judges, sure, but I think also more for tournament organizers and for retailers that want to run larger scale events. And that's something where we'll have more of a, a call for that for the, the community here coming shortly too. You know, if you have a regional convention where you think you can draw 16 to 20 Heroclix players to come out and play, you know, that's a thing that we would love to support and start talking with people. You know, through the the process of the last few years, WizKids has organizationally gone through some different shifts. You know, I think primarily pulling back from organized play in 2020, 21, uh, and now us coming out the other side and starting to staff up uh, to be able to support it and you know provide customer service and support for retailers and, and different event organizers that want to run events. So I think the judge program and having a, ju- a dedicated judge program would kind of be the next train car as we line that forward. So find find a lot more places for people to play and then improve that play experience for, for those people. Fantastic. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Um, you kind of, um, but the next question is regarding more play and coming to more events. So I'll ask it quick and we can get through it since you've kind of already started. But uh, what are the plans to expand either competitive play or just play at more events in the 2024 season? And will we see a return of a WKO style event or WKO adjacent events? If so, when can we expect to receive information regarding these plans? Hopefully in terms of convention presence and promos, we should have information for that here shortly. So the Adepticon information, we, we, we jumped the line a little bit just because we wanted to make sure people could sign up for their events and then we could grow there and potentially offer more table space and more opportunity. So it was about, I'd say, a, a week to 10 days earlier than we had hoped. But, you know, the full list should, should be ready to fire here, um, you know, in the next couple weeks for, for the entire slate. But I think for this year, uh, from a convention presence, we'll try to add in some guess uh, two to three higher profile events and, and break those out and then i think down the line in terms of uh, more regionalized uh, event attendance we're wrapping our head around more international support because you know we're my, my heart goes out to the international fans where i think you know across different uh business distribution inflation environments you know uh we all know Heroclix is not a cheap game, and I think it's been extra difficult for different folks out of market. So we're in some initial discussions with, with different partners around the world to try to make that a little bit easier and try to figure out some different on-ramps for, for Heroclix players internationally. Um, in t- terms of like a, a WKO or not WKO, uh, I really think about it in, in terms of a few different levels. What One... Uh, and again, I, I don't want to give a TED talk here, so feel free to give me the hook when, when the time's right. But uh, really, I, I think that there are sort of the casual competitive blended events where if you're going to a regional show, there are different uh, battle royale or seal events people can participate in, ones that have maybe storyline based events to it. And then secondary to that, I think the more competitive events and making sure that we have of those two levels of offering. You know, if 100% of our events are 
highly competitive, you know, I think that is not a, a great path forward for growing the game and that, you know, we need d- different ways for people to have their, their first game experience, you know, like, like Brian's poor brother that had to go sit and play <laughs> because he had to work, you know, uh, I'd hate to throw him to the sharks, but then, uh, so th- I would say that that in terms of the uh, regional and larger convention, you know, looking at domestic and international there, and then at a store level. And on the store level, I'm sure as people have been watching and seeing, but we're experimenting and trying some different things out there in terms of different sizes and price points for OP kits for retailers. Uh, things like the the Royal Flush Gang OP kit, I think, are pretty different from a lot of what we've done up to that point. And uh, we're responding and, and uh, taking a look at data to see, you know, what does the retailer buy? What is the fan excited about? And starting to plan those out you know, over the course of the next two years. That's exciting. I like it. Do you want to get the next one, Simeon? Yeah, I was actually going to skip around a little bit because... Oh, sure. So speaking <laughs> on new uh, conventions and having like a casual or competitive kind of setting in different venues. Uh, We've got a question here that is, are there any plans for new formats in 2024? Potentially. Um, So yeah, this is a, uh, this is an interesting spot to talk about it here. You know, generally uh, from working in the game space, typically you're trained to, to be hesitant and cautious about debuting new formats and splitting your audience. And, you know, because of that training long term, I've, I've generally been reticent to, to add new formats to the different games. But, um, you know, a, a million years ago, uh, I worked on the team uh, that worked on gold and silver and modern. Uh, so it it's something that uh, it's constantly kind of in the back of my head of like, what well, what is the interesting way to curate that out for, for different fans. Um, we spent a lot of time last year uh, working towards the debut of uh, Theme and Pulp. And both of those to serve kind of two different reasons. And, and Brian and, and the mm-hmm. design and development team did, did a great job you know, kind of working and tuning those in, environments. And I think they've needed very little change or modification. But the main goals for those on a Pulp uh, front, you know, one of the things that we wanted to take a look at there and kind of one of the differentiations between that and say a, a traditional popper format that people had played is the amplification of, of CUR and really making sure that the, you know, the rare figures were, were getting the appropriate amount of, of shine and love there. But then also creating an opportunity to where if you're new to, to hero clicks and wanted to get involved in your first tournament, there isn't a jump for you to kind of go out and try to grab uh, a mixture of super errors or chases or legacy cards or harder to track down things where on a, a pulp format background, we wanted to make it an easy on ramp. If people are going to participate in their first tournament, I easily recommend pulp to, to quite a few people and that the amount of different rules and moving parts is pretty self-contained. And I think Pulp has been uh, an extraordinary success. You know, we, we, we've been very happy with the amount of people playing Pulp, talking about Pulp, and uh, in seeing how it's changing, how people reevaluate sets, which is always kind of cool to see. Yeah. On the theme, on the theme front, uh, we installed that because with the Spider-Man Beyond Amazing Rules changes that went through. Uh, there, I think, was an initial fan trepidation that uh, building theme teams wouldn't be as popular as, as or as exciting uh, in the new play environment. And we wanted to make sure that if someone uh, what was a super comic book fan, that that wouldn't get lost and that there would be assurances there that you know p- people could play Hero Clicks the way they like to play and making theme as that driver. But I think... And, and Brian, you know, hop in yeah. if you feel differently. You know, people still play theme teams, and people. Oh yeah, it, it, words it, matter more than potentially yeah. ever. I was gonna say, yeah. If anything, theme theme usage has been spiking with the uh, past bit. Bit. Yeah. Um, there's still great value in building a theme team just for the get, getting your map choice or your uh, goes first. And we've really been working in building more characters that have theme requirements or that reward shared keywords 
and I think specifically in modern, I guess we're we're talking. Yes, about, this is and like the the, the right. theme really didn't drop out of modern in the way that I think a lot of our player base was concerned it was. So in that world, I think theme as a format is something that I think, you know, unless we saw a groundswell of support of people rallying to try to to save theme, I would rather trade that for something else. And uh, we're still at like the the very initial stages of thinking about like what would that shift be. Um, but it, you know, and again, <laughs> I don't think Brian and I talked about this in advance. So here we go. <laughs> I think. Uh, <laughs> I think team constructed is something that could be a really interesting thing that we're kind of wrapping our head around that I would want to make sure we, we take our time and get it right. That intrigues me a lot. I've always been a big fan of the team events. You and your buddies are playing hero close together and you're, you know, not the same way as like being on a basketball team, but still like working together in a way it's always fun to be like oh you won your game but you lost yours but you won yours you know to see that ebb and flow throughout a tournament is like really fun and i think i think a team event like that would be really awesome because there's just lots of fellowship that i think happens during Mm -hmm. a team event nice Uh, too in that i think you know for a hardcore competitive player to go to an event and play alone is absolutely fine you could be entertained for an entire weekend playing hero clicks just you know building forces and playing them or uh, playing in battle royales, etc. But I think the idea too of like, if I was going to go to my first hero clicks event, somebody being part of my team and helping me out and in, you know, between providing different feedback and, uh, and encouragement, I think there is really interesting. I think that long term could be good for the game of hero clicks. So no, no immediate changes. We're kind of keeping an eye on things. You know, if, if theme grows, great. I, I doesn't. Uh, I think that would be excellent. But if theme is just sort of absorbed back into modern conceptually, then I think we, in either scenario, could potentially take a look at, at team constructed. Kind of going along with formats and everything here. You had another listener question. Uh, are there any plans to go through and errata figures that are in Silver Age or add so, to the Silver Age ban list, potentially? Well, to add to the ban list, yes. Uh, or remove. Or, or, or remove. remove, yeah. Tr- yeah, yeah. I mean, we... I work pretty closely with Aaron over at The Rock, and we are constantly evaluating so the Silver Age, you know, they're actually, and just spoil a little bit, we're going to have an announcement coming down sometime in the near future, possibly... By the time this episode gets out, maybe even happened already. Ooh. Of uh, <laughs> de- detailing some some new errata, some ban list changes and stuff. But it's something we're constantly looking at. Uh, with regards to like a mass errata of Silver Age, it's not something we're s- terribly interested in. Um, which might not be something people want to hear, but <sighs> er- erratas are tricky. Every time we issue an errata, it's another thing players have to remember that isn't on the card, isn't directly in front of them. It's another complication to the game. So it, we need to make sure that an errata is worth it before we init- issue it. Mm. Um, so the last couple we did, the um, Thanos getting to equip all the Infinity Gems, and uh, uh, there was one other one. Oh, the uh, Mandarin Rings. Like, th- those were pretty small things, and they felt worth it. So we need before we issue any sort of like sweeping Silver Age errata, we have to make sure that we're the extra complication and difficulty where we're into the game by putting that errata out there is worth the benefit we get from doing so. Okay, that makes sense. Well, I thank you in advance for taking Jason Wingard off the ban list. I can't wait to play him again. All for you, Calder. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> I do think that Thanos and uh, like the Mandarin rings, but Thanos especially, I know at Worlds, I heard a lot of people talking about how happy they were with that change. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was a big one. And then one theme at Worlds. Oh, yeah, yeah. it did. Uh, to, to tie into that slightly but not so slightly, um, I'm going to be the bad guy, and I'm going to ask you guys about the game's power creep. So uh, the question is, a set like Wonder Woman 80th, a mark to hit or a mark to stay away from? How do you guys feel about like the overall like aspects of power creep? I know like 
it's been said by a lot of people it affects every game any kind of collectible game especially but any game that has <clears throat> multiple releases at some point it will hit a level of power creep oh um, um, I, I could sit here for hours waxing poetic on the various types <laughs> of creep power complexity <laughs> brand whatever um so undeniably like over the course of here this entire history power creep has happened i'm not going to try to deny that uh that being said over the past couple of years i think we're more or less at a plateau um things are not things have not been creeping up in between let's say wonder woman and where we are now nearly as fast as they were prior to leading up into wonder woman's release um, I think it's even even with Wonder Woman, we had that was a staple of the meta all throughout its time in modern, and you know that's a pretty good hallmark of power creep being at I think a manageable level. Um, it is something that we are concerned about. We do keep a very close eye on it, and we're trying to work out ways to maybe maybe not deflate power creep, but to ensure that we are keeping it at a manageable level to keep the game at a healthy yeah. state but there's there's a balance there too you know for yeah. a game that, that's entering year 22 um 23 22 the uh as brian said I, I think looking for those plateaus or those environments where you know i think in addition to power creep thinking about are we creating fun play environments are we creating interactivity are we creating interesting force building um you know, in terms of all those different dials become something that the, the team talks about quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I think in addition to that, too, like what aspects of the game have increased in power or decreased in power, I think is another axis to think about there. And then additionally, too, like in a world where, say, there was power deflation uh, over time, you know, I think that that also feels bad if you're uh, opening up new product and you say this is inferior to everything that I own previously. Like that is not a great experience for the the customer either. So I think it's kind of finding that blend of like how can you create a, a nice long era of uh, of gameplay where everything gels nicely together. I did touch on this a little bit too earlier when I mentioned um, stuff like barrier have was gradually increased in power over the years to where it's at now. And we might start pulling back on barrier a little bit, but also tuning up power in other areas, like making leap climber and capacitate better, which currently are not our people are really hot for. So th- there are tricks and ways to keep things there and moving parts as well. Right. I mean, changes yeah. in map size, changes in how yeah. terrain and powers interact with each other mm-hmm. can create another level of complexity there. I like that. I like that a lot. So I was looking at the list for the next fun question. This is all very rulesy, very I play from a, a hero clicks fan. No. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. I was gonna say, Let's what is, what is the pipeline? Yeah. What is the timeline of asking WizKids questions and becoming the head of design? <laughs> it's roughly. Oh. I don't. Let's see. You said. But, yeah, that, that was pa- it that was, was PAX, PAX Unplugged that was 2018? 2018. Okay. There, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so 2018, and it was about AI Captain right. America, the principled cap. Right. Just a few just a few short years after PAX Unplugged. I like Unplugged. the, the years, chances yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> we, have a, we have a handful of questions that are about new stuff. I think probably my favorite thing about Heroclix is how much cool. new and cool stuff that's been coming down the pipeline between iconics, between new sets with cool, fun, new mechanics. Uh, so we'll jump into, there's kind of a handful of these questions that I know I personally also enjoy. So we'll get into them. Um, what's up with legacy cards? Uh, this person asked, will we, will we be getting a larger quantity of legacy cards in the future or will they continue? Legacy cards will continue. <laughs> the, uh, <Yeah. laughs> I, I don't know if that was their, their framing of it. But uh, right, and, and Brian, hop in if you, if you feel yeah. differently. But as, as things from we've discussed with that, I think it, it's, the legacy cards will likely continue at about the same rate that they currently are. Mm-hmm. And I think from people that have looked at the last few sets, you can see that the legacy card selections we try to take figures from you know the, the last twenty years and, and figure out ways that you know 
if you're playing Wheels of Vengeance, that it takes characters that feel like, oh, like these might be missing from choices that were made. You know, we, we have a finite amount of spots for any set. So the legacy card kind of allows us to go back, and if we feel like we did either a cool sculpt or a take on a character that maybe the editorial has changed in 10 years and that character doesn't operate in the way that they previously did or do another layer of storytelling, the legacy card gives us an opportunity to uh, flash that piece forward and and have that be alongside something from a Wheels of Vengeance or Notorious and and feel like it it fits in and makes sense. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, legacy cards are one of my favorite parts of designing a new set. Just getting to go back through his- the game's history and find those gems that we can revisit, we can tweak, we can update to modern design sensibilities. Well, I think yeah. too, like anything that adds value to somebody's existing collection is always exciting too. Oh so yeah, something that you know, if you've been collecting for ten years and then suddenly it it gets you to take a, a figure out that you haven't played with in you know years and, and replay with it, I think that's awesome. Yeah, everyone feels like a puzzle design, and I, I absolutely love working on them. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, this kind of goes along with the last one, so I'll just go right into it. Uh, what is the overarching design philosophy behind legacy cards? You kind of started it. Um, when a team is designing both legacy cards and a figure, are they aiming to make them playably competitively or just for a mixture of some fun across the set? Well, I think... Well, I- you want to go first or you want me to? <laughs> I, I can go first, I suppose. Um, so I, I'd have to say, you know, fun to play is the, like, primary goal for any le- given legacy card. Uh, I like that. Yeah. I mean, there are, there isn't really an overarching design philosophy behind them. There, there are a couple. Uh, we, pick, we pick legacy characters for a couple different reasons. Uh, sometimes it's to fill a, you know, a hole in the set. It's just a character that we needed to get in there. Sometimes it's just... For thematic reasons, sometimes it's that it, this character was a better staple that was a favorite part of a lot of collections, and we want to, you know, give it another chance in the limelight. Uh, depending why we're picking a character for a legacy card, it does influence how we design it to a degree. But yeah, f- first and foremost, we just want the characters to be fun to play with. I think it's a good benchmark to hit. It's about right on. <laughs> no, this is a game. No, I don't want to have fun. <laughs> I will say. I feel like I I know the answer because it seems super obvious to me and we've touched on it on like the podcast a little bit before but there are people that ask why there isn't like a, a full set like let's say we'll take um, Guardians of the Galaxy like that five figure <sighs> booster set why don't you guys mm-hmm. release a full set good of choice Simeon <laughs> it does have some pretty Do good legacy chases. set ugh Get into the Magic the Gathering sphere. Yeah. Would we ever get just like a like? Here's a pack of cards. It's like five legacy yeah. cards, like a Magic almost. But it's well, I think, oh, just Guardians of the Galaxy again. Yeah. I think there are different areas of game design and development we could explore there. Um, I, I think it's, right now it's a, a cool value add. You know, if you're buying existing product, I think if there were ones where we felt like we had a uh, a miss, you know, or a missed opportunity. Um, that gives us some interesting options there. I think, um, yeah, th- the pieces around hero clicks, um, pieces is the wrong word, the gameplay elements around hero clicks, uh, I think there are significant opportunities for us to do more with that. You know, we've been really working hard to extend out our pipeline of cool figural product and booster releases, iconic starters, etc. So we've intentionally. Uh, crowded our our product release schedule with cool stuff, and I think that second layer there is what other interesting gameplay elements can we look at? Whether they're legacy cards, uh, 3D terrain, 2D terrain, maps. I think there are a lot of different directions for us to go. I think that is kind of a, a second layer that we think about. That I'd certainly like to do more with, but I think for me the. the if we were thinking about legacy cards as like spices, I think uh, it it is a nice, exciting spice, but I don't think it's one that uh, I think it could get overwhelming if done too heavily. I feel like There's you would a- definitely feel like as a collector myself, I would feel like each legacy card would be less special if I was buying them in packs of like five or mm-hmm. 50 or something like that. Yeah. There's I a, think too, like the speculation of the fan of like what legacy cards are coming up is yeah. something that 
what, what we kind of uh, gleefully look forward to, especially when, <laughs> when they get it right, which a lot of fans do. There's a second layer to it as well. Um, any given Heroclix product could be somebody's first Heroclix product, which is nice, except for a full set of legacy cards. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> that would be slightly <laughs> burdensome for somebody without a collection at all, yeah. Right, which isn't to say it can't be done, but it it is something we would have to consider. Hmm. That's actually a really good point. That's definitely something I've never thought of before. To, to keep going with design here, uh, when creating sets, how much influence do you have on what a set and its contents will be? And making deci- uh, sorry, are you making the decisions or is it directed by companies, licensors, uh, telling you what sets or characters to make? That's what I can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can uh, answer 5% of it. But not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I, I mostly no, I, get a set list and get uh, a set to work on it. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a dance. So, um, you know, we're long term contractually committed to do Marvel and DC sets, and uh, we're, we're excited to do them. And uh, in terms of the time horizon on that, and kind of what we look at, you know, if we all agreed we had an awesome set idea on this call today, and may, maybe we'll, we'll, I'll ask the questions at the end. No, <laughs> Ooh, and, uh, what what uh, what what set do people want to see? Uh, from it, this discussion to hit it hitting market, it's uh, over a year. You know, just from a production standpoint, you know, it, it's going to be approaching a year um, from uh, us making it and shipping it over. So th- there's a little bit of a dart toss that happens w- with any set that we do. You know, in that we need to uh, have that discussion with the licensor, and the licensor has a best laid plans too, you know, where are the things that they want to focus on in a year or two years and are working on. And, you know, there are things like writer strikes or, or things that bubble up that can make that a pretty complicated discussion. But then I think, you know, when we look at there being a finite amount of hero click sets per year, and uh, there's some wrinkles to this and that I think w- with Iconics and with convention pieces, we have some different avenues that, you know, we're exploring in, in more detail than, than we have before. Uh, you know, as we're going step by set, we know in, in a general year, it's going to be uh, a finite number of Marvel sets. And across those Marvel sets, there's going to be an expectation from fans that, you know, if we took a, a full year break from an Avengers or an X-Men or a Spider-Man, the there's going to be a chunk of that fan base that's going to say, hey, you know, that's my favorite character and I didn't get anything for a full year. Like, you know, what's up with that? I think in terms of some of the recent set design ideas that we've done, um, there's some expansion of that idea to include different versions of of characters to be able to span ideas that include uh, X-Men and Avengers or to include different aspects of of a a team or or series of villains over a time. And when we concepted Notorious and and went through that, the thought of doing a a big bads uh, DC set over time and figuring out what which characters include in it it became pretty easy for us and that when we looked through what some of the more higher demanded dc requests were um from the team and external parties you know that included deceased it included black lanterns it included uh legion of doom etc so as we started to pull that together the set gelled quickly and then there's a conversation with the licensor of you know can we incorporate all of these things together to make a Sunday? Um, and are they excited about it? And then, you know, w- with different characters, uh, the character might be going through a redesign and editorial. So it might not be out of the realm of reason on a set for the licensor to say, hey, we love that you want to do this character. Can you wait eight months? They're going to have a new costume. Or can you wait six months? We're going to do the anniversary version of this thing. Could you do mm. it in a future set? So uh, they're. There's that discussion there. And then uh, additionally, as we're kind of stair-stepping it out, um, future looking, we want to make sure that when things are uh, at peak excitement levels that we can capitalize on that and, uh, and you know make sure that you know, we're taking uh, a look at the data and what people are looking at, what people are searching for, what people are excited about. 
and, and making sure that uh, you know we have good product that matches up to, to those appetites. You know, particularly like it's no accident that you know we have a Deadpool set this year, and you know I think it's going to be a, a very busy Deadpool year for Marvel. So I think that's something where we wanted to make sure that you know whenever Deadpool is front and center for Marvel, that, that we have cool Deadpool products that you know are, are uh, ready and, and available for fans at the same time. J- just for an example. Okay. I know a p- personal example for me was uh, right after Nationals, you guys are at Nationals, you guys announced that there was going to be a first appearance Wolverine and almost immediately the next Sunday that I went to my local comic shop, they had the reprinting like foil edition of the first oh, appearance yeah. Wolverine. <laughs> Yeah, the, the key anniversaries are something that we think about there, too. And then w- with Iconics, we wanted to do a variety of things there in, in terms of the kinds of products that we could launch with it. And you know, th- there's nothing more iconic than a, a first appearance of a character in, in editorial. So I think that's something we're excited to, to get all the heavy hitters to ultimately have first appearance Iconics down the road. Speaking of Iconics and what Iconics have led to, because we we have Kong coming out, and then we have Sherlock coming Ah, out. Yeah, Kong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) uh, We have a question. Oh, yeah, we got Kong. (laughs) What is the process that WizKids has to go through to decide on and acquire third-party IP outside of Marvel and DC? So examples would be Star Trek, TMNT, Pacific Rim. Of course, back in like 2013, it seemed like anything that was a thing was getting licensed uh but now you guys have yeah kong and sherlock are like the the two non-marvel dc entities that we're dealing with we have some cool announcements coming up on that too and i think for the fan base for non-marvel and dc stuff i think march 2024 you're gonna see some stuff that i think will will, people will find pretty exciting in terms of upcoming announcements and partnerships that we have for sherlock and uh for public domain characters and hero clicks you know, there, there's been different versions of uh public domain used on hero clicks you know sometimes through holiday promotions you know whether it's a, a surf and gingerbread man or, or similar that you know ha- have been part of hero clicks you know pretty much since the advent of the game but i think that there are literary characters and there are you know public domain monsters and a lot of, of exciting things that you know we see opportunity and that I'm excited to uh, share with fans as we get that going forward. You know, in terms of a displayable piece for Sherlock, we, we decided to, to pursue that character sort of for, for two reasons um, in the as an iconic skew. One in that, you know, there are dedicated hardcore Sherlock fans that, you know, across a wide variety of different media. And I think that felt like something where having Sherlock in the same universe as you know, some of the other kind of famous comic book detectives and, and superheroes felt really interesting and exciting. And uh, the mystery card elements that we have in that felt like something that just felt like a natural fit. So I think we did, did a pretty awesome Sherlock product that I feel like if anyone is a Sherlock fan, it's going to over deliver uh, against the characters on that and from a gameplay and hopefully gets, you know, more people into the game that way. And if you're an existing Sherlock fan that plays hero clicks, I think, you know, that's just a a slam dunk in terms of uh, non Marvel, non DC third party licenses that we bring in WizKids parent company, uh, NECA or sister company, NECA, has got dozens and dozens of licenses cooking at any given time. You know, people can go to, to NECA.com and see some of the different uh, different action figures or characters or games that, that NECA has worked on over time. I think at 2013, um, that was a, a surge of all of the different licenses that NECA was acquiring at that point. And I think initially in that timeline for HeroClix, that was considered to be, you know, any one of those could have been an opportunity and a gateway to the brand. So th- there was a, a rush to include and incorporate as many of them uh, as they could. And I think there's some great ones in there. I think for us, we, we want to cherry pick it and uh, and make sure that, you know, across Iconics or like I'm 
not opposed. And Hero Clicks has certainly done non Marvel, non DC starter product before, which I think is really cool. I think Iconics gives us opportunity to more not do more non Marvel, non DC um, through convention promos. Uh, the, the, there's opportunity there. You know, from my standpoint, I I would love to do more third party, and we will announce some here shortly. <sighs> Goosebumps, literal goosebumps. Uh, <laughs> as sorry, as somebody who owns like so many NECA action figures, you have no idea <laughs> how excited that makes me. There are some cherries <clears throat> I could mention: <laughs> Evil Dead um, you, and a few like, other. You know, yeah, oh, that'd be fun. Evil Dead, Terminator. Those are what I own the most. Team Fortress nice. Two has probably passed, but I think I cried when NECA announced they would make action figures of <laughs> Team Fortress Two, as that's <laughs> my favorite game ever. Um, and you guys actually made Dota Hero Clicks forever ago. <laughs> um, yeah. And TF2 got a chess set, which of course I still own. But part of me has always wondered in some alternate universe, there's Calder who has TF2 Hero Clicks and owns a Dota <laughs> chess set. And is he happier? I don't know. We don't, well, that's a question I don't think too much on. Um, but T- certainly. TF2 Clicks. I'm just, just throwing it. Yeah, just we, it out we, there. we could just. Lots of fun. use easy. Just re- repaint blue and red, and we're <laughs> see. I'm trying to help you. A little help me help you. Just make ones red, ones blue. Yeah. Uh, if you want to do objects, the boosters design themselves. It's they have crates in the game. There's your. Yeah. You don't even need a uh, graphic the hat design guy. <laughs> yeah, hat equipments, weapon equipments. This is what I like. This is the creativity I like, Brian. This is what I'm looking forward to, right? Enough here. about that. Back to Evil Dead. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hey, don't get me wrong. I am surrounded by several Evil Dead posters. I think the Necronomicon would make a very good Iconics box. <clears throat> just mm-hmm. tossing it, just tossing it out yeah. there. Um, if that's not the vibe you want, you know, we could. We had the pilot ability, Ash's car. Ash without a chainsaw, with a chainsaw, with mm-hmm. a boomstick, without a boomstick, a lot of deadites. <clears throat> the listeners telling me to shut up. I can hear them through the headphones. <laughs> just tossing it, just tossing it Ryan's out. Ryan's just muttering BCF range. He's yeah. Like, as we go, as we go. <laughs> That's, I mean, <laughs> please, please, if I could make. <clears throat> no, <laughs> Sorry. I'd, I'd like to do it. If we get the opportunity to, uh, we'll, we'll do an Evil Dead Hero Clicks. I think to, to that point, you know, like, and again, for future ideas or future promises you know, like when i first joined whiz kids uh a while ago uh the, the the first time you know they had split out the the clicks brand across a few different rules platforms so horror clicks action clicks etc and i think their rationale for doing it at the time made sense and i, I think it was interesting and i think to the licensing era of the mid to late 2000s is a much different one than the the mid 2020s. But I say that to say, you know, if we do um, more third party licenses or things in the horror space, it'd be my expectation that they would be part of the HeroClix rule set. So, like a dedicated HeroClix fans, if you're deep in the uh, the Facebook or message board threads down the road. I think this is a uh, the thing that you could bring up later that if we make clicks going forward, the intention is that it's hero clicks, so not, not nice. order clicks, etc. So the, the, the more the merrier when, when it comes to uh, the gameplay. I like that. I love all of that. Yeah. <laughs> I love all of that. Read Would into there that ever... a lot. Go ahead, sir. Just read into oh, yeah. that a lot. Let your, your imagination run yeah. as wild as possible. Yeah, put your own meaning behind all that. <laughs> um, we just said so Wheels of Vengeance, I mean, and Notorious, I think. Uh, that's exactly. There's high horror aspects. I think very strong horror themes, especially in Wheels of Vengeance and the, uh, the deceased. And I think that With, there's opportunity for Sunshine, too. So I think for or other things that are out of the horror zone that are also third-party licenses, you know, that's something we'd consider too. So for the My Little Pony and Hello Kitty fans out there, sure. absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Barbie movie um, did introduce a bunch of new characters. Yeah. <laughs> oh. We get a we get a set list that's half Barbie, half Ken, and that's the entire set list from Barbie. I think they're waiting until um, like 2025 when the crossover mm. with GI Joe happens. <sighs> 
right. That's a good call. It's a good call. The the Hasbro Mattel crossover. Um, speaking, this is kind of sub theme enough. Uh, during what point in the process of a set do you go, that should be a sub theme, and then to go along with that, that sub theme should have a shared trait, like wall crawler, like pilot, things like that, uh, form the new Fantastic Four, etc. Well, I, there is no one size fits all answer here. Um, th- typically, for me, after I get given the finalized set list, I'll go through and figure out. You know, the, I think we could do a pretty good shared trait here, and pick out, you know, the, the, the sub theme should probably have something going on there. I'll kick it off to the designers a lot of time to see and get feedback on from them what they feel like they should be, we should be doing. If they have a good idea, we'll run with that. Uh, sometimes I'll have a good idea and we'll I'll just say you know try to do something like this. Or a lot of times too, the share trait will sort of just d- develop organically. Um, good example. Good example of that would be Wheels of Vengeance. Um, the designer working on the werewolves had that uh had had the idea for the moon trait. And it worked pretty well. So then we kind of built it out. We, we put it on some other werewolves, like the Cap Wolf that that particular designer wasn't working on at the time. Spun that off into Moon Knight because, hey, he's got moon theming and kind mm. of built his way out from there. Uh, so there, there isn't a like, single answer for when the sub theme happens or the share trait happens. But typically, it uh, happens pretty early. <laughs> okay. There's a creative process to it. I like that. Yeah. Um, a more open, fun question. Do you have a favorite sub theme that's been in a set or a favorite shared trait? Ooh. I don't, you're, you're, you don't know if I can... go while you wait. <laughs> yeah, go for it. You're, you're being like, you're asking me to play favorites tonight with my children here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll name my favorite child. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, I, there are a lot of cool ones, and I, I think they all serve different purposes, too, or... I think Brian and team have done a really interesting job of making sure that the the shared traits that exist at lower rarities get across the set theme without introducing a lot of complexity. So saying all that, I think the deceased uh, shared trait is really interesting. And I think the, the kind of um, return from the dead death row thing there is, is really cool. And uh, I think it gets across kind of the, the vibe that game design team was going for and i think they did a great job there of you know defeated the the opponent's piece but have you and having them kind of roar back is fun absolutely i think it's because zombies have been done obviously before and this was a new interesting take on the rise from the dead i guess mechanic (laughs) all right i I guess i guess i have to be put on the spot here give give an answer (laughs) Uh, I, feel, I almost feel cheap saying this, but I'm going to go with Goon because that has, the response oh, yeah. to Goon oh, has yeah. been way more than I think any of us at WizKids saw coming. Yeah. People have really, really embraced Goons. <laughs> I think, too, like the there's a general internal philosophy to do more exciting and more interesting generics and army level builders as well. So I think that was... Uh, a, a, a great kind of first volley there uh, of doing uh, exciting henchmen. And then, uh, you know, with wheels, I think that expansion into monsters as an idea was, was really interesting too. So yeah. cool generics have been around for a long time. And, and again, it made me having the same ideas from 15 years ago, you know, the, one of the discussions that we had with Hammer of Thor way back in the day is like, hey, Th- Thor is really good at fighting armies of cool monsters and uh, monstrous characters. Like, we want to make sure that, that they were really awesome uh, generic level monsters there with, with cool lieutenants and cool generals. So I think that's something that, when it's appropriate for gameplay, you know, we're, we're not going to force it in. But but I think if there are cool minion level characters, I'm certainly going to do. Um, at least one version of them those are some of my favorites i love <laughs> love generics i love collecting massive piles uh, i have a shirt that now says top goon because of my you are goon. <laughs> you are the top goon Simeon. you yeah. really are uh on the opposite end of that though instead of small army like the <laughs> the big bad do you guys have any plans that you can talk about for new three by six figures similar to the Galactus that we got a couple years ago? And additionally, have you ever considered designing a legacy card for a figure that size? I know 
my personal favorite three by six is the serpent from fear itself uh okay, with the, the fear serpent. dial that uh <laughs> lets you do free actions a legacy card oversized figures at some point yeah Ooh. It, it it's something that we have discussed and i would love to the only reason it hasn't happened yet is the cards for them need to be bigger than we can put in the foil legacy pack that gets slapped on the top of boosters <laughs> we've so, discussed other ways to potentially get those out to people too right but it is an internal discussion it's actually just going to be the pac booklet that came with dr manhattan but it's also silvery <laughs> and whatever it's just this massive <laughs> yeah what is that like a, a seven by like five card <laughs> this is yeah. pretty big yeah so. well, i will say we uh we did recently make a Starro fight. I'll just leave that out as a Ooh. some cheese for people. Oh, now going along with some of the fun things here with sets and design. So everybody has a favorite moment in comics that they'd like to be represented in Hero Clicks. What is currently the moment or event in comics that is either your favorite that you want to bring into Hero Clicks, or maybe your favorite's already been made into Hero Clicks? I, for me. Personally, I'm a huge Squirrel Girl fan. I would love yes. to get the um, get her in her wingsuit from uh, the Avengers: The Dynamic Enix run. Okay, I like that. I like that. The one of my favorites um, was the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, and this one got made though. Oh, um, but yeah. her Squirrel <laughs> Man, where she yes. just covers herself in uh, squirrels. <laughs> I, and that's <laughs> one of my all-time favorite figures. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> So, Brian, you're saying you want you want the squirrel girl with the wingsuit brought in. Jake, is there a is there a favorite moment or event in comics that you would like in the game or that has been in the game? Uh, there there's so many. I think the uh, as a child of the well, a child of the '80s into the '90s, you know, my, my peak of comic collecting uh, kind of uh, was probably late '90s, and then you know, I, I still lightly keep up with things here or there um but in terms of like ongoing comic series that really grab my attention like uh, uh maximum carnage i thought was awesome at the time like it was so 90s out um you know secret wars was really exciting to to, to follow in terms of things that hero clicks has never done that, that we look forward to that i would love to do like doing the Superman first appearance cover from a, a technical challenge, I think, is something that, you know, from doing this for a while, um, try to surprise and delight fans and, and try to mm. you know, sh- show them something where they didn't think it was possible. Or, you know, in tw- I think Brian knows this pretty well, too. Like, we, we've never done that in 22 years of something that... Uh, I find a particularly exciting drum beat that I'll bring up and, you know, but I, I can reference a chunk of those that we've done just in the last six months. Like Zodder and Nan was one where I was like, Oh, in 22 years, like doing the, the three figure base uh, on a single uh, dial was something that I was like, Oh, that that's pretty cool. And that, that there might be some, uh, some, executions where that may have existed previously but i wanted to, to kind of really make that feel uh special and commanding and like an ultra chase so i think that was kind of a a mountain to summit there um and a, a production challenge to kind of do that in an elegant way uh glow in the dark is another one where you know in, in 20 plus years hero clicks had never done glow in the dark and i think for me uh we know the gameplay is fun it's exciting and it's you know kept people playing and coming back for two decades i think having something that is unlike any of the other hero clicks in your collection is something that we've talked about and with glow in the dark it was our opportunity there to you know show somebody that might not be a hero clicks fan like hey that this is a cool thing that the minis game has done or if someone was returning into the game it becomes an interesting entry point for somebody to sample a couple booster packs that previously may not have you know if someone's taken eight years off and they want to come back net nibbling on the set that glows in the dark i think is a uh not literally nibbling, hopefully, but uh, <laughs> nibbling. Yeah. Um, Disclaimer, yeah, please do not eat the plastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, d- don't don't nibble on hero clicks. 
but <laughs> Kong, going back to Kong, it's our first uh, flocked piece. And if, you know, if listeners are unfamiliar with flocking technology, Kong is going to have a, uh, a fur-like uh, sheen to him to, to, through flocking technology, which has existed in action figures for a while. You know, again, as a child of the '80s, I, I grew up with uh, Masters of the Universe, and you know, getting the, those flocked action figures uh, was super exciting to me. You know, as, as a young collector, and I think for Hero Clicks, that's something that I was eager to try out. And I, I think it, the the factory and production team did an awesome job on that. When people have it in hand, I think they're gonna say like, "Oh, this, this is awesome." <laughs> and then the great news is, I think they're gonna put it in their friend's hand. You know, essentially to, to take uh, Kong <laughs> and say, "You, you got to try this." You know, <laughs> it feels fuzzy little fist, <laughs> <laughs> fuzzy little head. The um, so I think it, in terms for me, like the the Superman with, with Car from Superman first appearance, I think it is a future mountain that that will summit at some point. Ironically, trying to keep Superman not be crushed by a car, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the balancing act of a a top heavy figure. <laughs> uh, so yeah. <laughs> similar kind of like train of thought, but um, do you have a character that you've always wanted to have an appearance in HeroClix, but? just can't for any reason and then what would the story behind that be Ooh. whether that's like a licensing issue or just like the character's popularity isn't big enough well i think i i, I can speak to that a little bit and that you know to to produce uh, a hero clicks figure it takes a lot of work and resources you know it, it is a uh, it is not a simple undertaking to essentially say like we should just do it and it happens you know if it's a smaller figure at a humanoid scale and can fit into the theme of a booster release, it becomes possible, you know, unless there are likeness rights or, um, or different issues with the licensor, which can arise, you know, and like from my prior example, it might, might not be a question of, uh, of yes or no. It might be a question of like, please do it in a year or please do it in three years when, when it makes sense for editorial or to support a movie release. In terms of figures that I would like to do that I don't think like will ever do, <laughs> that's a it's an interesting question. Um, you know, it, in in the '90s, that there was a run of comics by uh, by Rob Schraub, Scud the Disposable Assassin. I'm not sure if uh, anyone on, on the call ever read those, but it, essentially, uh, Scud was a robot that you could get out of a vending machine that, that was an assassin and. Uh, it was a fun run, you know. I think it ran, I don't know, uh, five or six years, and was collected in an image omnibus. Later, I don't think the fan demand or the timing of it is wide enough that we would ever approach doing that. But is like a pet character that I was like, oh, that, that I would love to have that uh, live on my shelf. Uh, yeah, that would probably be mine. So. Most of the comics I I read or have read are a lot of like the Vertigo type stuff. I think my absolute favorite comic series ever is probably The Invisibles. I don't foresee us ever <laughs> fixing The Invisibles <laughs> for of, reasons that are going to be very a lot obvious. Of interesting anyway, metaphysical tropes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be hard it's, to do a one to one to clicks for that. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Flavor text would be phenomenal, though. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, quick question here again from uh, the listeners. Has WizKids ever thought about trying their own well, I guess, well, this is again, I suppose have you thought about trying an online software for your game again? It was tried with your hooks at one point is there any intention to bring that back? No. Is the question there saying should we do a, a digital version of the game or support software? Because I think those are two different answers. I believe it's trying to say. I'm assuming they're talking about HeroClix Online. Bring a digital, like a HeroClix gotcha. Online, a digital gotcha. version of the game. Uh, I will say not at this time. I, I think uh, we want to make sure that the collectability of the game and, uh, you know, in, in terms of focal points for the company and kind of where our head's at, uh, 
organized play events and getting people back playing and getting people back playing in stores and at conventions is kind of our core focus. And I, I don't want to give that up uh, to, to kind of ch- chase another thing at this moment. Long term, maybe, you know, I think that we would have to find the, the right development partner on it. And then the structuring of those deals uh, can get pretty complicated. In terms of okay. support software, yes, I, I would like to. Uh, and, and we're had some initial discussions about uh, improvements for the win, uh, additional things we'd like to take a look at in, in terms of support apps and, and online support as well. But again, that's kind of a, a longer lead thing here as we, you know, in the last year have really prioritized per- prioritize product development and this year i think prioritizing getting people out and playing i think it's a good call i think everybody's chomping at the bit for in-person play so i do think that's probably the best way to be going about things it's a good focus to have i just i really want tab apps back oh yeah that's that's uh (laughs) team bases and tab apps (laughs) yeah I, i have to ask it was the did you want the tab app for the tab app or for the bobblehead? I actually yeah, I just I tore the bottom off. I just kept the sculpt. That was all. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good market when research. You, More bobbleheads. When heads. you have to when you have to collect every Wolverine and every Captain America, they're just like, all right, <laughs> let's go get them. It's true. It's very true. <laughs> I think all the questions that we have left are all rules based. So we yeah, have right. that is, I'm going to go possible? make a sandwich. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Question oh, okay. was, would it be possible for the comprehensive rule book to start including more examples? And I think they mean pictures of, by that, uh, mm-hmm. have whiz kids ever considered doing this? And if so, what were they? I know we had quite a few example kind of booklets with like wonder woman 80th and different sets mm-hmm. like that. Ooh, so if we're talking about getting diagrams and stuff in, I'm not super opposed to it. So the thing to keep in mind is that the comprehensive rulebook is not meant to be the learn to play hero clicks resource. It's meant to be the like final word on any given interaction, uh, you know, the the last stop before the win needs to come in and clarify something. Uh, the question is, can we get more more learn to play resources that have good diagrams and examples? Of? Absolutely, hundred percent, all for that. Um, I don't want to be the comprehensive rule book to be the thing you point players to to teach them how to play the game that's not what it's there for and I, honestly i think that trying to turn it into that you know like okay you want to learn how to play here click sit down and read this you know is it like 60 page you know treatise treatise written in like you know legalized bullet point thing is just not the way to do it does sound like it'd so, be pretty rough to try and teach somebody by just reading alone but yeah I, I know there's a lot of a lot of visual aids people have decided on uh over the years flow charts being one of them that i heavily tell people not to use it's yeah they, they can be a useful tool for for the you're initially teaching someone but you do need to have that, you know, the why the flowchart works as knowledge because sometimes the people who made it didn't account for certain um, interactions. Sometimes they might have made a mistake. And you have to know why the rules say, say what they, you know, tell you to do what they do, not just, uh, you know, memorize the picture someone made, put together through it, some random person put it together on the internet. It's a question with layers. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, I would like to see more uh, visual instructions on how to play the game, and I think the new starter sets are get started leaning into that pretty well. Uh, no, I don't want to see that in the comp necessarily because that's likely going to turn the comp into something it's not meant to be, and could turn players off of the game if we tried to force the comp to be that sort of thing. Does that makes sense. <laughs> I feel like that makes sense. Okay, <laughs> that's our that's our rules law book. No fun pictures yeah. in the in the rules law book. Right. That's very very, that's, very serious rules. It's, it's it's straight. It's to the point. It's got its fun little bullet points and it's point three point four point five. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Um, another just fun rules gameplay mechanic question in general: What is the game philosophy for percentage of sideline elements versus onboard figures, particularly for meta relevance? 
Also, the philosophy for paying points for sideline effects versus getting them uncosted. Oh, so this is another thing that's a bit of a delicate dance in play testing between play testing and design. Um, the sideline is a resource that we, for a long time in the game's development, we kind of just ignored. Um, it isn't a totally free thing because you only have so many slots available to you. So every you are in essentially paying a cost for every sideline element you put on is that's just taking away opportunities you have for other sideline slots uh, for shifting focus or whatever uh, that said sometimes we do need to make sure they cost points as well sometimes we don't it's something we have to figure out with play testing as we design sets okay okay I think too like an, another discussion that I know the team's had internally is just making sure that it's not overwhelming to track all the different fiddly bits on a sideline. So mm-hmm. making sure that it's obvious, you know, what the interactions are, or possibilities are from a sideline, but then having it be additive where somebody can have a, a storytelling moment by, you know, as Brian suggested, su- uh, suggested doing something like shifting focus or uh, you know, I think like some of the uh, avatar mechanics, I think people have got a little sneak peek on with Kanshu and next phase, I think, do some interesting things where it, it tells a story from a, a gameplay perspective and, and adds a layer on that, that I think is additive. I think uh, I think my personal favorite sideline thing right now, as a big Earth X fan, is that Absorbing Man because that uh, is so yeah. much <laughs> what he what he is in that story. He's he's shattered <laughs> into pieces after that version absorbed like. Washington DC or New York or whatever I say I'm a fan and I forget what city but he absorbs an entire city yeah. kills kills the Avengers and then and this one is when he's shattered into pieces and that uh, um, the cult of Creel puts him together yeah. and it's so fun to play that in almost every game <laughs> almost every game uh, which is great it, it's a fun storytelling beat that the game reflects like Jake was saying that getting those storytelling moments in is a big part of design philosophy for us I think um, that you know, invariably, if I'm at a convention, somebody will, or, or somebody external to Hero Clicks will say, like, how can you do that many? You know, you name the character: Spider Man, Batman, etc. And then, you know, the the easy response on a lot of that is like, there are way, way more comics than there are our ability to sculpt these figures. And in the majority of those comics, they're doing something interesting, you know, or have an aspect of that character that, that is reflected through that storyline beat. So I think that that's one of the really cool things about Hero Clicks is you know I, we could sharpen our pencils and, and make twenty different Batman here and they could all be pretty different from each other and all pretty interesting. And I'll still feel like Batman. That's... You guys want to make twenty Batman? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the wrong members of Dial H are on this episode to talk about making twenty Batman. <laughs> no, no Bat fan here. Yeah, um, <laughs> oh, he's fine. Well, it's cool enough. Well, mm. when, you, like, when you have a uh, Ian or whoever on, and they ask you <laughs> what happened, you can tell them. Well, we turned the opportunity down to design twenty Batman. <laughs> oh, sorry, they sorry, gave, Ian. They it gave was twenty it to Captain Americas. There. I sorry, Ian. Yeah, I mean, it was if it was twenty Captain Americas or Wolverines. Trust me, I've got ideas mm-hmm. for a hundred Captain Americas. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> give, give us one. What, what's uh, your number one Captain America? Uh, my number one is a like the purest form of Captain America is shield bounce. I would love a, and I understand from a gameplay perspective this is broken, uh, but a Captain America that can bounce his shield off of pretty much anything on the map. He can bounce it off of blocking terrain to then go hit a person, or he can hit a person and then it ricochets off that person to that Hydra agent, that Hydra agent, that Hydra agent. That'd be my baseline, like Captain America. I'd love to see, um, but then figure itself, Steve Rogers. That's my my all-time favorite uh, Captain America standing against the end of the world as one man waiting for backup to arrive and holding the line. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I feel like two two doable Captain Americas. Perfect. Perfect. The, yeah. (laughs) You guys are making my day. Evil Dead, Captain America. All right. (laughs) Episode 500 is my my piece of cake. Breaking news. We'll do future Captain Americas. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Captain America That's confirmed is still a character. 
Uh, let's see. I'm trying to look at more of these questions. We, I guess we have a fun one. It was mentioned earlier with Powers, but are there currently any plans to change or update Leap Climb? Uh, so this is, this, is, this is an unexpectedly tough question. Uh, so we do have an eye on Leap Climb. We do know that that is one of the powers people are the least excited to see on dials. It definitely needs some uh, TLC. It is a tricky power to update, and we have bounced around ideas on, on how to do so. The um, find, Finding that power that is both sufficiently unique from all the other PAC powers, simple enough that it, you know, deserves to be a standard power and really kind of conveys the idea of, you know, leaping or climbing is a surprisingly tricky nut to crack. Um, <laughs> there are a couple of things like I said, we, we do have ideas. The um, wall crawler trait in uh, the Beyond Amazing was a bit of a uh, backdoor pilot and possible fixes for leap climb. So we might see something in, the, in that vein going forward. But yeah, it is something we're looking at and Think. When, whenever the next rules come around, it might be something that we uh, interact with. Uh, the caveat, we're likely not going to see an updated rules thing for some time. We're more or less happy with wherever the rules are at for the moment. Right. Uh, essentially, reinstituting annual starter product is something that I, I feel passionate about, particularly at approachable price points. You know, we we wanted people to feel like they got four super rare quality sculpts um, when, when they purchased the starter and had you know, showcase cool uh, toyetic game pieces. And, and then also d- did a, a decent amount of digging and research to figure out uh, on the starters um, different ways to teach people the game and, and getting feedback from people who have taught the game you know, over the last few years. And then additionally looking at people that love minis games that don't necessarily play hero clicks and, and getting feedback from them internally and externally uh, of figuring out, you know, if you're coming over from uh, a games workshop or a, another brand and learning hero clicks, well, what's your expectation of a minis game? And I think, you know, one thing I can talk about here that uh, I guess would, I think it's breaking news. I don't think we've announced it yet, but you know, we had heard feedback from external minis game players that uh, getting in tiled components uh, in terms of learning the game and breaking the game down in stair steps was something that some other minis games have incorporated and had success with and was something that we had tried out. You know, that it was our, our first time um, approaching that. And it gave us a uh, essentially a, a more substantial feeling package and a way to kind of uh, lily pad out the, the, w- the way that we present the game in terms of teaching people it. Uh, I think from our existing player base, the feedback that we heard pretty overwhelmingly was like that there are a lot of cool elements to this, but please give me a paper map. Or like when I teach this to somebody, please give me a paper map. So for the next two incarnations, the Marvel and DC starter, starter we're going to bring back a uh, paper map for that. And uh, hopefully that, that sates the demand for that as well. Um, yeah. No, all new figures, all new sculpts for Marvel and DC starters going forward. And then my, my hope would be that you know, in the near term, near meaning, let's call it a year from now, that we're talking about uh, additional starters uh, in addition to Marvel and DC that could incorporate Ooh. other other IP uh, intellectual property, if you're not uh, familiar with the acronym. <laughs> I know you guys are, but I know as okay. listener, sometimes I'm like... <laughs> Hero Clicks is a pretty acronym heavy brand. And then once we put in uh, external ones too, I, I sometimes wonder um, how much of it sails over the head of the audience. And that's like fair. a like slosh or uh, <laughs> yeah, PCO, <laughs> et cetera. Yeah. Like Slop. It, yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. is my current favorite. A lot of people. Yeah, that was, a, for that not was a tricky figures. one. Yeah, the not figures. I'm not looking for Superman. Yeah. <laughs> not Superman. I'm like, oh, I'm looking for not Superman. Huh? That one's, that one's been fun. Uh, sometimes there are internal licensing acronyms that we use that are pretty common in licensing or licensing shorthand that have conflicting meanings with what some of the Heroclix acronyms are. So that uh, it's something good. I'm trying uh, to be better about meeting to meeting, making sure that I'm not... Uh, befuddling everyone that I'm talking to. I 
I don't want to get too far away from the starter discussion, but this just popped up in my head because that's really cool. I really like the idea of more Marvel DC starters and more non-Marvel DC starters just every year. Those sound awesome. But just because you mentioned the uh, different phrases for anything, is there any time where you're either designing a figure, designing a set, and uh, like uh, we could just say Peggy Cap, for example, did, where did you maybe nickname him something else? And then the, it gets in the community's hands and they're like, oh, yeah, it's Peggy Cap, you know, or any other examples like that, where maybe you call um, whatever you want to call the bases. And then that all of a sudden is now the Twinkie base stuff like that, where you're like, oh, well, that's not what I wanted. But OK. And then the community runs with it. <laughs> Twinkie base was um you know, extended base pretty early on in development. We didn't really get a fun nickname for that. Uh, I, I do this. like I do like seeing the community uh, tear itself to ribbons over what they should call it, though. Yeah, that <laughs> was that's been, this has been fantastic. We were ready were to go to war the, with that one. The, the drama between that the those are a few big posts about stadium Twinkie yeah. double base. Oh. I, I I heard most of the feedback from conventions from people of like I will continue to call it peanut whatever you do it will be a yeah. peanut like, okay like it's fine like <laughs> if that's oh, no. what you want to call it in your home game it does not bother me but uh, in terms of the nickname question I think the thing that happens more often is we'll submit a name for a character uh, to licensing. And then sometimes the licensor will come back and say, don't call the character this, call it that. And then it can take some adjustment when you're, you're searching for the figure through you know, an online database or digging in to be like, well, why can't I find this character? Get a mm-hmm. moment of intense panic and then be like, oh, it's because they called him you know, by uh, <laughs> their ego name or uh, some future name for an editorial that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> We had a good example, but this is a uh, in next phase, so I don't think I can uh, talk about it just yet. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Jake. You mind if I t- tell them what a, one of the primes is, or <laughs> should we just hold off? I wonder if we have the same one. <laughs> I, 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 I have one from next phase where I was like, "Oh, that's what, what that's what they're called." <laughs> you, you can go ahead, Brian. Oh, uh, sure. I'll so, get um, myself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, ne- next phase we have a prime that from the I am Groot series of that uh, shape shifting alien, the that little dance off thing, which internally was dancing PJ Groot for a long time. <laughs> mm. but, but, I'm sorry, dancing PJ Groot in quotation marks <laughs> to show you that it wasn't the authentic dancing PJ Groot, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> Uh, very late, we found out that Marvel actually has a name for the character, like Iwa or some, something to that effect, and that's that's what it is in the set now. <laughs> oh, the, a- the okay. alien life form that gets into a dance battle with yeah. uh, little PJ Groot uh, had a name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Quick, quick yeah, say the, the name of, of the guy with the uh, little guitar thing from the holiday calendar. Oh, uh, B- Beezer Mickle Takalock. Yeah. Okay. Wow, we all Ryan. Braver man than me. No, we, <laughs> oh no. Oh no. We had some in, internal uh, fun with that one as well. Yeah. Oh, he has a name. <laughs> that might have been the most impressive thing that was yes. done on this show. So I think far. I've challenged I, them to the wrong name. Wow. Yeah. I thought that would be harder. <laughs> we go to to Welsh yeah. city names, or what are we going? <laughs> Well, normally we let our guests do some shout outs. So if you have any shout outs, absolutely. But if you don't have any shout outs, you could just keep keep naming like spoiler stuff if you'd like. That'd be <laughs> that'd be fine too. It is fun and I think that's a thing that we I think that there's a perception from the fan community that like uh Maybe not. Maybe, maybe I'm reading too much into it. But I think there's a perception that like we like to keep a tight drum on things or don't want information to trickle out. And in one instance, that's true because you know people work on upcoming content for us, and we want to make sure that it, the people that are working hard to show off spoiler content or do cool things, we're we're not stepping on their information and making sure that it, it feels exciting and fresh. Um, but we, we love spoiling. Like, spoiling's our favorite. Like, <laughs> to, to be able oh, to yeah. go through. Like, oh, look at the cool thing we made. And here's why we did it. It is uh, really gratifying and fun. And to kind of see those initial reactions from people, too, of like, oh, like, this is 
cooler or different or uh, surprising in a way that, that people hadn't previously considered it is always really gratifying. In terms of shout outs, I think uh, we'd, we'd be remiss not to shout out Dial H for episode 500, and that's why we're <laughs> yeah. here. So I think that uh, in addition to that, you know, we're really appreciative of the work that uh, your, your team has done with the community. And I think a, a really good, positive voice and, and uh, communicator, particularly like at Worlds, I know we heard uh, great feedback from a lot of fans that were like, oh, the Dial H coverage was excellent bring them back it's really exciting and kind of gives a a, a pulse to a, a weekend of programming which i know our, our fan base is really appreciative of so you know we would love to have you back at at uh, worlds this year and i think that's something that uh the opportunity to do more live coverage is something that, that we see some uh some great opportunity with and would, would love to continue and then i think for, from a podcast standpoint uh this has been a lot of fun, and you know, let's not wait till episode one thousand to uh, to do the next one. But uh, it maybe some interesting opportunities for us to uh, to do something like this w- with some more dedicated spoilers. But I think for us to answer listener questions it, it is interesting you now. And I think uh, Brian, were, were there any of the the questions shocking to you? Oh, uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think I'd love to uh, love to come back and do it again sometime. Did you have shout outs? Oh, Ryan's an award winning um, jelly maker. So next time he's uh, making his <laughs> award winning jelly, we'll have to get him on to plug it. Ooh. Yeah, fair enough. The, um, yeah, just did a couple for Christmas uh, cherry amaretto, uh, chocolate covered banana, uh, pumpkin pie, and then a weird concoction of uh, apple, banana, and almond. I don't really have a good name for it, but. Orange. Orange, I'm sorry, apple, orange, and, ba- and um, not banana. <laughs> <laughs> I knew if we worked hard enough, we could get it back to food. Yeah. <laughs> so, need to come up with a name for whatever that is, but it came out pretty well. Uh, you know, if, if I'm going to shout out anyone, I'm going to shout out to uh, all of the other designers and team that mm-hmm. work on clicks with me. Uh, I, I am not the only one doing clicks. I am just a very small part of the whole operation. So, even though yeah, I may be the one do- here. Dozens it's... of sculpting, operations, yeah. product support, and the, the mm-hmm. retailers, fans, distribution, like the just to make a hero click set has literally hundreds of people involved in it. So yeah. I think it, uh, it, it it's fun to come up here and say that these were our grand ideas, but Brian's yeah. absolutely right. It, uh, it takes a lot of people to make a hero clicks product come to life. Mm-hmm. I think that makes me almost more happy than anything i love to hear that there's just a good good group of people a village it takes a village right yeah to make a really cool thing and i love it all the way you guys talk about the teamwork and everything over here that is awesome and i agree let's uh let's get you guys how about just next week sound good yeah let's, let's, say, why don't we, let's just a four-person podcast now <laughs> four-person <laughs> podcast brian ship us some jam ship us some jelly yeah. Ooh, yeah. you want to make me some ranch jelly that would open be with a, i hate that as soon as i, I said it jelly corner every I, every I, week i'd be willing to try <laughs> <laughs> i'd be willing to try it as well how about how about brian brings a, a jam or preserve to memphis this year uh, Ooh, they're, they're very doable you know they do the peanut butter jelly bar yeah. brian we can this do is, the this is true i can break some the bg some jelly jams Ooh, I'm, ad- awesome. I'm adept at assigning other people work <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for being on. I think as you made this a very special episode, and I think the community is really going to enjoy it. So, again, just saying thank you guys. We really appreciate it uh, from the bottom of our hearts at Dial H, especially all the nice things you had to say about Dial H. So, Simeon, anything else we want to add before we let them get back to their lives while we have them hostage online here for a little bit? I don't have anything else. I just want to ah, yeah, thank shoot. you guys for. Uh, for spending the time that you did with us and uh yeah i would absolutely be willing to make this a more common treat for the listeners <laughs> well let's let's pop the champagne and take the victory lap on episode 500 and then uh we're, we'll be in spoiler season momentarily for next phase so i'm excited to uh start sneak peeking characters named 
was it Iwa? <laughs> what do they call it? <laughs> and beyond. I, I just remember the pronunciation. It's like I W U A. How about how about Muna She Hulk Hulk? Yeah, we got uh, <laughs> a couple different Hawkeyes, all sorts of yeah. Uh, yeah. Next phase is a fun one. Ooh, so I to start showing it off. All right, well, let's get look forward to that, and then listener, let's go to the rest of episode five hundred. <laughs> Out there in Hero Clicks Land. Take it slow. What an incredible interview we just had with Jake and Brian. Oh my gosh, guys. Hopefully that was as like mind-boggling for some of you guys. Get to see a little bit of the inside baseball. I know there was a lot of things in there that I was particularly happy about hearing and finally getting into and getting some words. And I hope they can hopefully you know, come on again in the future, as they mentioned. But new starter sets coming out all the time. That's going to be really cool. So I cannot wait to see more of that. But guys, this is episode 500. Dial H has come a long way since July of 2013. Dial H has had so many different hosts over the years, and we finally have a grid cemented in group of guys that continuously make content that I just think knocks it out of the park. We've been doing this for a long time, and, you know, I feel confident in getting to 600. We'll see if we get to Kyle's 1,000. We never know. But, you know, never say never, but... It's been a great run, and I just want to keep it going. So, Simi, any Dial H 500 thoughts that you have? If I get to a 1,000, I know. I'm going to be like that like pile of goo on the floor that's like, please, kill me. Please, let me die. You're, like, I, I don't imagine episode Jeff 1,000. Jeff from the fly by the yeah. time you get to episode 1,000. But no, yeah, it's, it's been an incredible awesome. run. It's been an incredible amount of fun. It was a huge trudge of work and effort the entire way. And it still is. Like, even today, as we are recording, it's probably been one of the hardest days. And, like, not even working wise, just like mentally, it's been one of like the hardest days that we've had in a while. And going forward, like, we're still going to try our best. We're still going to try and like reach new heights. But, like, yeah, we just, we just are where we are. And, I don't think that we've ever been anything that we haven't actually been. I don't think we've ever been like pretenders. So yeah, like we we're just as good as we can be and we just want to make the community better. And that's where we're still are. And if we somehow make it to a thousand somehow incredibly, like if for whatever reason, my insurance covers uh goop to exoskeleton transplant surgery. Okay. Then yeah, we'll we'll be there. We'll yeah, be all there. right, I'll tell. Them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, see ya. Okay, guys. Well, long apparently, phone call. That was yeah, a long, long phone call. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. A lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Well, we've got a big thing planned for February tenth. I guess. Okay. Um, I don't know. Strap in is all I have to say. We'll continue this conversation off mic. Yeah, uh, sounds good. Well. Listener, thank you so much for sticking with us. And whether this is your 500th Dial H episode or if it's your first episode, we really appreciate you listening, and I hope you continue to love the world of Heroclix. And, you know, like always, happy trails, and for all your Heroclix needs, make sure to Dial H. And you can get cool stuff at CoolStuffing.com. I'll read my all your Heroclix single single products. Don't forget to use code DIAL5 for cool stuff for 5% off. A cool slipping order, and if you want to use code dial H10 to get 10% off shop.wizkids.com, go ahead and do that too. You can applicable on pre orders, iconics, specialty figs. Oh, what's that? Uh, did you put salt on these Some hero click steals? <laughs> you don't get 10% so off. Spicy. Did salt. you put salt on these, Ian? You can't use dial 5 for salt. My god, uh-huh. awesome, Proxima. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> We're not going there. That's how numbers work. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of you.